Storm surge, obviously not a concern this far inland, but the wind is, guys. Uh, and Dennis, you know that it's, you get the rain, you get the wind here, you get everything. Uh, storm surge, obviously not a concern this far inland, but along that coast area, 15, they're calling for 16 foot storm surge now. Uh, you wonder what that area is going to look like uh, when this is all said and done. That area behind Paul, Dennis, that's that's a little concerning. You see all that equipment out there when you're talking about that wind. Yeah, I do. I, I can't imagine the wind's going to be that strong that it's going to blow something. I, Greg, I mean, can you, I mean, that... that no, I mean, you're probably looking at, at, at wind damage into trees and that kind of thing. I, I think as far as larger debris, it, that's probably not strong enough. But, Paul, you do need to be concerned about smaller debris, right? Tree branches, roof shingles, that kind of thing, uh, as that could be airborne. Uh, and these winds yeah. are only going to increase. Uh, Paul is not in the strongest yet. So mm -hmm. I looked up, Paul, it looks up your, your location. Looks like you are southeast of the center of Perry just as you get in. So you are about to get into that eye wall, and you're probably going to spend some time in it. This is going to be a longer duration uh, event for you. Yeah, in fact, uh, the folks that are in the uh, hotel chasing. where we are, <coughs> they were told stay inside because coming out right now is not what you want to be doing. Um, we're <laughs> and you ask, well, why are you out here? Okay, I'm the uh, human barometer, so to speak. Just consider me one of your weather instruments. This is what it feels like. <laughs> to proof of uh, proof of life, proof of performance when it comes to what a hurricane feels like and looks like. Uh, the sheets of rain just funneling through uh, this alleyway here in this parking lot, uh, similar to what I've experienced before in other hurricanes, but always impressive. So, if I was just going to say, if you're just tuning in, Paul, our Paul Legron is right there. In fact, quickly, real quick, can we take Max one so we can show him where he is in relationship to the storm? There it is. See where Perry is right there? Paul is right there when, and I guess they cleared Paul, but um, over the next few minutes, we're going to continue to see this eye wall and, and this we're going to go back and this is where its motion is as it made landfall and you see all those little spins there. Those are, uh, you know, there's a really good chance. One of those is a tornado that may very well get rather close. I mean, you are he is in the absolute strongest part of the winds of this hurricane. Again, made the landfall of 125 miles an hour. You also notice there was a little bit of lightning. Look at this lightning over here on the right here. So pause here. I was about there and the lightning was off to the east. So it, again, it's just an indicator that he is in the strongest part of this entire hurricane and it's moving in his general direction. So, I mean, we'll see it's but as as Greg said, it's not it slows down quite often. These storms have a tendency to slow down once they make landfall because they're dealing with friction. They're not on water. It's a little harder for them to move. So sometimes we do see a, a little bit of a slowdown. So as Greg mentioned, he is going to be in this eye wall, I'd say, and you can see the lightning flashes as they occur. He's going to be in that eye wall for at least a half hour, 45 minutes. So I think maybe what we could do is when he gets back into safety, but you can still see what's going on behind him, that's going to be quite a sight because you're going to see by far the strongest part. And it's pretty rare that you actually have an opportunity to have a reporter in safety and still be at a category three hurricane. That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Once it gets over landfall, how long will it take before it starts to diminish in power and strength? The weather service or the hurricane center is predicting it's going to actually be downgraded to a tropical storm in 24 hours, but it's still expected to be a hurricane even as it goes into Georgia. Oh, wow. So pretty crazy. I mean, it, mm -hmm. now one of the reasons is because it is moving so fast. I mean, yes, it is going to slow down, but not tremendously. I mean, if it's moving 15 miles an hour, there's a chance it could stay hurricane status for, you know, maybe four or five hours. And and you're right, Heather, usually it doesn't happen that way. Right. So we're, let's go over to Forrest, right? We're going to check out Forrest now. Yeah, he's uh, he was in Cedar Key. Yeah. He moved from Cedar Key over to Chiefland, I believe. Yeah, he's in Chiefland. Okay. We talked about this being his first hurricane. Yeah. Forrest, you had to move because of the storm surge. Mm -hmm. How bad has it gotten out there? Well, I tell you what, I'm thinking about moving again, maybe back to Iowa, because the snow and the blizzards, they're better than this. This is crazy. I don't know how you guys do it down here. This is only my fourth year in Florida, and I got to tell you, this is my first hurricane. What the heck? Uh, I'm in Chiefland. It's about 27 miles away from Cedar Key. 
And uh, th this is important. We, we really need to stress this because these conditions are very dangerous. I'm being as safe as I can. I'm underneath a large awning, and I know I look like I'm being pelted by rain and wind, and I am. But it is nothing compared to what is happening in some parts of the state right now with that storm surge. We are expecting between 12 to 16 feet of water in the Cedar Key area. That is the worst case scenario, but unfortunately, the levels keep rising. The last check that I had was near 10 feet, near 10 feet in this island community. Again, one bridge, the only way in and out, and city officials had estimated about 100 people decided to stay and weather that storm. I've seen some of the video from the streets. If you want to check it out, you can go to the Cedar Key Fire Rescue Facebook page. They are posting what they can. It is a very dangerous situation out there. There is water in the streets, and they're urging people not to go down that way. That's one of the reasons that we do this, is to show you what is happening from the safety and comfort of your own home. And I can't stress that enough. We are seeing some people out here in Chiefland. I would not recommend it because I'm half concerned that I'm going to get hit from some debris. Of course, we are being as safe as possible. I need to stress that again. But the winds are really intense. And again, I'm about 30 miles away, guys. All right. Well, Forrest, hang in there. We know this is your, your first hurricane. But, you yeah. know, we say it. This, you say that, you know, the same thing. We have the same sentiment every hurricane season. Mm -hmm. But again, the positives outweigh the negatives. Yeah. So of course, you'll be okay. Absolutely. He will be all right. All right. So we're going to check in on Larissa because she is off of Bayshore Boulevard. This is an area that we are seeing some major flooding. Uh, some of the worst flooding we've probably seen. I in don't think years we've ever seen. Ever seen. Yeah. yeah Bayshore so looks like it's, you know, it's the bay. It looks I mean, like it's, it's the it's bay. Incredible. Larissa, has it gotten any worse? I know that you were talking about moving, but did you actually have to? So it's still pretty bad here. Thankfully, hasn't gotten much worse. It's still about the same since the last time we talked to you. So go ahead and I want to show you what we're dealing with currently. We still have that water pushing in from the bay. Again, we're here on Bayshore Boulevard near Swan and Magnolia. Um, you can see the, that bay water just crashing over um, that storm wall, that water wall right there. Um, and we have had so far this morning people coming to to check out what's going on here um you know now that it's daylight you can get a better picture of just how bad this flooding is right now um, several police officers still patrolling the area and um, we have one just uh, a half a mile up from us right now trying to keep people from coming down this way i just talked to him he confirmed that of course as i mean as you can see all of bayshore boulevard completely underwater still they have been told to to monitor for levels rising and uh, we of course have been out here watching for that as well a few moments ago we talked to a homeowner in the area she says she's lived here for about 40 years now says this is the worst that she's seen it just as bad as some some of the levels she's seen it. and of course a lot of people worried that it will get worse you know as the day goes on here um, but again officials are still encouraging people to to stay off of the roads if you pan Jason if you could just pan here just to show again um, just how much the water is coming coming in off of Bayshore Boulevard into some of these neighborhood roads. Um, you can't see any more now that it's daylight, but when it was dark, we could kind of see into this parking garage right next to us. The very first level is flooded. Um, again, like we said, we've had police officers here trying to keep people from coming. Like we've told you, we've had to have some cars turn around. We've got, we've seen some cars get stuck. We've had to make sure that people aren't getting into these waters. We've been told that they haven't been able to rescue people, you know, at certain points, especially as it was darker and now that it's that it's lighter they're trying to prevent people from driving through the water but you know we have people coming out here this morning they've asked us again as i just talked to first responders to remind everybody not to come out this way they're not sure exactly how high this water will rise so of course they're wanting people to stay safe but that that's the latest from us out here in bayshore boulevard back to you guys all right thank you so much larissa we just got word that the howard franklin is now closed in both directions that's certainly good news because of course we watched a vehicle traveling Southbound, uh, southbound or northbound? I think it was northbound. northbound. Yeah, they yeah, were on the bridge. Northbound. With the water covering the bridge. There it is right there. Just incredible. We saw a vehicle driving on the bridge with all that water covering, but it's now closed in both directions. Yeah, it's closed in both directions. You can see cars are still there, but it looks like they are clean.
clearing those cars out of there. All right, we're going to go ahead and turn things back over to Paul Legron because conditions are definitely getting much worse out there. We just we just told you that Keaton Beach is kind of where this storm has made landfall, and that is very, very close to where Paul is. Paul, uh, you could barely stand out there because the wind is getting so bad. Yeah, it's coming in real strong, guys. Uh, this is where you have to be uh, the temptation not to yell into the microphone because I know you can hear me. And <laughs> when you're in this situation, you feel like you have to, you know, speak and yell really loudly because it's it, the storm is getting loud now. But uh, I, uh, the wind is obviously strong. Debris is now flying. The rain is sideways, hitting in the face. Now it's coming back in the other way. It's almost like a circular motion. Uh, where it's, it's starting to circulate around. And that when that rain hits you, I mean, it's like nails right to the face. The, the rain, the water's starting to spray in sheets uh, in that field right now. The power lines, Tim, I don't know if you can see this right now, those power lines, you know, before I was bragging how everything was holding up, now it's definitely wobbling and shaking. Those power lines are starting to shake. The trees in the background taking a pounding right now. Uh, I see a... Tim, do you see that pole there uh, where that gas station is? I don't know if you can see that, but I, I don't know if that's like a, uh, a, I don't know what kind of structure that is, but it's definitely wobbling uh, right where that uh, canopy for that gas station is. I'm gonna, I'll walk around here. Uh, we've got kind of a unique situation because the canopy that uh, Tim is under kind of funnels out the wind. So I give you two perspectives here as I walk to the other side. Okay, you see the trees here uh, on the other side of the building. Hello, how you doing? Uh, are really taking a, a beating. Wow, look at that, guys. I mean, yeah, that's a big gust coming through. Got to watch out for any kind of debris. This is where uh, the contacts are definitely earning their money. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they when stay it comes in. to yeah. Let's watch keep them in your stuff. eyes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, fi I figured let's go with contacts today and not glasses uh, because uh, you want to see stuff. So uh, we're kind of protected with this building and even the cars, honestly, when it comes to some of this flying debris. But the wind is strong and we're seeing the strongest gusts of the day so far. And yeah, at times it's even difficult to stand. If you're not careful, you can get the your feet swept right out from underneath you. Yeah. Hey, I'm Paul, just walking your way uh, as I walk and talk. If you guys, yeah, go ahead. I don't know if you can hear me. You mentioned earlier that the hotel where a lot of people sure. in that area have taken shelter, lost power. Has it been flickering or did it yeah. come back on or is it just completely gone? No, it's off. Uh, and, and you got some folks here that are that are taking shelter inside. Hey guys, how you mm -hmm. doing? Families here that are that are staying in. They're good. You guys okay? You good? All right. Hey Paul, uh, yeah, so the power's out. It's, it's going to be dark in there. Paul, you're yeah, about ahead. you're about maybe two miles from the eye going directly over you, and it's going to. You are right now in the eye wall, and we were looking at radar. There's actually a, a pretty decent. I don't necessarily can't say a tornado, but there's definitely spin uh, relatively close to you as well. I mean, I'm not seeing anything that's oh, yeah. imminent, but I mean, you you are you are right now in the strongest winds of this entire hurricane. So what, what I'm seeing, and Tim, by the way, your photographer, for folks who are saying, you know, hey, how, how safe is that? Trust me on this one. Tim Jones, who's been here from day one of the station, the man knows what the he best. is doing. Yes, he he, does. he mm -hmm. really has everything the set best. up and, and, and knows the, the, the correct angle. Yep. He was texting me earlier saying, what angle is this coming in? Where are the winds? So, so there is safety going on from where that's going on. And you can see, I mean, there's storm chasers around all around you. I mean. I'm not going to lie. I mean, from standing from here from a weather person's perspective, have you ever done this before? Is this a first for you? Is it kind of exhilarating? Or are you just scared to death? Uh, no, I'm not scared. I've, I've uh, covered storms before. You don't want to get whacked in the face with anything. <laughs> so you you kind of take it as it comes. Uh, but I'm looking at the sky right now, and you were talking about the circulation. Wow, here we go, here we go. Take it as a take it in stride, right? But it's unique. It's interesting that uh, the sky. I can even see the circulation above me. The clouds are, are really uh, moving at a oh, pretty wow. fast rate. Yeah, you got from what you can make out uh, as the sun's coming up.
Yeah, you got debris coming around now. You might want to, you might want to pull into safety on this yeah. one now. Is that siding? Does that look like siding yeah, off of a building, maybe? Or it's all kinds of debris. Yeah. yeah. Oh my goodness. You know what? I think we should all get together and buy uh, Paul a shirt that says "Never Scared." <laughs> right. <laughs> Again, <laughs> fearless. I mean, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are they are you know professionals, and you mentioned Tim Jones mm -hmm. out there. He's been through so many hurricanes, too many hurricanes to count. But again, they are taking precautions out there. Dennis, you wanted to say something? Yeah, but you know, my thought is, he comes back over there with safety. We can still take the shot because they are in safety. I mean, this is the this right now is the eye of the hurricane, and it is incredibly rare to have a camera person right there in the eye of the storm mm -hmm. and at the eye wall. So you know, hopefully, when Paul walks walks back over to safety you can go back and, and, and give it a voiceover of what's happening because this is yeah. a one in a million, yeah. it really. It, it really kind of is. I thought it was also interesting. You saw the people in the hotel who had taken you know, shelter in the hotel coming outside because that's the basically the only place where they can go for shelter and it's lost power. And it's hot in there. Yeah, you know, well, a lot time of them, to get out and get some air. The, and they were going to their cars. Did you notice that? For Turning their cars, air conditioning, exactly. maybe Which power, you know, for their phones. Safe, course, yeah, right. you know, But, you know, there were storm chasers. The, those cars that went behind them that had this yeah. stuff on top of their car. Yeah. I mean, that's what they do. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and so Paul is now undercover. But we, don't have, but we don't have any video of it. We lost the picture. That's what it sounds like. Okay. I, I, we can, do, you, do we there want to? There he is. There oh, he is. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, so yeah, so Paul, so what's up? I got you. Yeah, so I guess I didn't see that behind me, so thank you. Uh, <laughs> I guess we got some debris, that fence in the area there, uh, starting to break apart. The trees obviously uh, are taking a pounding right now. Uh, and it's one of those things, it's like everything's fine until it's not, right? Everything's right. holding until it's not. Uh, and uh, what's the, the, the saying go, the center, the center doesn't hold? Uh, well, in this case, uh, you know, uh, Hurricane Adalia definitely making uh, her mark right now, guys. So that's the situation here. I mean, uh, th things have a breaking point and then and then they break and stuff starts flying around. So, but it, uh, it does look like I'm, it's uh, a lot less what now. Can I, say? I, uh, I mean, it does. It looks like it's a lot less now than yeah, it was yeah. two minutes ago, one minute ago. Yeah, you know, and it's it and, and Dennis, you know this better than I do. It, it's that that it's almost like the wind is like circulating around us. Mm -hmm. It's not straight. It's almost like in a circle. That's now a huge, it up again. Mm -hmm. huge gust right there. Uh, stuff is yep. Yep. That's starting to whip around. Um, so those cars out there, anything flies into it. They're sitting ducks. Uh, the power line's still holding strong, though, wow. uh, so far. But these trees are bending like crazy. You see the trees there. Uh, they're taking the wind. I mean, are there a lot of looky loos Are there a lot of people out there doing the same thing? They're just wanting to see this. Yeah. 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 Hey, I, you know, I don't want to put you guys in the spot. Anyone want to be my friend real quick and talk to me about what's <laughs> happening? No, y'all don't have to if you don't want to. I don't want to. I'm not going to put you on camera if you don't want to. I get it. But you can come out here and talk to me about what's going on. How are you doing, by the way? All right. Good. Yeah, good. I, I'm Paul, by the way. Paul Spearden. Hey, good to yep. meet you. Hey, are you from are you from this area? Keaton Beach, man. Uh, my okay. house is down at Keaton. Okay. I don't know if it's there or not. You got anyone that you're in touch with to know what's yeah, going on? Yeah, there's a guy. He's uh, he's a couple of miles up the, off the coast. He said it's horrible. Really? He said trees are falling in the yard. He said he's scared. Is he okay though, physically? Yeah, right as of 20 minutes ago, I don't. I, I hadn't called him back. And, and, and you, you know, we're we're trying to get a gauge on how many people stayed behind, how many people you know left and, and got shelter they, like you did. Almost everyone on uh, at Keaton Beach. I think they all left. If they stayed. I mean, I mean, we've, I've been there 40, 40 years, man. Yeah. I went through the storm of uh, 1993. It was called the No Name Storm, the storm of the century. And, uh, and we didn't know it was coming. We rode it out, 12 foot, 12 foot surge in the house. Um, so, but this right here, I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna have a house to go home to, man. I'm feeling for you and I'm feeling for those people that stayed behind and I'm worried about them. Uh, real quick, the people of Perry, what, if you were to describe it to someone, how would you describe the town of Perry and the people here? It's horrible. It's horrible. We've never seen this before. Cat category one has scared us, man. I mean, we've we, usually a category one or a tropical storm. We come to Perry and ride it out. This right here is bad. Yeah. This is bad. Yeah, no other way to say it. Hey, thanks for thanks, taking sir. a couple of minutes. Yes, I appreciate sir. it. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, you've got families. They're fully booked. They're in there. I think right now there's probably more people than, than there are rooms. Yeah, there you go. There's a strong gust right now. Um, wow. Okay. Even under the canopy, you're feeling it. 
So that's the story, guys. I mean, it, we're, as bad as we're getting it here, imagine this, the wind and the rain, and then put 15 feet of storm surge of water, which would be obviously double my size and more, rushing inland and trailblazing whatever's in front of it. Uh, so the gentleman that he was talking about, you know, I am thinking about those folks and I'm praying uh, about their situation. Paul, you know? Paul, I got a question for that. you. Really so, do. so Tim Jones, your photographer, yeah. has been through pretty much every big storm we've had. In fact, the, the pictures of Charlie with the hotel, the roof fell off. That was Tim Jones that shot that video. I'm curious if you could ask Tim, how does this storm yeah. compare to all those other storms that he's covered in the 30 years that he's been here? All right, let's do it. <laughs> Did, Tim's can we shy. switch it? Because Tim's behind the camera right now. I'll talk shy. to Tim. Come, come, hey, uh, can we? No? All right, well, Tim, <laughs> Tim's manning the camera right now. He said this is a strong storm. Uh, he says, Tony, will you, will you operate the camera real quick? Tim's like, no, that camera's too expensive. He can't let go of the camera because the, obviously the camera could blow away yeah. and then uh, we're in big, big trouble. Yeah, he's a big guy, too. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, he says this is right up there wow. with uh, the worst that he's seen. So, How does it compare with Charlie? Uh, obviously, he's probably been in even more dangerous situations than this and than what I have. But um, uh, yeah, I mean, this is impressive, guys. Uh, it, it, impressive in a, in, a, in a visual way and impressive in a bad way when it comes to anyone that's out in this. And Paul, what kind of debris are you seeing? There you go. Oh, there we go. What kind of debris are you seeing in that area? Starting to make noise here. I think I may have lost you guys. Oh, yeah, okay. that's okay. That's all right. Uh, just to be able to look at that video, Dennis, you talked about how well, we lost him. You talked yeah. about how rare it is to be able to just watch what's happening in the eye of the storm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go over to the radar, guys. Look at the look at the wind totals that I'm uh, that we're looking at. It's 105 miles an hour. Wow. Uh, you know, 115. This is all right there around Perry. So 108. So yeah, I mean, we we are, are look. He is he is standing right now in the most active, the strongest part of this entire hurricane. So, I mean, again, what we just watched is, is a rarity. I mean, you know, we've had storm chasers for, throughout decades at this station, and I've been here from day one, and very rare that you actually can place it, because it, it, it takes a lot of luck and a lot of skill. The skill part is to stay safe, and Tim is as good as it gets mm -hmm. when it comes to that. But, you know, you can, I mean, a perfect example, in the last 12 hours, this track has gone from where they were all the way over to Tallahassee practically and then all the way back and that's where the track has gone and he just happened to be in the right place at the right time and, and our hope is because as he mentioned uh, Keaton Beach that was landfall I mean that was landfall of this hurricane with 125 mile an hour winds and um, I, I have a bad feeling that that area is not did not fare well with that surge Greg weren't they looking at a surge of up to 15 feet wasn't that the prediction? Yeah, the, the, the prediction was 12 to 16. I'm looking at the tidal gauge at Cedar Key. It's still reporting 10 and a half feet above mean low level tide. So it is a it's still going up. It's a 10 and a half foot surge right now at Cedar Key. And that's not near landfall. Uh, and it's still going up now at Cedar Key. They're past low tide, uh, by the way. Uh, some positive news out of the Bay Area, or it could be positive news, looking at some of the tidal gauges, they have either, either leveled off, which I'm seeing over toward Old Hillsboro Bay, or over towards Old Tampa Bay. The one at East Bay is actually starting to drop just a little bit. Now, it peaked at 7.4 feet. So this... The original forecast from the Hurricane Center is what was what actually ended up coming true here. They lowered the forecast to six feet, but ended up being at 7.4 feet. You see they're just in the very end, that little line. I don't know if you can make it out from home, but it's starting to go down. How to request folks asking what's going on around Safety Harbor and Oldsmar. I have no gauges in this part of the bay, so I cannot tell you. But looking at social media, I'm getting multiple reports around Oldsmar of homes flooded. And I'm sure that is happening all the way through town and country as well. Uh, over towards Clearwater, where we have a live crew there as well, uh, that right now is 6.3 feet. It peaked 
at over 6.5. And this one is holding steady. It's not going up and down. I do not have a gauge at Tarpon Springs either, unfortunately. Uh, we do have some water, though. We have a reporter, uh, Keely's out there. Keely McCormick is out there, and we have some water out there. Are we going to go to her right now? Is that where you guys want to go? Keely, you've been in Tarpon Springs. How has the water level changed over the last couple of hours? Greg, well, it's really a lot of water, and just when I think, oh, it can't get any higher, it does. Just in the last 10 minutes standing here, it's gone up about two more inches on my legs here, and we're standing in the shallow part right now. If you go further down this street, I mean, it's above my knees. A lot of these businesses here do have sandbags, but as you can see here, the water's over the sandbag seeping into that business there, which I do think is the case for a lot of shops and restaurants on this street, unfortunately. There's a bench you can see here. The water's all the way up to the top of it there. And the river and the sidewalk, it's kind of just meshed into one big river of water. The water's really been spilling over that seawall. And that's what's rising these boats up so high, if you can see that across the street here. The boats are really just level with the sidewalk um, from where we are now. The rain has not been too bad out here today until the last 20 minutes. It's really picked up before the rain started. I did have to make a call to 911 dispatch because we saw some billowing black smoke further down on the docks here. There was a little bit of commotion with some people who had seen that. The fire department did have people on the way. The smoke is gone now, but that was definitely um, a concern there. And it still is as the rain continues to come down and we continue to see yeah. some of this widespread flooding. So I did speak to an officer earlier. He really wanted to stress that people should stay home. There's no reason to really go for a walk right now. You definitely do not want to be out driving. I mean, the, the cars really cannot get through this street. We've seen a few big lifted trucks try to make it through, but it's really not a safe situation. So definitely you want to stay home. You can see just how flooded it is as you look down that street there. And that's the case for all the streets here down here, all the off streets. It's just all very flooded. So we're going to continue to keep an eye on that. But for now, we'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right. Thank you, Keely. We want to get back over to Dennis Phillips. Dennis has some information. Yeah, that uh, very close to, to the Tarpon Springs area, Dia. I just got a message from Pinellas County on my phone. It's a text and it's pretty important information. So it's saying areas throughout the Palm Harbor, Ozona and Crystal Beach coastal areas are experiencing flooding due to Hurricane Adalia. Some roads have become impassable. Tides will continue to rise throughout the morning, which will worsen flood conditions. If you are on the west side of Alternate 19, from Curlew Road to Klosterman Road, and have not yet evacuated, please do so now. It says if you're unable to evacuate, call 911. Pinellas County has 10 shelters open for those who need a safe place to go. So Pinellas.gov sent a text because I live in that area and said that if you live west of Alt 19 between Curlew and Klosterman, you need to evacuate now because the water is already coming up and is already impassable. And if you can't get out, call 911 for help. Mm -hmm. So it's clearly going to get worse before it gets better in this area. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dennis, we also have some more information to pass along right now. Hernando County Sheriff's Office has ordered no access to all residential areas west of US 19 because of the rapidly increasing storm surge. Also, that area is no longer accessible to any emergency vehicles for that same reason. So again, that is from the Hernando County Sheriff's Office. And then Larissa Scott, who was along Bayshore Boulevard, she just sent an update really quickly that soldiers are heading out with high water vehicles throughout Pinellas. So you can expect that. Uh, if there if you are experiencing any flooding, if you're trapped in your house, just know that they are getting some crews out there in uh, those high water vehicles to hopefully uh, help rescue folks. Yeah, but they of course they're not going to do that until it's mm -hmm. safe to do mm -hmm. so. So, you know, hang tight. Oh, also Hernando County says if you do have an emergency call 911. Yeah, uh, let's go back out to Michael Paluska. He's in Citrus uh, in Crystal River mm -hmm. um, to give us an update. When we last checked in with him, the conditions were calm. But of course, there is that concern about storm surge. Michael. Dia, yeah, you know, that, that concern that we've had, you know, how much are we going to get? Seven, seven feet, 11 feet, four feet, a little bit more. We're projected for seven, 11. It's really been 
really ripping in from Kings Bay here into Crystal River. I mean, I can just show you this. This is a canal uh, underwater, all of this just pouring in. And this is not a road, but it looks like it because you see the bend and then really far off, you see those cars parked on that hill. Uh, I don't like, those aren't my cars. I don't like seeing those up there. I mean, it is coming up so fast that uh, I had a GoPro rolling just to get a little time lapse of the water and it was over the top of it. And I had to call my producer to grab it so it didn't get swept away. Luckily. I saved my GoPro, which is great. Uh, we moved to a different part. We'd been along the seawall, kind of farther down by the plantation inn. Now we get to see like the broader look of where this water is coming from. So that's pretty calm to the right, which is the canal uh, that we've been reporting from. But the boats are really starting to get up a little higher over those, uh, I, I guess they're pylons. They're more like wooden uh, fence posts. Uh, and then over here to the left, you can see this really open area and you can see the current just really starting to pick up. It's not as slow as we thought. Obviously, we're a little protected here from a massive surge like we saw in Fort Myers Beach or possibly what happened uh, in the Big Bend with this storm um, because we have so much of this nature coast. We have a lot of these uh, huge hammocks, uh, mangroves, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that, ki that kind of protect us, and it breaks up that surge, but it's coming. Obviously, I, I walked a really far distance away from where my rain jacket is because there was no rain. Um, and so now here I am without a jacket, but I'm soaked anyway. I think the biggest concern really is when we interviewed the Citrus County Sheriff is that when he was going through from here to Homosassa, he was asking people, hey, you guys going to go, you guys going to go, you guys going to go. Everybody was like, no, we're staying. So not a lot of people left. And that's a really big issue because he said they're not going to go get them until the water goes down. I mean, they can't go through these, these flooded canals in what's really a nature preserve. You know, there's alligators in here. There's snakes. We've seen a ton of animals already coming up, jumping into our room, which is uh, what we're set up on the ground floor. Uh, and so I think this is going to be the trend now. It turned on really Really like a fire hose as soon as the winds shifted started coming in more to the southeast and is in really what all of our weather folks dennis jason everybody greg D all right, it looks like we just lost uh, Michael's shot there, but you can see that the water is rising in his area. I also have an update from the city of Clearwater. They just tweeted out that, um, you know, th there was a mandatory evacuation notice there, uh, but for anyone who did decide to stay, uh, they want you to restrict your water and toilet usage, meaning do not flush your toilet if you don't need to because uh, the city's lift stations and stormwater systems are under strain right now. So they're unable to uh, handle what's what's happening out there. I want to make a bad situation worse. No, you don't. OK, let's go back to Paul Legrone. Dennis, uh, how much longer does Paul have before he's out of this eye wall? Yeah, um, Paul is actually going to be in the eye or, or quite possibly in the western side of the eye very soon. That could be the lightning that's going the lightning of the sky behind him. He's still in the eye wall, but he's really close. So, I, Greg, what do you think? I mean, look how much lighter it is behind him right there. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're kind of at the edge of it, Paul. I know you're on the southeast side of town, but the eye is moving to your south and east, so you could be in it for another 30 minutes or more. Uh, it's still all the way back to the coast to kind of give you an idea of where it is. It's basically between Perry and the coast is the main part of the eye wall. So you could still get some strong winds, and uh, we're certainly seeing a lot of lightning around you. Are you hearing thunder? I lost IFB. Okay, no, I can't hear us. I lost IFB. But uh, clearly, he's still in the eye wall because, I mean, I, you know, look at the, yeah. and there it is, I mean, right there. So if you look at Perry, I mean, didn't you say, Greg, he was a little bit southeast? Just southeast of the center of Perry so there. Probably on right about there. So right about there. Which, of course, you see that spin just off to the north of him. And, and, and okay, he's back. So. So, Paul, uh, you're, you're still in the eye wall, uh, if you can hear us, but uh, what about lightning? It looks like there's quite a bit of lightning around you as well. Have you been seeing any of that? Yeah, it's been strong. In fact, before you guys went to me, it got really bad. Stuff started flying around. It was a box that almost hit somebody over here. So you have to kind of duck and take cover. Uh, we're even seeing, can you see this uh, truck here? starting to get lifted a little bit the wind coming underneath it so uh and i want to show you let's see there's a down tree tim i don't know if we can see that can't see that because the car's in the way but there was a tree there it snapped over in that direction a bigger tree <coughs> tim i know it's i know we're trying to take cover and show you guys at the same time but uh actually tim there it is 
smaller tree snapped there'll be more of that for sure and then a bigger tree over there uh already snapped and broke down uh, and stuff started flying so uh the power lines are holding up the wind got really strong everyone rushed inside uh, that was one of those moments where you're realizing just how powerful uh, these winds are and uh, you got to pay attention to stuff flying around so uh, and i by the way um there's pictures uh we're getting pictures from people here steen hatchy is completely underwater uh, right. up to the rooftops and, and beyond so it's gone uh, and hopefully those folks are okay but you know it, not a good situation not a good situation picking up again there it goes mm. oh my goodness. wow We'll check back in with Paul when it's when it's safe to do so. We want to make sure that they take cover um, because they're in the, the worst part of the storm right now. We just got some information I want to pass along real quick yeah. from Pasco County officials. They are urging you, of course, you know, this is happening everywhere, to stay home, stay in your shelter, and stay off the roads. They said mm -hmm. there's no reason for anyone to be on the roads right now, and they will let, let us know so that we can let you know when it's safe to go back outside. And also, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office is preparing to shut down US-41 northbound from Big Bend to Sims because of flooding. So again, the bay, we're seeing flooding all around that the bay, all around that area from Bayshore all the way to US 41 uh, near Big Bend. And speaking of yeah. flooding, let's go back to James Tully uh, live on Clearwater Beach where he had been watching some flooding out there on uh, Coronado, Coronado Boulevard. James. Hey, good morning, Dia and Heather. Yeah, we've actually moved up, got some higher ground here. I want to give you this perspective. So Coronado is uh, one block to um, on the other side of the hotel. This is Hamden Drive and it is completely flooded. Right in front of Hamden is the Clearwater Bay, the inlet we were talking about. So this, uh, the perspective here is, you know, it's obvious. I mean, the storm surge here has gotten, uh, this is as bad as it has been. Uh, high tide expected around 1130 right now, the surge at six and a half feet. This is what six and a half feet of surge in Clearwater Beach looks like, you know, very narrow area. I mean, this entire, as far as the eye can see this morning, streets are flooded. Um, and as we take a look, Mike, uh, you know, you got one person out here. What's been really interesting, guys, is just to watch the looks on people's faces as they left the hotel we're staying at, people I've seen on the street, and they, as they're waking up and looking outside, just disbelief. Uh, this is something many people here have never seen before. Certainly something I've never seen before. It's been decades uh, since something like this has, has been seen. So the effects of it here as we, as we take a look, um, the water uh, may be receding a little bit from, from this hotel in front of us, some of these homes up here, but it was certainly up against it uh, just a couple of, uh, I don't know, maybe an hour ago or so. So, you know, that, I mean, this is this is the perspective I wanted to give you. Um, we've seen a couple of, uh, let's see, a couple of fire trucks come in here. Um, otherwise, a couple of officials uh, making their way through the streets very carefully. Uh, but again, high tide coming at 11:30 this morning. So one would one would expect this to to rise uh, with the tide. Uh, we'll be here. We'll keep tracking it for you. I'll, I'll send things back to you guys. All right, thanks, James. We'll check back in with James uh, momentarily. Yeah, and right now we're going to go out to Forrest Saunders, who is live in the Chiefland area. Uh, that is near Cedar Key. I know that you had to move because of the conditions, but the conditions right now where you are is pretty bad. Forrest, you were describing the rain hitting your face like ice chips hitting your face. It's that intense. Yeah, that's exactly what it feels like. I'm now feeling it on my back through this coat because it is just hitting me with so much force. It feels like little pieces of jagged ice just smacking you in the back. Uh, and really, we, we hoped that the conditions would start improving, but of course, we're not through this yet. This is a relentless storm and the winds just keep blowing more and more and more. Uh, we haven't seen any debris or anything like that, but you can tell because, hey, it's, you know, Gosh, what time is it? I'm not even sure right now, uh, but it's early in the morning and you'd expect to see people commuting to work and all of that. No, everybody is locked down. They are truly hunkering down here in Chiefland. I am 27 miles away from Cedar Key. And if the conditions here are this bad, they are not great there either. In fact, they're worse. I have seen some of the pictures that the city and local officials out there are posting on their social media pages. 
it is not good. There are trees down. There is water uh, that is creeping through all of the streets. In fact, in some places, it is just flooding. It looks like a river of water in some parts of that town. Uh, a lot of debris there. And the big concern is that's an island community out there. That's why we moved inland is because we knew that that storm surge was going to be a real big problem. So we came closer um, to shore and, and slowly throughout the night we've been pushing back further and further. And now here we are in the morning, uh, as I said, about 30 miles away, trying to be as safe as possible in these conditions, which again are just relentless. I am drenched every part of me. And uh, this is this has been exhausting. I can only imagine what it is like for those people out there on that island, guys. Yeah, Forrest, it, it really is. And, and, you know, when you when you do um, storm coverage like this for as long as Forrest has been out there, Paul and, and everyone else, uh, it is it is exhausting. I, I, I'm curious, do you have water in your boots? Because that's usually what happens. I know you'll get like a, a you know, a couple <laughs> inches of water in your boots. You got to you got to empty it out and keep doing that throughout the morning. <laughs> I could honestly do it for you on air, but I will <laughs> spare you because I probably got a fish bowl. I might even have a goldfish in this one. It is bad. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, what we're seeing is just these sheets of rain that are punishing. Uh, every five or so minutes, it'll just pick up again and smack you. Uh, so, no, hopefully we will get a reprieve one of these days uh, <laughs> because I'm not, I'm not counting on it happening anytime soon. Forrest, thank you. Stay safe out there. Thank you so much. Go get, go maybe get out of there for just a little bit and dry off a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. It could be he's, good for you. He said he's drenched. <laughs> yeah. Poor okay. Guy. Speaking of some sites that we haven't seen uh, probably ever, yeah. Bayshore mm -hmm. Boulevard underwater. Let's go back live to Larissa Scott now. Larissa, it, it's shocking. Mm -hmm. It is, Dion. We've been telling you because of how shocking it is and how much water is coming over onto Bayshore and surrounding neighborhood streets. We've been telling you that emergency crews have been making their rounds, patrolling the area to make sure that people are staying safe. And we now have a, a police officer stationed here again. They've been coming and going over the past several hours. And, and just check it out right here. We're here off of Magnolia, um, several yards in off of Bayshore Boulevard. You can see the water still steady rising. You know, it has slowed down some. I'd say over the past hour it slowed down. It was definitely rising much more rapidly about an hour ago, but it's still coming in. We can still see those waves crashing over from the bay onto Bayshore across the street here and over, you know, we're near Magnolia and Swan still this morning. We're told much of Bayshore completely flooded, some of it on both sides and other areas just going one direction on Bayshore Boulevard, but we've told there have been a team of first responders out on Bayshore trying to make sure that people are not driving in this. Like we said, we have seen cars getting stuck this morning over the overnight hours and in the daylight hours as well. One woman told us she just didn't know how deep the water was. Um, you know, we've had to help people turn around. We've had a lot of neighbors coming out this morning to check this out. Many of them telling us they've never seen it this high ever. We we talked to one woman who's been here for 40 years now. She says, you know, this is on par with the worst that she has seen it. And she and her neighbors say they'll be watching to see if the water will be getting any worse. You can see, again, police officer out, still out here, people coming to check this out because they tell us that they are just shocked, shocked to see Bayshore Boulevard like this. We will, of course, continue to keep you updated on what's going on out here. That's the latest live from Bayshore. Back to you guys. Okay, take a look at this right here. This is drone video from ABC. This is Treasure Island. It's just, it's flooded. The whole area is flooded. Uh, Heather and I were talking about um, access to Treasure Island. It's now cut off because, of course, you know, the access to Barrier Islands has been closed, so the bridges around Treasure Island um, are not accessible right now. That's a, an emergency vehicle that's high water. making its way through a high water vehicle. A high water vehicle, yeah. To do those and, rescues. And that's exactly what Larissa was saying, that they were going to be sending out these high water vehicles. So it looks like that is one of them. Uh, and like you said, you can't access this area, of course, unless you're an official trying to make, uh, you know, rescues, trying to help out in some way. Uh, this obviously too is the area where Chad Mills was originally at the, the very beginning of our shifts, which was around one, two o'clock in the morning. Uh, he was out in tre tre the Treasure Island area and then he had moved. Yes. 
And um, I think about it, it's, it's gone from what we saw earlier. Just, mm -hmm. you know, not as, the flooding was not as bad yeah. to this. It's just, an, it's incredible. Yeah, take a look at that. And how quickly it happened as well. Mm. Yeah, that's that's hard to look at. Um, it, it, not a lot of trees down, which is good because again, the wind wasn't the story. It was the storm surge, so that is good. And the buildings seem to be doing faring fair, faring pretty well. Uh, of course, they probably have some flooding because of the water, but it doesn't look like uh, any wind major wind damage. We also have we're seeing some um, some erosion in Treasure Island Beach erosion, of course, in Treasure Island as well. But you know, Dennis and Greg had been saying for the longest that the wind and rain wouldn't be a concern, you know, for the Bay Area. It was going to be mm -hmm. the storm surge, which is what we're seeing right now. Um, again, access to Treasure Island is cut off. So that high water vehicle that you just saw, if there are people who are stuck there who yeah. need rescuing, it's called 911 and that's their only way out at this point. They right. can't get on or off the island. Yeah, that's pretty incredible video. Yeah. Okay, let's go back over to Pinellas County now. Um, Keely McCormick is uh, in Tarpon. Tarpon Springs. She's been there uh, throughout the morning. Keely, how's it? How are the conditions there? Well, Adia, Heather, the flooding here is pretty intense, as you can see, and it just keeps getting higher and higher. I spoke to some people here who say they've never seen it come this high and this far up. This whole street and the sidewalks have really just merged together with the river here. The boats are lifted up so high they're at the level with the seawall because the river is so high pushing that water here into the street, onto the sidewalks, and into businesses, which is the really unfortunate thing in this situation. A lot of them do have sandbags covering the front doors, but as I showed you guys a little bit earlier, the water surpassed that at a lot of these locations. Some places are boarded up, there's garbage bags on the windows. A lot of people are doing everything they can to keep the water out. We did speak to a business owner who was pumping the water out from inside his store back onto the street, but this flooding is just really intense and it keeps coming even higher than you would think. Just in the last two minutes, it's it's or last 20 minutes, it's risen about two inches again, so it just keeps getting higher and higher and we do expect to see more of that. Now I do want to show you this way. This is a little bit shallower as we kind of get higher onto the ground here. But I did speak to some locals who say they've never even seen the water reach here, let alone, you know, make it all the way up there. So we'll see where it stops and we'll see when it stops. We'll continue to keep you guys updated on that. But for now, I'm live in Tarpon Springs. Keely McCormick, ABC Action News. Yeah, Keely's been talking about the boats um, in that area, how, it, you know, the water has risen so high that it's gone over the seawall and the boats are, you know, in that area. I was out there a couple of years ago expecting storm surge and we didn't end up getting any. Um, I can't remember exactly which hurricane that was. However, the people that own those boats, they prepare big time. Of they they do. Tie, That's their livelihood. Yeah, they yeah. tie those things down multiple ways. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to Paul Agron in Perry. When we checked in with him last time, he was in the eye of the storm. Yeah. He's at a hotel where a lot of people in that area have taken shelter. They're all coming out. He's been making friends. They're all coming out talking to him. He's got kids, hey, dogs out there. Shoes. Paul, how's it going? Okay. Yeah, well, right now people are concerned about, uh, we're concerned about Steen Hatchy. Uh, we're seeing live video here uh, right now coming coming to us from your... Uh, that's Keith. Keaton Beach. Beach. Yeah. Okay. Now, Steen Hatch is from what the videos we've seen this underwater. Can y'all can y'all bring that closer to us? Can we get a look at that? This these are live pictures here of Keaton Beach that's getting hit right now. But we've also seen pictures of Steen Hatchy that is 15 feet underwater, um, and, and so people people are getting their first look at this guys in real time, and they're watching homes that they know. And they're reacting in real time right now. Spy, tell me what we're seeing, buddy. Yeah, so that's Keaton Beach. That they're going all the way to the point. They got about a quarter of a mile, and they'll be in. That's where the land ends. And then we have a little public. I'm talking to Gary Williams right here. Gary, your house is fine. We're fine, man. So right now, as of right now, we're looking pretty good at Keaton Beach. Now you had pictures earlier of of Steen Hatchy, and it was completely submerged, correct? Yeah. Uh, yeah, somewhat. Yeah, Roy's. So there's a restaurant there, and Roy's seem to be. They may have some water in the restaurant, but okay. So, so what are you feeling right now? Man, my house is right now. I still have a house. Yeah. So if you guys tell me the worst of it's left Keaton Beach, 
<laughs> I'm in good shape, man. Wait, let's, let's get a read on that. I don't know if we, if Dennis is back with us. Uh, if the worst has left Keaton Beach, I'm going to go back outside. Spy, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Y'all y'all stay in. Uh, let me get out here real quick. The worst yeah, seems to be where we are. Yeah, you're still you're still in the eye wall, go obviously. Ahead. What about Keaton Beach? Is Keaton Beach is actually where landfall it's where it made landfall. Yeah. The hurricane made landfall at Keaton Beach is a category three hurricane. Wow. He's right there at the still mm. picking up. I mean, he, he, the, the man he was just talking to was wondering, is it past Keaton Beach? Is his house in the yeah, clear? Yeah, it is. Okay. okay. It is. Because he, he was saying he heard his house is still standing, well, which is good. Well, it is, but then he's going to get the other side of the eye. Okay. But it's not nearly as strong as the as the front side is. So, so yeah. I mean, Paul, I mean, you can see he's in Perry. And that, that little that little gust that he had right there, boy, that's really close to the mm -hmm. spin that you're seeing there. On, I mean, really close to the spin that was showing up right there. So uh, he's, but Keaton Beach, I'll show you. Keaton Beach is down here. Uh, I believe it was right in there. Yeah, right there. And so they're in the eye. Keaton Beach is in the eye. And on the other side, there's the back side of the eye, but there's not a lot of bad weather out there associated with it. I mean, it's still the eye wall, so maybe still some gusty winds, but not even close to what Paul's dealing with right now, which is right there. And he's Paul's been in the eye wall for what, like 40 minutes? It's or been something? a while, yeah. It's almost like it's uh, kind of slowed down and rotated around him, and he's still got a little bit ways to go. That backside, as you see there, is really, really strong. Uh, he'll get a bit of a break, and then there's more of the storm coming in behind him. The winds will be from the north and west, so hopefully by then the wind is blowing some of that water back out to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, you would expect to be a big, the water would recede in a big way here uh, in this area where, where Paul is right now. Uh, we, are, we are working on some pictures for you guys uh, right now from Steen Hatch, All right, so we'll take a look at those. Uh, no so, surprise, yeah. there are still houses there underwater right now. Uh, as far as for the rest of you in the Bay Area, uh, if you're just kind of looking out the window, I've gotten a couple of requests and weather reports. Uh, there's bands of rain. There's haven't been any severe weather warnings in a while, in at least over an hour. Uh, but we'll continue to watch. We're under a tornado watch until 3 o'clock this afternoon. And there are still going to be some strong wind gusts in this. But then it's from now on, the wind should gradually and steadily decrease, at, not only as the storm weakens, but it's also moving away from us at this And it's point. moving away quickly. Yeah, it is. At almost 18 miles an hour. So th this should clear up. I mean, by midday, any strong wind gust should be done. And by then, we'll already have reached our high tide early in the afternoon. I think after 2 or 3 o'clock, we're going to see some pretty, pretty quickly improving conditions. Matter of fact, we'll probably end up seeing some sunshine in the afternoon. Yeah, yeah, and that's a possibility. Could, could fire up some thunderstorms. I mean, some mm -hmm. of you could still hit 90 later today. So this is the Steen Hatchy camera that we've been watching, and apparently it's been moved a little bit. The docks there obviously are floating, so they're going to adjust to the level of the water. Uh, they're, they're. Attached. But they're there. Yeah, they're there. They're still there. So that's a good sign, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they survived the, uh, the wind and the surge, uh, but the, the surge here likely was significant, likely over 10 feet. We saw 10 feet. I saw 10 and a half feet at Cedar Key. So you got to figure this was in that 12 to 16 foot range. And uh, the wind and the rain continues here, too. Uh, it's going to be a while before folks can really get out there and probably assess this, especially in this area. I think I'm pretty hard hit. This is the Howard Franklin. This is the area that was closed earlier. The bridge is still closed, I believe, right? Correct? Yeah, in, both in both directions. In both directions. Water coming up over the bridge. Obviously, it's not just the water that's the concern here. It's bringing over debris. And anytime you see the water crashing like this, you have to go and assess the structure of the road underneath to make sure that there is something supporting the asphalt so that when folks do venture out on the bridge, uh, they are doing so safely. So the bridge will remain closed until they have a time to take a look at it. The bay is still high. It has fallen back a little bit. I've been watching the highest tide I could find or the highest surge that I could find from the storm was at East Bay, which is uh, the bay by Port Tampa Bay, where the fuel port is, as you come down Causeway into Ebor and Palmetto Beach, that's where that sensor was, and it registered 7.4 feet of surge above the, the, the low water level. Let's go back to Paul. Paul, uh, yeah. storm's moving through. You're still in the eye wall. Uh, let us know kind of what you're seeing. How, how, how are things looking out there? 
what happens is things get calm, then they really blow up and the wind comes through this canopy and it just funnels right through. Uh, I, was told to <laughs> I was told to come back in. Uh, if I go back out there, uh, you've got trees that are snapping right now and uh, debris flying around and you can see some of that happening in real time here. And so uh, the situation right now is things get calm deceptively, relatively speaking, and then all of a sudden it just explodes and people kind of rush inside to the hotel, to the canopy here. Um, hey, Paul, I'll, I'll tell you, over the last uh, half yeah, hour, gonna, yeah, go uh, ahead. the last half hour, we've seen at least six or seven areas of spin, um, early tornadoes, vortices, whatever you want to call it. And, and I'll tell you, I would not be the least bit surprised if one of those ones that you just hit, because it looked like it was calm, and then all of a sudden it just opened up. I would not be the least bit surprised if that was something with that because I mean even right now I'm seeing spin all around you and I'm, I'm kind of surprised you haven't seen a little more significant damage because what you're showing right there I mean you showed some tree branches but you're not seeing trees down are you are you seeing any actual property damage yeah I mean you're seeing you got in this wooded area here we've seen it's slowly starting to erode away you've seen some trees snapping for sure uh, and then in the back of us, that construction area, I'm, I know, is taking a beating. And Tim, I don't know, it's getting a little calm here, so I'm going to walk that way, okay? Uh, you see that, that uh, structure there, that, that white fenced area? That's taking a beating. So, yeah, you're starting to see uh, debris uh, fly around here. But the cars, they're shaking, but they're standing in place. You're right. I mean, that's the good news is... Mm -hmm. All things considered, not bad. But you see how it's like, okay, it's doable right now. Like any second now it could get, it could explode and kind of take well, your breath away. And here we go. Yeah, you're still in the eye wall. Back here. I mean, you are, yep. you are still in the eye wall of a category three yeah. hurricane. Yeah, you feel it too, even under here. I mean, it's sideways. I've been in this situation before. You, you, you got to laugh, right? <laughs> but um, wow, and that's like oh my god! Whoa, 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 whoa! Yeah, I, I'm again. I mean, they're and they're under. They're in an area of safety. I mean, they're under yeah, that carport. Yeah. But I think and this, this is the point, back end of the storm. You would you would think that this side of the storm would be a little weaker than what they got in the beginning, but it is just as strong, if not stronger, yeah. than, than what they got in the beginning. This, this storm still has staying power. Now, officially, from the Hurricane Center, the winds are down as it is now over land at 120, made landfall at 125, uh, though it is still, a, as you see, really dangerous storm there. So uh, we're going to get Paul back into safety and back inside. All right, we've got uh, James Tully. He's live over in Clearwater. We've been tracking the flooding there. Uh, James, I've been watching some of the gauges around Clearwater, and they may be indicating that maybe we're starting to at least level off, maybe even seeing just the slightest drop, though nothing conclusive yet. What are you seeing on the ground? I mean, the flooding there, it, it, it was pretty substantial, at least at the street level. I don't know if we're going to be able to get to James. Ever so is. slightly, maybe that's receding a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Do you got you have me now? I got you. you we got, got you, James. We got you. Yeah, I would. Good. I'd agree with what you said, Greg. Maybe ever so slightly. This down here is Hamden Drive. Just take note of the center yellow line there. You can see the amount of flooding. Uh, interesting to follow up Paul's shot with this. Uh, while the weather here is, of course, substantially improved, uh, this storm has left its mark here in Clearwater. As you see, this surge in excess of six feet, as you told me, Greg, and uh, high tide coming, uh, upcoming around 1130 a.m. But as far as the eye can see, there's flooded streets and Clearwater Bay directly in front of me here. I should have said that first. So this is Clearwater Bay. This is Hamden Drive. And you get the perspective of this flooded street uh, right there. I'm trying to look at certain things, Greg, to see if the water is in, in fact going back a little bit. 
I'm going to draw your attention to this pink and green hotel over here. Uh, look at the front. Uh, one of those front doors, Mike. Yeah, I, I would say 25, 30 minutes ago, there was water up to that front door. So that's a good sign. Might be coming back a little bit. And particularly with tide rising, that is what we want to see. So, you know, where your eyes in the sky up here is we've taken a high ground to get a better perspective. So we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. And uh, you guys... Uh, can uh, send it back to us. Interesting out front, and we saw some people putting up some more, um, some more storm barriers, if you will, some some storm uh, uh, things on windows. Uh, you know, boarding boarding up windows is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Losing the ability to speak. Yeah, this is the shock look on a lot of people's faces. They were waking up and saw this was really something to see because it's something a lot of people have never seen before in, in Clearwater. So again, uh, looking at Clearwater Bay and then the street here and hoping we see some more, uh, some more water recede here and we'll keep an eye on it for you and I'll send things back to you. All right, James, thanks so much. You're looking uh, back at the radar here as we continue to track uh, this uh, powerful hurricane, still a hurricane, still a category three from the Hurricane Center tracking through Perry now the backside of the eye wall is now moving through where Paul was and still is and you see the radar continues to show it's really interesting how these spins have stayed over Perry no matter yeah. where the eye wall has yeah. been they, they just keep popping up it seems like Paul really has been getting the worst of the storm for the better of the last hour Dennis. And, and he hasn't quite made it to the eye he's always been right yeah. along the edge of the eye and and I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen a tornado warning in any of these because, I mean, there's been a good six, seven, eight of them. But uh, and, and, and you can see, as Paul said, he'd be out there and it would be quiet. And I had a chance to chase a Cat 5 back in 2005, also with Tim Jones as my photographer. And, and I remember it was the same way. And it, this was a nighttime landfall, Rita was. So we would be out there and you would hear the wind before you felt it. Mm -hmm. It sounded like a lion roaring. Here it was coming. the craziest thing. And then it would just take sweep you off your feet in a sense. And then it would calm down and it would do it all over again, which is exactly what Paul's been dealing with now over the last half hour, 45 minutes. So, so as Greg said, we continue to see it's moving through and he's right on the fringe of the eye. But then again, he's kind of been on the fringe of the eye now for quite a while. And for our and, and there there is again a view like, let's go back and, and look, you know, let's look at the last couple of hours and watch it as it came through. Because there it is through Keaton Beach. That's where landfall was. And now still the northern half of that eye wall is still significant. And that's moving into northern Florida and east of or rather west of Lake City. So it does look like Lake City is going to be spared some of the worst of this. And then it's going to go on into Georgia. Yeah, Madison there is the county seat of Madison County. That's going right through that city. And we can safely say, Dennis, that on this track, Tallahassee had no hurricane force winds from this. No. This is, they probably had some. I mean, looking, remembering where Paul was in relation to the eye and where Tallahassee is in relation to it, they probably just had some relatively minor gusts. Uh, compared to what's happening just down the road there on I-10. And this is all going to head into South Georgia. I think Valdosta there is up 75. That's probably going to be the next, that's probably the biggest actually population center yeah. in the path of this eye, which is incredible because Valdosta is <laughs> clearly not a coastal city. And they may be dealing with a Category 2 hurricane rolling through here in the next couple of hours. Yeah, there it is. It's going yeah. right for it. Right, right for it. I mean, it's re literally on track for Valdosta. Uh, Highway 82, I believe it is there, that cuts across South Georgia through Valdosta. Took it many times when I lived in South Alabama down towards Tallahassee. And it is headed right up there on 75. And then it'll continue through South Georgia, through the Coastal Empire, over towards Brunswick and eventually Savannah. And be a problem for folks off the East Coast where they're already getting tornado warnings. For those of you locally, there are no tornado warnings for our area. We continue to see rain bands move ashore, but maybe some improvement to the West over the Gulf. Definitely the cells are becoming more isolated. There are fewer of them. Uh, the stronger cells are mainly east of 75 and then south of the bay. And this is just a pattern we're going to see for much of the afternoon with a gradual shift of the action south and east. Uh, but the tornado watch continues until 3 o'clock just in case any of these, and you see these, what we're basically seeing here now is a strong onshore flow. And anytime we see rain and storms with an onshore flow, quick water spout, brief spin up, not out of the question here around the beaches. Uh, 
for those of you that are kind of itching to get out, I would wait. Just wait until maybe after this next high tide midday. Nothing's open. There's no reason to be out there. A lot of the coastal communities, Pinellas County, uh, you know, inaccessible. Uh, the emergency management obviously needs some time to assess the situation, help folks out that need help. Uh, so just kind of stay put, wait this one out. Uh, things will improve quickly as we go into the afternoon and really by tomorrow and Friday, the storm is gone. It'll be off the East Coast and moving out off the, the Carolina. So landfall was about 745 Keaton Beach as we continue to track uh, Idalia heading up through the panhandle. We're going to send it back to uh, Dia and Heather. All right. Thank you, Greg. Uh, just a quick update really quickly here. 201,000 power outages across the state. So that is a statewide number. Uh, but of course, the worst outages right now we're hearing are near landfall, which would be the Keaton Beach area. And of course, uh, Perry, where we uh, had Paul the Grown earlier. 14,000 uh, power outages in Pinellas County at the time right now as well. Uh, also, we're hearing that uh, PSTA plans to suspend service for today and there are plans to resume service tomorrow on August 31st. Okay, one of the reasons that they're suspending service is because of all the storm surge that we're seeing right. around the Bay Area and one of the most shocking is on Bayshore Boulevard. Larissa Scott has been showing us some incredible images. I think she moved the last time we talked she to her did. because it you know, wasn't safe for her to be near the area. Uh, Larissa, are you still in that in that safe zone, not near the water? We actually did not end up moving. We were going to because the water was rising so rapidly, but that did stop a little bit. It slowed down some, so we were able to safely still stay here. Here's what we're dealing with right now. The water is still coming in, although, it, like I said, it has slowed down a lot. It has receded a little bit, but really not too much. Um, we still got water, got those waves crashing in over from the bay onto Bayshore Boulevard. We're here again near Swan and um, Magnolia Avenue. Um, we've been talking to people as they've come out. Of course, everyone's shocked to see Bayshore this flooded. We, of course, know that Bayshore does typically flood in these types of situations. However, many people telling us this is the first time they've seen it this bad. Maybe it's come up this high, but never quite so deep. We just talked to a woman who she's lived in this area since the 60s, and she says that this is the first time she's seen it this deep. She and her husband had to move to higher ground last night. They're not able to get to their home right now, so they have no clue what kind of condition it's in. Um, she came out here checking things out, and you know, she told us that she and her neighbor are worried that they're going to get home to to some flooding issues, which are probably likely as she lives right along, you know, the Bayshore Boulevard area. But as we've been telling you, we've been having water coming in since the early morning overnight hours, and it hasn't really stopped. It's receded just a little bit, but, you know, we just checked in with um, emergency crews and and they say that they want everyone to be on alert that that water could rise some more. So, of course, they're continuing to urge people to stay off of the roads. We've had lots of neighbors come and check things out this morning, but they're asking people to stay off of the roads here. You know, they, they want to be able to safely get to people, and they may not be able to get to those water rescues if you do get stuck. So that's the latest out here from Bayshore Boulevard. Back to you guys. All right, thank you so much, Larissa. As you look at Bayshore, of course, of course I wanted to know about TGH. We saw them mm -hmm. yesterday putting up that water wall around the hospital. I called and made some, uh, some text messages to find out uh, how they're doing. Just got word that TGH is okay. Good. So you don't have to worry about storm surge in that area. So that's certainly good news. A lot of patients there, you know, need to, you know, need to take care of themselves. They need to take care of their patients and not have to worry about storm surge. There. And we've been talking about safety all morning. Um, just to piggyback off of that, we wanted to also remind folks that, you know, while Paul is in an area that is uh, experiencing some really bad conditions right now, he was moved inside because there was concern about the glass doors. So he has been moved inside because of that. He is staying safe. I promise you that. And so is his photographer, uh, Tim Jones, who has, like, like we've said, covered numerous storms over the years. It was incredible watching all of the people who have evacuated to that hotel where Paul yeah. is in Perry. A lot of them have homes on Keaton Beach. Of mm -hmm. course, that's where the eye of the storm made landfall. And watching them see live video of a car that yeah. was driving through and, you know, one of them kept saying, your house is okay. It's just incredible, you know, seeing that real time, you yeah. know, and, 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 and the sense of panic because they were all crowded around this one right. little cell phone. It was just incredible. Uh, and then we talked to Dennis, and Dennis said, you know, basically the worst of it 
has passed yes. over Keaton Beach. Of course, right. you know, you got the eye and then you got that next band that comes across, but that one is not as strong as the first band that came across. Absolutely. So that's only good news for them. Okay, let's go back to Pinellas County now, back to Keely McCormick in Tarpon Springs, where she was also seeing some flooding in that area because of storm surge. Keely? Dia Heather, good morning. Yeah, I mean, if you look at this right now, it's a pretty shocking scene. The sidewalk, the roadway, and the river are all kind of mixed into one with the flooding that we've seen throughout the morning. We got here around 1.30 this morning. It did not look like this. There were a lot of dry patches. Really, the flooding was kind of secluded to just one little area, but now it's widespread. It's this entire road. It's the off road, so definitely a shock. We've talked to a few people, a few locals who are coming up to just kind of assess the damage and they're definitely shocked. One man told me this is the worst he's ever seen it and it's the highest he's ever seen it as well. That's a good point to make too, and it's a really good visual you can get if you're going to look at these boats here. They're level with the seawall and with the sidewalk because of how high it's risen. Luckily, there are there are those poles there. These boats are tied up very tightly, so they're not moving, but they're really high. I mean, they're practically on the sidewalk there, so definitely um, a big concern there. The water right now, it's still flowing east on this roadway here. You can see that. So. The rain has stopped here. We're not really sure when the water's going to stop. It does seem to still be coming in from the river over that seawall and onto the roadway, the sidewalks and into the businesses. We've seen several businesses have sandbags up against their front doors to kind of prevent that flooding. But unfortunately, one business I just looked into, the, the water's over the sandbag and it has poured into the um, front room of that business, which unfortunately I think is going to be the case for a lot of the businesses and shops on this roadway. But of course, we're going to be out here all morning and keep you updated as conditions change. But for now, I'm reporting live in Tarpon Springs. Keely McCormick, ABC Action News. Right, thank you so much, Keely. All right, well, we're going to check in with Michael, um, uh, Michael Paluska, who's in Crystal River. He's been there all morning. It's a zone A evacuation area. Uh, he has been seeing the water rising. The conditions in terms of wind and rain have gotten way better out there. In fact, he didn't even have his rain jacket on last time we checked with him. However, the water is definitely coming up. Is it continuing to do that, Michael? Or are you starting to see it recede at all? No, in fact, it's gone up a lot more since we uh, we lost our connection. I mean, the cell surface out here is crazy, but these boats are what concerned me the most, obviously, and then debris in the water, these huge logs. Uh, I don't know where they came from. There's like a horseshoe thing over here just floating down what was the sidewalk, and we could see grass the last time we were here about, I don't know, 20, 20 minutes ago. Uh, and if we stick to the side, we're okay here. This is a very slow, gradual rise. Um, this is not the storm surge that you see uh, right at the at the coast. We're, we're still a little bit inland, so Kings Bay is starting to fill up, and obviously the canals. Uh, we're going to try to walk you to the gazebo where we were, because that's where all the water really is coming in. Uh, but you see these boats, and you see like these little fence posts that they're tied off to. Hopefully those ties will hold, but at some point, from what we've learned covering all these, these storms, is that once the water gets up 7, 11 feet, which is what the prediction is, this stuff will just top over and start ending up here on land. We saw that in Fort Myers, all those boats were tied down. You really can't fight the water. So this is um, the path here. We're at the Plantation Inn. This is Crystal River, one of the most beautiful sought after vacation spots to go swim with the manatees, kayak, snorkel, do all that fun stuff. And now uh, this, this is not good, obviously, for, for tourists coming in here, for people that live here losing things. Uh, and the big concern is when we talked to the sheriff earlier today, he went around asking people to evacuate. And I said, hey, do you feel good about what people told you about whether they're going to stay or they're going to go? He said, no, he doesn't, he doesn't feel good about it. And he's super worried. And uh, yeah, I mean, I'm worried about them too because they're going to be cut off. Uh, the houses that are near us, they're pretty high up, they're built up a little bit, but the water is still coming up right to the base of their homes and this water is only rising. We haven't even hit the high tide uh, that we were going to, uh, that we expect to hit around four o'clock this afternoon. I think it's 4.44 uh, from what I was checking online with the tides. Now this grassy area, it was all grass here a while ago, starting to fill in with water. And then out there is uh, obviously Crystal River and then Kings Bay, which then leads out to the Gulf of Mexico. 
It's a slow roll. It's gradual because this is uh, an aquatic marine preserve. So all of these little islands and everything break up that storm surge. The storm has passed, but now we have this onshore flow, which has been piling this water in. The gazebo we were at over there, apparently there's another uh, potential news crew. That, we could stand in there. It wasn't flooded at all. So in 20 minutes, the water's gone up substantially. I can only anticipate it's going to continue to rise. Uh, Let's see if we go around the side here. That's the inn. There's a golf course over there. They're trying to move their cars. That's gone up. I mean, it's maybe two or three feet from that bottom tire. So I think they're loading stuff up to get out of Dodge. We parked our car about a mile Friends away and then walked to our and room the to get it out of the winds will continue zone. to push water uh, onshore will cause ongoing flooding throughout the mm -hmm. day. You guys still there? We are asking yeah. people to stay off of the roads is, until we can make an all-clear uh, announcement later today. Hello? Sounds like a pressure. I heard someone talking about uh, some storm surge in my ear. So let's let's show you where we're at here. This is where the water is really ripping in. Uh, I'll have Reed, my photographer, Reed Moeller, pan just sort of across this, give you the lay of the land. Uh, and, and I mean, earlier today, all the debris was flowing out. It was, it was high tide, but everything so everything was uh, didn't look as good. It's getting bad now. We need to go to a presser here for an urgent update, and we'll we'll send you back to the studio. Michael, we're going to cut you off right now. We're going to go live to the news Done for damage um, assessment and, uh, and repair any traffic signals kind of that are down. The sheriff will talk about bridge closures, and uh, right now we have 55 active road closures throughout the county. Duke is reporting power outages of over 20,000 people. They have over a thousand crews out here that will be working on it as soon as it's safe for them to go out. If you must go out for life safety reasons, do not drive in floodwaters. Even if they look shallow, they may be deeper than you think they are. Do not walk in floodwaters. Those waters may be full of hazards like bacteria, wildlife, debris, and if there's a down power line in the water, you could get electrocuted. We've seen evidence that people took this storm seriously. We had over 1,800 people in our town shelters last night, about 180 special needs people. We will continue to keep these shelters open for now. We know that we have some people that are leaving flooded areas and they're moving to the shelters if they don't have friends or family to stay with. If you do need to leave those areas, please try to stay with friends or family. And we're working to open a step-down shelter so we can decompress schools. We'll be working with schools to get them um, open as soon as possible. That announcement will come from the superintendent when they're ready. If you are at home and you have water inundation already inside of your house, please do not touch the breakers. Please stay elevated. Do not be walking through the water. If you can reach the breaker box before water comes into your house as it starts coming in, turn those breakers off. Um, get out and call Duke to shut off the power at the meter. If your home or business is flooded, before you clean up or move any debris, please make sure you take pictures and inform your insurance company. List all the damages and losses that you have. Uh, it's helpful for you to take pictures of high water um, that you've had in the house. Uh, if you have damages, you can report them through our citizen damage reporter tool, either through Ready Pen our Ready Pinellas app or through disaster.pinellas.gov. We will be working with Duke Energy to assess the power of our special needs clients that are in our shelters, and we're actively calling down all of our residential health care facilities to ensure that they and all of their clients are safe. With that, I'll turn it over to the sheriff. Uh, thank you. Good morning, everybody. So the problem we have is this, is that the storm has passed us. The storm is north. It made landfall. And it's counterintuitive and counter to what everybody is seeing out there now. What everybody's seeing out there now is some rain and some wind. And that is going to dissipate uh, by mid-morning as the projections go. We're going to see some bands. We're going to see a little rainfall. But the majority of that, so as the storm has moved away from us, what's happened and what is happening is the situation with the water is actually getting worse. And the reason why it's getting worse is because of the storm surge and where we are in relationship to the storm. So where we are in relationship to the storm is on the east side of the storm, which is called the dirty side of the storm, which is the problematic side as water goes. So as it made landfall, 
we're going to see the greatest impact with storm surge about two hours uh, after it made landfall. And the problem there is, is that it coincides with a high tide. So we're going to see some peak water, uh, especially in the Clearwater Beach area, the Gulf Beaches, and then moving south about 11, 11, 15 is where we're going to see peak. And that's going to stick around for probably about four or five hours. So the problem in Pinellas County is going to be, and we're already seeing it, is the Gulf Beaches uh, from about now until three or four this afternoon. So we had to, and I've been out there personally, and I can tell you it's not a good situation on the Gulf Beaches. We're going to have to shut down, and we have shut down, and keep shut down uh, access to all of the barrier islands, uh, to the Gulf Beaches, from Dunedin Causeway all the way down to the Pinellas Bayway. So if people are out on the beaches and you leave the beach, you're not getting back out until we're able to reopen it. This is not a reentry. This is a closure of the beaches. Anybody that is not on the beaches will not be able to get out there. And the west side of the county is what is significantly impacted. So if you're on the east side of the county, please don't go to the west side of the county because it's not limited to just the Gulf beaches. We're also seeing problems along alternate 19. We've got alternate 19 closed in the Clearwater and Dunedin area from Sunset Point Road all the way up to Dunedin Marina. We've got uh, A19 closed in portions of Dunedin along Bayshore Boulevard. And A19 is also closed at Klosterman Road in Tarpon Springs because of the flooding we're seeing. And again, I want to stress this, is, is that we haven't seen the worst of it. Uh, the estimates are based upon the storm surge and based upon the high tide that we're going to see four to six feet of water. Uh, that's a significant amount of water. Uh, the sand is also coming up onto the roadway. And again, as I said, I was out there personally and had to turn around uh, because you can't get through the roads. They're impassable out there on Gulf Boulevard with the sand and the water. So we really need everyone to, as Kathy said, is to stay away uh, from the roads, especially on the west side of the county. We will work diligently to get the roads back open as soon as we can, but we're not going to be able to do that until the water clears. And all right, everybody, I'm going to break away from that press conference. We'll return to it in a couple of minutes, but I do want to pass this along. There's a tornado warning that was just issued for Pasco County. There is a developing radar indicated tornado near Zephyr Hills. It is between Wesley Chapel and Zephyr Hills. That storm is traveling right along 54 and it is moving north and east toward 301. So this is a more heavily populated area of eastern Pasco and central Pasco County. Tornado warning until 930 this morning. And on the radar, looking at the signature, uh, there was a decent or a pretty favorable indication of a tornado or one that could have dropped near Wesley Chapel, south of 56, and then it traveled north toward 54. So we are looking north of Pebble Creek. This is going to be mainly to the west of Morris Bridge Road. Uh, over towards Oldsmar Avenue and 56. It then went across. Morris Bridge toward 54 and the west side of Zephyr Hills. Now the latest sweep from the radar indicates it's a little weaker and it is already on the north side of Zephyr Hills near 301. So it is coming up on 98 and 301 that general area around Orange Grove Villas, Lumberton, uh, Cunningham Estates. So 301 and 98 Eastern Pasco County, a quick moving storm here. Uh, this one's really flying. The tornado warnings only for another 15 minutes uh, trying to get a speed here for you on the motion of this. They're saying it's moving northeast at 35 miles an hour, maybe even faster based on what I'm seeing on the radar. I'm going to clock it at 40, zoom out and give you a storm track for where that could possibly go. Over the next, uh, let's do 15 minutes. We're going to take it out of that warning. So, uh, actually, Ellers, Ellers, Ellersley is the only place that is in the path of this. It's going to be north of 98. It's already through Zephyr Hills. And this is something that we're going to see for the next several hours. We're going to continue to watch these storms potentially spin up. There's another one back towards Tampa, a couple more into Polk, uh, Hardy, DeSoto and Highlands counties, a uh, couple more towards uh, Hernando and Citrus with some stronger cells coming up into the Sun Coast down towards Sarasota. But the only warning right now is for a radar indicated 
quick spin up tornado. This is going to be located in Pasco County. The warning is until 930 Pasco County north of Zephyr Hills. Dade City, I think this is going to be get past you to the south and east. But if you live between Dade City and Zephyr Hills, specifically around Highway 98, you need to get inside into a safe place uh, along 35A especially. That's where we're seeing that rotation. So north side of Zephyr Hills, north of 54, coming up on 98 and 301. Uh, that's where the area of rotation is right in the center of your screen is where I'm watching for uh, the potential for a very quick spin up tornado motion on this is off to the north and east at 35. It is traveling quickly. The signature is still there, so I would expect that this storm could produce a tornado at any time. If you are in eastern Pasco County, make sure you seek shelter. If you guys want to go back to the uh, to the press conference, let me know. We can go ahead and do that. If not, OK, we'll continue to cover this tornado warning and I'll show you what else is going on here in terms of other storms behind it. We've got another cell in Tampa. This one does not concern me right now in terms of any kind of severe weather. This one's going to follow the last one that just moved through, so it's going to head up into Pebble Creek and Wesley Chapel, cross 75 uh, just south of the 275-75 apex, moving up through New Tampa, the USF area, the Uptown area, and then heading over towards eastern Pasco. If you're in Hillsborough and Manatee County, heavier cells here as well, stretching into Polk County. Nothing that concerns me in terms of rotation right now, but all of these could have some strong gusty winds. They're moving toward the north and east. Uh, should be passing south of Lakeland. Looks like the Winter Haven, Auburndale area coming up on Bartow and Mulberry with additional cells down to the south. So we'll check on this cell one more time again for the next 14 minutes. A tornado warning for Pasco County. The storm or the area of the storm that could potentially produce a tornado is currently very close to the intersection of 301 and 98 north of downtown Zephyr Hills should pass south of the center of Dade City and then continue to move out of the county. I suspect since this radar image is a few minutes old that we already are seeing this past 98 and it is about to exit Pasco County into extreme portions of Sumter County. So I'll continue to watch this. If there are any other updates, we'll uh, take it back here with the radar. But right now I'm going to send it back to Heather. Much, Greg, I want to take it real quick. Uh, we have been listening to the Pinellas County Emergency Operations Center giving a briefing before we had to go to that uh, tornado warning um, for you. But I wanted to wrap up what Sheriff Bob Galtieri said. He said that they're expecting peak water rise at 1115. So he's stressing to everyone in Pinellas County to stay off the roads. The worst of the storm, mm -hmm. the storm surge is yet to come. He also talked about um, access to the, the beaches. I know that people like to get out on the beaches when right. storms come through because they want to see the waves. But he said, if you get out on the beach, you will not be able to get back. So that's very important. So he says just it's best to, and safest just to stay put right now until they give the all clear that it's okay to get out and explore. Now again, we've been talking about closures, road closures, bridge closures, as well as the storm surge in the bay. And so we want to get out to Kylie McGivern, who's in Bradenton. Now, Kylie, this is that you're at the Cortez Bridge right now, and this is a bridge that closed about two hours ago, I'd say. Yeah. Uh, and you're talking with an official out there. Just tell us what you're seeing and uh, who you're talking to. Yes, we are out on Cortez Bridge. This is in the Bradenton area. You're starting to see these bridge closers as we've been talking about this morning all throughout the Tampa Bay area. So this, this is as All right, it looks. I apologize for that. Yeah. We've... Oh, okay, we may be able to get back to Kylie. We lost her shot for just a second there. That's been happening with those, you yeah. know, when those, the, the strong winds come through. But it, in the meantime, we're gonna go to James. Is James ready for us now? Actually, I can take it, can guys. Yeah, I've actually, we'll I, I can fill the time here. We've got another tornado warning that was just issued. This one is going to include a very small sliver of Sarasota County, but this sliver is so small that Sarasota County, you're not in it. This is going to be mainly for DeSoto and Hardy counties. Radar indicated tornado. The warning is until 945. We're going to go through this probably a lot as we go through the morning in the early afternoon. Uh, looking at the data here and analyzing the storm, not seeing a very strong indication of rotation. That's probably because this storm is a little farther from the radar than the last one that I just showed you. Kind of putting it into motion to kind of try to get gauge where that could be. If there is a tornado, it is located right there just south of 72. Uh, this is heading generally 
in the direction where 72 and 70 come together in Hardy County or DeSoto County, excuse me. So this is going to be on the west side of Arcadia or the general area of Arcadia. So if you live in Arcadia, Brownville, Pine Level, Lansing communities here along 70 and 72 tornado warning until 945 this morning for a radar indicated tornado. The motion on this northeast, we're going to track in northeast at 40 miles an hour. I'll take it through the end of the warning. So the Lansing community 932 Kinsey around 938 would be your arrival time for this quick spin up potential tornado here. No reports of anything on the ground from the National Weather Service. All of these are radar indicated. So just make sure you're in a safe place away from windows if you're in that area. As far as the storm in Pasco County, still looking at an indication of a potential tornado here. I would not be surprised if they continue to issue warnings on this one out of Pasco into Sumter County, but the area of concern is about to exit the county now. It's past 98, north of 98, and it is about to move out of the warning area. In fact, probably before the warning expires. This one's moving really fast. So Dade City, Zephyr Hills, Wesley Chapel, you're clear. This one is out. It's now moving out of Pasco County. We're looking fine there. Uh, if there was a touchdown, we'll get reports of uh, about it from the uh, local officials. The only other tornado warnings that we're tracking here is DeSoto over towards Hardy County until 945. So that's the latest here. If you guys want to take it back to a live shot, I can do that. I can send it back to Dia and Heather first. Yeah, and then we can continue to watch the flooding situation, which I, I think guys is really impactful for a large portion of our area. And Greg, mm -hmm. you've been saying that we haven't seen the worst of it yet. Yeah, it really depends. You know, I've been watching the tide gauges Dia and they're either leveling off. In some cases, they're dropping at a trickle pace. Uh, and in other cases, they're still rising. It really depends on the location. But we, as you mentioned, and as you know, the sheriff there mentioned in Pinellas County, we're not going to see high tide until the earliest in some places, 1115, in some places as late as 3 o'clock this, this evening. Uh, so it's going to take a while for the water to recede, which is why it's so important that folks stay inside while this storm is still moving by. I'll send it back to you. All right, thank you, Greg. And that's exactly what Sheriff Bob Galtieri from Pinellas County was letting all of the viewers know. He says because we don't know what to expect yet because high tide has not happened. Peak tide has not happened until 1115. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the storm surge is going to do. It's expected to get worse. I want to check in now with James Tully. He was already seeing flooding on Coronado Drive in that area. James, I can imagine that it's that it's if it's not getting worse and it's definitely not getting any better. It's kind of leveling off to you. That's kind of the this what my two eyes tell me as we take a look down here. This is um, Hamden Drive, which runs uh, parallel to Coronado Drive, as you mentioned, right at Third Street in front of Clearwater Bay. Now, Mike's going to show you the grass down there uh, next to Hamden Drive. And that's the first time we've seen grass in a while, so I can confirm at least right now that water's coming back a little bit. Uh, I can also take a look over here at this hotel and some of these homes where the water has come back from the front door uh, of, of these, uh, uh, these, these rooms here, these hotel rooms. So that, that's certainly a good sign. But the idea, just to echo what you said and, and what we heard from the Pinellas County Sheriff earlier, uh, that uh, the worst is possibly yet to come with high tide uh, set for 1115 in this area of Clearwater uh, where we are and he anticipates that uh, we're not going to see uh, these streets passable for another three to four hours after that. So as you mentioned, you know, like people like to go out to the beach. If you're staying here in Clearwater, you live nearby. That is not something to do right now. You go out to the beach, you may not be able to get back. The same thing goes uh, for walking down any of these sidewalks or any of these streets. I mean, they, they're, they're as impassable as, as it can possibly be. So uh, seeing the water level off, if not recede a bit here, of course, we still have high tide coming our way in about two hours and, and 15 minutes or so. So we're going to stay here, get back down to ground level and see what we can uh, what we can we can find and any more any more good signs and at least check out the beach area and see what that looks like, too. I'll send it back to you guys. All right. Thank you, James. We'll check in with you in a little while. All right, we're going to go back to Paula Grown, who is in Perry. That is very close to where this storm made landfall in Keaton Beach. Uh, we know that he was really, really in the thick of it uh, just about an hour ago. Uh, we haven't checked in with him in about an hour, so let's just uh, get out there right now and see how things have, uh, have been going for him. Paul, are you back outside? Are you still in the hotel? 
Yeah, we are inside right now, inside the lobby of the Holiday Inn off US 19 here in Perry. And the concern was they, they locked the doors because it was getting, as you guys know, it was getting bad out there. And the concern, I, you see those other panel of doors out there, we, their concern was those were going to blow off and glass was going to start flying everywhere. So mm. some pretty scary moments for folks here who are literally holding the fort down. Uh, got everyone in that was outside, and uh, at some point they, they just couldn't hold those doors together, and they kind of left them like that, and then they locked these doors here uh, to keep everyone safe inside. You got people here from all over uh, Taylor County and beyond that sought shelter, and they're in here right now checking on their situation. They're doing good. They're, everyone's good. Uh, giving you the giving you the wave there that you guys all right you good okay so everyone it was a little scary there for, I'm not gonna lie for a while for folks but they're they're back inside powers obviously off I want to show you something I would be out there right now but uh, you know out of respect for the situation in here they want to keep those doors shut so I'm not gonna challenge that uh, they want everyone to be inside so but you can see outside uh, parking lot starting to flood trees are down the big stuff out there, uh, the, the campers and the, and the trucks and, and things like that, even the signage is holding steady so far. The power lines are holding steady so far. We've had down trees. I'll take it back outside here because I want to see if we can talk to some folks here who made the decision to come here and have been here for a while. Chris, you, can you talk to me real quick, bud? I know you got your, uh, your dog with you. How, how are the animals holding up? Uh, they're a little shaking up a little bit right now, but yeah. they're all right. And your mom, your mom is in Chiefland, right? And yeah. she's doing all right? Yeah, I called her and she said she was all right. A lot of wind, a lot of rain. She said uh, a lot of debris as well. Okay. But she's all right there. All right, scary moments though, I mean, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Mainly here too. It's pretty scary here as well. You, you made the right call though. I know you got your children here with you and uh, and they're doing good. They seem to be occupied and, and your wife who, who works here, she's doing good. So yeah, it's be better to be here and safe than to be out there, obviously. Oh yeah, it definitely is. I'd say it was the right call for sure. All right. Hey, Chris, thank you for checking with us. Appreciate it. Uh, and we've been, Spy, what's the latest, my friend? Oh, uh, man, a, a friend of mine's house right here looks like, I think it's destroyed. I mean, Come on in, I, Tim. I, I, I can't, I'm pretty sure it's my friend's house. Can we show that to the camera? Yes. I don't know if a tornado hit it because, no, I hadn't seen any other pictures like that. Now, where is this? Is this, this Steen Hatchie or no, uh, Keaton Beach? No, this is Keaton Beach, yep. Yeah, this is on Marina Drive. Um, it's one of the canals, one of the little like peninsulas or yes, sir. just on one of the canal systems there. So there's a community. You know, I mean, we're just set out there. What they did back in the early 1900s, 50s, where they took excavators down there and, and dredged canals and, and put the land up there. And then you had land and they started building houses. But so I'm pretty sure that's a friend of mine's house. How is your place holding up? I think I, I think we did well. Really? Um, if if the if the worst is over, hey honey, I think my house is there. So yeah. uh, um, how's your family? Are they, are they yeah, we're all good. Yeah. We're all here. Yeah, everyone left the beach. We, you know, people yeah. are like, did you stay? I said, no, no, no we don't <laughs> stay because we went through a category one. And um, this was a cat four. Yes. Right on the edge. Yes, of cat three, four. three or four. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but it look. I think. I think the eastward wind. I think we got hit with the east, so it pushed the water, the storm surge out. There was some, but the pictures and the video that we're getting from some of the storm chasers are showing the. You know, there's some seaweed up on the highway and stuff. But so I, I don't even think we got maybe a five, maybe a five foot surge. Yeah, that happens sometimes. It depends on how the well, direction we, comes well, in. Well, Steen Hatchie's 17 miles south, and and they're they. It looks like they got the brunt of it. They're underwater. Yes. Okay, hey, Spearden, thank you. Thank appreciate you so it. Much. They call you Spy for yes, short, sir, right? Yeah, I like yeah. that nickname. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it, sir. Hey, listen, we're still. It's not over. I mean, it's definitely not as bad as it was before, guys. But every now and then, I just heard those doors bang again. So the wind gusts will come back and pick back up. But uh, it, you know, I, I, I can't put a number on it for you, but. Uh, it's definitely not as bad as it was before. I don't know in position where we are if we're on the outer edge wall now, on um, the back half of it, but the gusts are f far and fewer between, if that makes any sense, and definitely not as strong. I almost bit it on live TV. I, know, I, know I had to grab onto the bench to, to keep my feet from flying up and then swept away. So it's one of those moments where right, all of a sudden things like that can change. But the good news is everyone's inside, everyone's holding up. Uh, thoughts are still with those folks who stayed behind uh, in their homes, uh, Keaton Beach, Fish Creek, uh, Steen Hatchie. Steen Hatchie got a lot of flood, uh, a lot of storm surge. Guys, Absolutely. back to you. Hey, hey, Paul, our thoughts are with everybody at that hotel with you who evacuated there. Let them know. Greg D says the worst of the storm has passed them, so they made it through.
I'll tell them right now, hey guys, uh, our meteorologist Greg D says the worst of the storm has passed. So it, we're the worst of the storm is over. So we're, we're on the right side of this thing now, all right? Hang tight. All right. I just delivered the news to them. They're, all right. So uh, good to know. You guys Thank take you. care. I know Paul said that the generator, there was no generator at that hotel, so they've lost power and it's, it's hot there, but you know, everybody in good spirit. So, and everybody's safe. That's what's most important. Yeah. So we want to get to um, a phoner right now uh, because we have been dealing obviously with some power outages in the area. We've got Lee Freeman with Duke Energy now joining us via the phone. Lee, uh, good morning to you. Are you there with us? I am. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I know there's about 30,000 power outages in Pinellas County right now, which would be, um, you know, uh, an area where Duke Energy, you know, that's their main power source, one of the main power sources in Pinellas County. Uh, and, and I know that you and I spoke yesterday. When can crews start to get out and begin assessing the damage and then also getting power back up? Sure. Actually, we have fewer than 25,000 outages in the Tampa area. We've actually, statewide, we've already restored power to about 60,000 customers. So we're doing a really good job being able to uh, get customers back up and running. Uh, but we have a lot of work ahead of us, and trucks are rolling out. Right now, we're doing a lot of damage assessments. So we're trying to figure out what resources we need where, and then... We will, once we know that, we'll send the line crews out, the, the vegetation management specialists, whatever we need, we'll send them and get power up as fast as we can, as, as uh, safe as we can. It's always good, you know, when you see the cavalry coming because you know the help is on the way. Can you tell us a little bit about your new smart technology that actually helped you to reduce those number of power outages more quickly? Yeah, totally. We've invested millions of dollars in recent years to make the grid a little bit smarter. We were able to reroute power to, uh, like, similar to a detour. Uh, when you're driving and you take a detour, we can reroute power uh, and get people up and running faster. There's still times when we need to send a crew out to physically fix an, an outage, but most of the outage, or a lot of the outages these days we can fix remotely, which is great for a safety perspective, but also for our customers, they get power faster. And, and can you just explain, how is that done? Because obviously, you know, when you think of a power outage, you think that, uh, you know, a transformer maybe blew or, you know, a power line fell over onto the ground. So obviously that would require uh, maintenance and, and somebody to come out and, and fix that. Um, but just explain to me how the, how the smart grid works and, and what types of damages that, that is actually working to fix. Sure, I mean, it's, it's a very complex technology. But think of it like a road detour. Let's say there is a car crash on your main road to work. There's another way to get there. Um, and that the authorities will clear the car crash so on your way home, it, you'll be able to take the main road. That's the same thing with the power grid. The transformer's down, a piece of equipment's down, we'll reroute power, and then we'll send people out to repair that issue so we can restore that main road. But, uh, you know, still offer that detour so we can restore uh, service faster to customers. At this point, Lee, do you know how bad the damage is? Do you know that you've got downed lines or, or you know, generators that are, that, are, that, are, that are blown? Do you have any idea of the extent of the damage? You know, it's, uh, there is damage. It's uh, not as bad as other storms we've experienced, but there is damage. It will take a while for us to restore power. We are doing a lot of assessments right now. There are, pole, there are a lot of trees down, there are poles down, there are wires down. But this is what we train for all year. This is what our line professionals, that's what they love doing. So they're going to work as fast as they can. They're going to work as safe as they can to get service up as fast as possible. Lee, one last question for you. What are some of the lessons that you guys have learned from past storms? Uh, you know, we, we speak of Ian, uh, for example, from last year uh, down in the Fort Myers area. The devastation was unreal and, and the, the power loss was incredible down there so um just in terms of learning from past storms what, what what are the lessons that you have learned i mean we learn from every storm and we apply those learnings so we can get better next time it's storms are difficult as, as you know no two storms are the same different winds different geographies different destruction but we try we, I mean, we plan for this 365 days a year there's people i work with this is their only job is storm restoration planning so we take into account every, all the feedback we get internally, externally, so we can emerge better next time. 
Well, Lee Friedman, we thank you so much for taking time to talk to us. And uh, of course, Duke Energy customers have to feel relieved to know that the cavalry is on the way as soon as it's safe to go out. So, Lee, take care, and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, thank you, Lee. Thank you. All right, we're going to go now to uh, Kylie McGivern in Bradenton. We had lost her shot a little earlier, but we're going to hopefully get her back now. She's at the Cortez Bridge in Manatee County. Kylie, that bridge has closed. Yes, Heather, this is one of the bridges that is closed across the Tampa Bay area. We're standing just on the other side of the bridge from where it's closed off. This is an area you may recognize from last night when we were out here at Tide Tables. We were able to stand right close to the water. That obviously is not the case anymore. And who we're checking in with is Bobby Woodson, the owner. Bobby, thank you so much for joining us this morning. So what do you think when you see what this looks like right now? We were with you last night checking in. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's hard to look at, but it's going to get a lot higher before it's over. But we're fortunate. We're not in Keaton Beach. We didn't take the brunt of the storm like those folks did, so our heart's out to them. But we'll get it cleaned up, and we'll, I got employees biting at the bit to get in here, and we'll get it open as soon as we can. And the biggest preparation you all had, you said you essentially gutted the building in terms of you took all of the equipment out of there so that you can get back up and running. Still, it's got to be tough to see. Yeah, all the, all the equipment, all the food, everything is on high ground now. Uh, we can have it back in there in a matter of a day or two. We just got to wait for you know the go ahead where the water's safe to drink and we'll get back in business. Bobby, thank you so much. We wish you guys the best. Another thing that we want people to know is officials don't want to see what they call hurricane tourists. We're seeing a lot of people driving around. Again, the bridges are closed off. The worst of the storm surge, we're told, has not hit yet. In the area that we're in now, we're being told around noon. So you can see the wind, but just because it's not raining, again, it's the storm surge that is the concern. A lot of roads blocked off. So if you're wondering, if you're in Manatee County, if you're wondering what roads are closed, if there are any down trees, anything along those lines, they have up staffing at 311. So that is your best bet. We're going to send it back to you guys. We understand this is a tornado warning. So please. All right, thanks, Kylie. Let's send it straight over to Greg D now monitoring that. Uh, yeah, so right now, no tornado warning, by the way, uh, but I do want to give you an update. I've been looking at some photos online. Lots of flooding around Tampa. Seminole Heights, the river out of its banks, looks like mainly in the parks, but there are some high water areas as well. Uh, you know, we obviously can't, a lot of you are asking about specific addresses in neighborhoods. We obviously do not have reporters in every location of the Bay Area, but if you yourself, and I've been seeing, this is great, what I've been seeing a lot of is a lot of you have security cameras that are facing to the outside, whether it's a smart doorbell or just a security camera on the outside, and you've been posting screenshots of what your neighborhood looks like. If you've got one of those, head on over to my Facebook page, post that image. There's a, there's a post in blue with text. I'm asking about flood reports. Post that image there, and I'll try to share as many of them as I can so that we're kind of spreading the word. I know a lot of you are really curious and antsy. Uh, just saw a video, looked at a video from a lady that lives uh, near 19 and Port Newport Ritchie, I believe it's Newport Ritchie, she said. Let me let me double check on my computer that it's not Port Ritchie. Uh, she's in Port Ritchie, so excuse me. She's in Port Ritchie near 19. She can't get out of her house. She says the only way I'm going to get out of my house is with a kayak. And that storm, the center of the storm, those are the impacts we're seeing now, is 175 miles north of Tampa. Just imagine the power of this hurricane. It's 170 miles away and it's still pushing water ashore here in the Bay Area. It's still a category two hurricane. This is the last update from the National Hurricane Center. It's approaching Valdosta, Georgia in terms of the heavy rain and the wind. So while the eyes up there, we are still getting some scattered thunderstorms and we were getting tornado warnings earlier. Now, right now, I don't see anything here that concerns me in terms of the potential for a quick spin up tornado. I'm doing a little survey here of the wind data and there are a couple of spots. I'm not going to say all of these storm cells are perfectly clear. I'm seeing a little bright pops coming ashore in Sarasota County, a couple of areas in DeSoto County. Nothing here that screams tornado at me right now, but that line that's right now moving through Pasco County, for instance, that one's still producing some pretty heavy uh, rain and thunderstorms and there's some strong wind in this now moving through Zephyr Hills. Let's go back to the radar so you can see exactly what that looks like. Uh, Crystal Springs, Zephyr Hills, Dade City coming back through Wesley Chapel and Pebble Creek. Anytime you see these little 
appendages, these little tails on these storms. You got you to gotta start watching this area, see what happens over there. That's passing through the new Tampa area, should pass through Thonoto Sassa. So this is coming up on Morris Bridge again and over on 301. Uh, no warning on this cell just yet, but it's moving towards the north and east. The motion on these, there you saw the tornado warning from earlier. North and east, it's lifting across the Wesley Chapel area through Dade City and Zephyr Hills, heading up into southern Sumter County. Uh, let me show you back to the wide view here. Another wide area of rain here scattered coming into Hernando, Pasco and Pinellas County. Nothing severe here. Uh, raining heavily in St. Pete. I saw some pictures on my Facebook page as well from South St. Pete. Uh, folks are reporting flooded roads, getting a lot of reports of flooded roads. The officials there in Oldsmar telling people stay off the roads. Many of them are flooded and in many places homes are being involved as well. The south side of the bay near Ellington. Reports of flooding there. I saw some pictures of neighborhoods flooding, folks unable to get out of their neighborhoods, cars being stranded. I uh, saw a picture from one of our reporters in Riverview on 41. Flooding there, tow truck having to pull people out of the flooded roadway on 41, which is a major highway built to handle large amounts of water. So it just tells you how this storm is overwhelming that system. This is going to be unprecedented flooding for us in the Bay Area in the last several years. I, since I've been here, Almost seven years. I haven't seen it. Uh, Dennis was also talking to me saying he's not seen it this widespread. We got photos from Pasco County now flooding. They're going to we're going to pull these up here in a second. You'll see those uh, keep them coming. Visit our Facebook page, my Facebook page, Dennis's Facebook page. Post those images. The more we get, the more we can share. And I'm sure there are folks that are curious somewhere out there about what their neighborhood, what town their town looks like when you do post those reports. Make sure you tell me where you are, at least the neighborhood of the town. You don't have to give me your address. Just tell me what general area you're in so that others can kind of piggyback off of that and get a, get an idea of what they're looking at. So this is over towards Pasco County. This is from the Pasco County Sheriff. Uh, it says right there that they continue to patrol during Hurricane Idalia and that they are seeing flooded roadways, including water encroaching on homes. Look at that. I mean, that is past the knee, almost waist deep water there. Uh, on that neighborhood street. Oh, that dog getting out of the way. Hopefully everyone's safe there. Looks like uh, they're kind of getting out of the way of flooding, but it is it is a problem and this is something that we're going to continue to see. The water levels should slowly begin to subside as we approach this high tide, which is coming up starting in about 90 minutes along the coast and then spreading to as late as maybe 3 p.m. inside the bay. So one last look at the radar, putting this into motion for you. Lots of showers and storms coming through. This is going to be the pattern for the rest of the afternoon. There is a tornado watch for our area until 3 p.m. I'm going to cycle through these graphics really quick because I do want to show you. This is the tornado watch, by the way, so it's from Tampa North, so they're following the storm. So if you're south of downtown Tampa, including St. Pete Riverview, you're out of the new tornado watch. That's certainly good news. That's an update in the last several minutes. Here are the winds now sustained. Here are the gusts. Still seeing some gusts over 50 along the coast. That's pretty incredible. That storm is 200 miles away from Sarasota. Winds are gusting to 54 miles an hour. But in the interior inland, it's more like 30 to 40. So conditions are improving, and I do expect these winds to die down quite a bit over the next several hours. Have another update coming up in just a few minutes. First, we're going to send it back to Heather and Dia. Uh, thank you, Greg. So I do have an update from Oldsmar because this is a place, like Greg was saying, that we haven't really been able to get too many updates because we weren't unable to send crews there because of the conditions. It was not safe to have them driving on the roads. Uh, but Oldsmar right now, there is closed access to Shore Drive at Lafayette Boulevard for the safety of vehicle drivers and, of course, residential neighborhoods. Uh, that is because the road is underwater right now. So we are, again, seeing uh, flooding in the Oldsmar area. I know that there are some reports of some flooding or just some rising water in the safety harbor area. Those are, again, areas that we haven't been able to get to, and hopefully uh, we'll continue to get those reports coming in. And because we can't get to it, if you have pictures, if you yes. can safely take pictures, please send them in to us. You can send them in to us on Facebook, also Twitter, um, and, and yeah, also Instagram. So we want to yeah. see those pictures as well. Let's get out to Michael Paluska in Crystal River. That area is under mandatory evacuation because it's prone to flooding. He'd been watching for storm surge throughout the morning. It's been a long 24 hours for folks there, Michael. Oh, totally, Dia. And, you know, we've been standing in this same spot all morning where we've seen the water go really low. And then as soon as that storm made landfall, it just 
twisted around and that onshore flow hit and this is what we're dealing with. This is where I was standing, I don't know, maybe three hours ago. There was absolutely no water here uh, and now these tops of these fences uh, will probably be gone in the next 30 minutes or so as we've been reporting. 7 to 11 feet, 7 to 11 feet storm surge predicted in this area. We're along the Crystal River and we're at the Plantation Inn and I guess this is where we're going to be staying because we're, we can't venture out on these roads as the water's rising. It's obviously too dangerous but I think even though we're in this little world right here it's symbolic of what everyone in Crystal River is experiencing because all of Crystal River is in a flood zone, zone A. And we know that uh, they were anticipating for some of the Citrus County Sheriff's annexes to flood and for City Hall to flood because they're only at four feet. We haven't been over here yet. The buildings that we're in are elevated a little bit more up on the tops of these hills. So I don't think any of this has made it into the parking lot yet. We'll just take a peek. Oh no, yeah, there's there's water in the parking lot. Very little uh, ponding, it looks like. Um, we hear alarms going off now. All of the lights um, that were on in some of these areas have uh, obviously kicked off, possibly because a circuit broke, because uh, they're underwater now. So we're avoiding anything where there's electricity uh, or in, in any, obviously, dangers in the water. This is Crystal River. There are alligators, so that way, uh, we went down and that was probably the first section of Crystal River to start to flood. Uh, we are closer to US 19, about a mile from US 19, and that is due north, east, south, and west. And so uh, this way I get my bearings is the Gulf of Mexico and Kings Bay. That is where the water's really rushing in. We went to a point out there that really comes in and the water converges into this one spot. And that is where the water's really flowing. It's been a slow, steady surge, not a huge rush of water. That's the most terrifying part of it. Um, but needless to say, uh, there are a ton of dangers in this water. We've scouted it uh, throughout the day when the sun came up to make sure that wherever we're going, we've got eyes on it before it got flooded. But clearly, here's a, an electrical box cover with a huge hole in it uh, around these rocks. So that's a, a, temp, a potential pitfall. And one other thing I want to point out is we talked to the sheriff of Citrus County and they went door to door. They went by boat all day yesterday. This neighborhood right here, you can see this house, it's, it's underwater. The one behind it's underwater. There's a lot of buzzing and alarms going off, which, which is concerning because as these homes get hit with water, electricity and water don't really mix. So there's a concern for fire. But half the people maybe, or, or a big majority, the sheriff said, did not want to evacuate. This is all zone A. They've been telling them this for the past three days that there'd be a storm surge. And I, I think maybe they were lulled into it because the storm came through and you know we didn't really have anything. And then as soon as the winds, as predicted, switched, this is what we got. It came up pretty fast. So I'll try to walk you down here if I have time. I know that um, our cell service, I apologize, has been a little spotty and it's, it's kind of tricky work. And we just lost my Or I have you guys lose our shot, but there's some we're going in and out on Michael's shot there. I think we're going to take it back. Uh, Michael was talking about how dangerous it is walking around in that flooded water, and that's why authorities say it's best just to stay inside. We know you want to go outside and assess the damage, but you don't know what's in that water. You, even just walking around on the grass, there could be dips in the grass, and of course you lose your footing and you could fall and hurt right. yourself. Power lines, also snakes. You know, there could be all kinds of dangers in that mm -hmm. water. So it's best just to stay put until hopefully the water begins to recede. And maybe we'll see that later today. Greg's been talking about that. Um, ho hopefully that will happen later today. And we want to check uh, back in in Pinellas County where the storm surge was a big concern over in Tarpon Springs. That's where we find ABC Action News reporter Keely McCormick. Keely, you've been uh, trudging through water as well out there. Uh, you've, you've seen that the water has risen above the seawall. You were talking about the boats out, out there. I know the residents, though, they um, have seen this before. They prepare for this always. Uh, but you did see some flooding inside some businesses. Yeah, Heather, that's right. I did. I saw some flooding inside many businesses and I did talk to a lot of locals as they were coming here and kind of seeing the situation for the first time. A lot of them had shock on their faces. Other people told me other people told me they expected this, but they did all tell me they never have seen it get this high. Now, I know you guys were talking about safety just a little bit ago. I want to touch on that, too, because I've seen a lot of things floating through this water. I've seen plants, vases, um, signs so it, it really is dangerous and you can't see it when you're looking from above the sunlight is 
creating kind of a glare here so you really don't see what's in the water. I know a lot of people, they're coming down here, they want to walk up to the front of their business and really assess the damage and see the situation. But in order to do that, they're trudging through the water. And I just really think people should stay back right now. Wait till this water goes down a little bit till it's more safe um, to go and check those businesses. But I mean, as you can see here, the water is really high. It surpassed a lot of the sandbags that people have put at the front of their doors. And again, as I had mentioned earlier, I talked to a lot of people who said they had never seen it this high and they've never seen it come up this far. So really an unprecedented situation here. And I think we're going to get to talk to a few more business owners as they're showing up to kind of see what's going on and assess the damage. And um, we'll keep you updated on what they say. But for now, I'm reporting live in Tarpon Springs. Keely McCormick, ABC Action News. Thank you so much, Keely. Can't help but notice there was a woman walking in the water in shorts. In shorts. And you think about mm -hmm. um, you could have a cut on your leg and the bacteria in the water. You oh. could get infected with so many things. And, and of course, we've been talking talk about, about Vibrio. that. Yeah, Vibrio. Yeah, exactly. There's so many, so many dangers in that water. So if you can just stay out of it, you don't know mm -hmm. what you're going to encounter. Yeah, absolutely. We have been talking about Vibrio. I did a story on it. They have been seeing more mm -hmm. cases of Vibrio. Um, this is the ideal situation where something like yeah. that could happen, an infection like that could happen. So also sewage, not good in that water as right. well. You know, there's, there's there all kinds, all kinds of dangers. So it's best just to avoid it. So we're going to check in now with James Tully. He's in Clearwater this morning. We've been uh, checking in with him about every hour now. James, I know that uh, you were starting to see the conditions kind of leveling out, but the storm surge really hasn't. Uh, not the storm surge, I should say the um, the tide is coming in around 1115. So in about an hour and 15 minutes or so, uh, that's when Bob Gualtieri, the sheriff there, believes that it could get worse. Heather, that, that's right. That's what Sheriff Bob Galtieri told us about an hour ago. And uh, keeping an eye on Clearwater Bay here, this inlet, this is uh, Hamden Drive that uh, I do see water receding here. And I was able to go down on foot uh, towards the beach again. And I can tell you that I'm not seeing as much recession happening there. But you see like areas of grass over here that we didn't see an hour, hour and a half ago. Uh, just a reminder for anybody who might be out here watching, beach access not allowed today. It is restricted and with good reason. Um, but you know, over here we are seeing some improvement and that's a good sign ahead of high tide. Uh, next time you see me, we're gonna be back down to ground level on the other side, Coronado Drive, which is something I'm really focusing on because I'm still seeing a lot of flooding on that street. So I do wanna get down there and give you guys a look at it, which we will do. Um, also interesting, Clearwater Police tweeting out video of a convoy of uh, city workers. Uh, they're leading in here to get debris off the streets. Yeah, you guys talking about this water not being safe to walk through, whatever else. There's so much debris. Uh, there's sand in here. Uh, there are palm fronds uh, all over the place uh, on the other side of the street here. So here's the problem. That convoy hasn't reached us. It can't. Uh, these roads are flooded. They're not passable. So. Next time you see me, you're going to get down to ground level. Uh, high tide expected to be around 1115 AM. Uh, that's that's the magic hour for us out here to see where things are. If we do see an increase or not, I can tell you at least Clearwater Bay here in this street, not seeing an increase. Same on Coronado Drive on the other side, uh, Coronado and third. Uh, that's that's all pretty solid news, but we want to keep an eye on it. So. We're going to get down to ground level next time we talk to you guys, and, and we'll keep watching things. But uh, so far, still the same here in Clearwater Beach. I'll send it back to you. Yeah, so far, so good. We'll take stable at this point. Yeah, and uh, we were checking in with Forrest Saunders as well, and he was dealing with some really rough conditions for quite some time. I'm thinking that those conditions may be getting better. That's what I'm hoping. Uh, Forrest is in Chiefland right now. You were in the Cedar Key area. You had to leave that uh, Cedar Key area. Yeah, and you had to leave that area. Uh, Forrest, uh, how are things going out there for you now? I suppose there's an infinitesimal improvement here. I mean, if you can call it that, we're still getting some really nasty gusts of wind that are knocking me backwards. Of course, I'm like 160 pounds, so a stiff breeze knocks me back. But what I can tell you is that the rain has been subdued here. Uh, we're not seeing as much of it, which is great uh, because at least we're getting a reprieve from that. Uh, it was hitting your face so hard. It, felt like sleet there for a while. But as you mentioned, I am about 27, 30 miles or so away from 
Cedar Key. That is an island community of more than 700 people. And we heard from city officials that about 100 of those people decided that they were going to weather this storm. They were going to stay on that island. Well, since then, uh, the storm surge has started coming up. Uh, I think at last check I saw a buoy was at 10 feet, uh, but it's probably closer to 11, maybe even that 12 foot mark now. Uh, and then the estimation was it could go as high as 16 feet. We've seen some video, some pictures that city officials have been posting on social media from that tiny island community, and it just looks wrecked. I mean, there is debris everywhere, trees down. Uh, there is water flooding through the streets. And again, uh, that water still coming up. In fact, some city officials are estimating that it will keep going until at least noon. Uh, they are telling people to stay in their homes. Those that, uh, that can safely do so, that uh, they shouldn't be walking around in that community uh, because it is just so dangerous. In fact, they said police will strongly advise them to return to their homes if they see anybody out and about because it is just so dangerous out there right now. And again, that is an isolated community. Uh, and I would imagine that right now it is completely surrounded by water. Just one bridge in and out of there. Uh, and when those winds came up, that bridge had to shut down. EMS crews obviously not able to reach them from off of the island right now until uh, things improve. Meanwhile, back here, like I said, in Chiefland, things may be getting a little bit better, but it's still a bit of a rocky road. I mean, we're not done yet. And uh, flash flooding uh, still a concern when you have pockets of heavy rain come through. Uh, and uh, we have been fortunate not to see a whole lot of debris in this area specifically, but that doesn't mean in more rural parts trees haven't toppled, branches haven't come down. Uh, but at least here in Chiefland, things for the most part look intact. They're just kind of miserable, to be perfectly honest with you guys. And Forrest, uh, we're taking a look at the images that you were just talking about. Actually, these are the ones that uh, were sent in by Cedar Key Fire Rescue, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to get these on the air soon yeah. uh, and courtesy them, of course. But yes, uh, major flooding in that area. Uh, we're seeing businesses that have water, yeah. um, maybe a couple feet of water inside uh, their businesses. Uh, of course, it just depends on their location and, and how close they are to the water. And of course, um, also wind damage too. Lots of yeah. palm fronds down and yeah. things like that. But it, the, the water is the biggest damage that we're seeing in these pictures. It's just yeah. incredible. We'll try to post some of these pictures yeah. too as soon as we can. Uh, we're also seeing flooding on Bayshore like we've never seen before. Larissa Scott is out there right now. Larissa, has it gotten any worse? Well, I'm, I'm here on Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa, and you can see we are still dealing with flooding. It has been flooded here from with water from the bay for several hours now, from overnight now into the morning. We're still dealing with this water coming in from the bay. However, it has started to recede some. So I want to show you this. If you look here, this line of debris is where the water was probably about an hour ago or so. And now if you look over here, it's receded down, you know, I'd say a couple yards. So, you know, some good news for the people living over here. We've talked to, to several neighbors who are worried about the water rising so much so that we had one of the business owners come by a couple minutes ago and he put some more sandbags in front of the door here of his business just in case we do see those water levels rise some more later he wanted to make sure that his business was protected uh, we've been telling you that we've got we have police out here making sure that people don't drive in to these flooded waters here as they have been all morning long but of course we'll continue to keep you updated on what's happening here reporting in tampa i'm larissa scott all right, thank you so much, Larissa. We've also seen some video of the major flooding, of course, as the storm has moved past. And now we're understanding that rescue efforts are finally underway. We've seen some of those, um, those, you know, what is it, water, deep water vehicles? The, the high water yeah, the vehicles, yeah. the high water vehicles yeah. that have been rolling through some of the counties in the in the Bay Area. But now we're beginning to see some of those rescue efforts happening. Yeah, and Jada Williams is in Tarpon Springs following the National Guard through some of those flooded neighborhoods. Jada, what are you seeing and what are they seeing? 
Well, guys, the street right here behind me is one of those many flooded neighborhoods. In fact, we were told that there is a trailer uh, park back here that two of those homes were on fire. They had to meet the firefighters just a little bit up here before the water got too high to where their trucks couldn't make it through. They got on one of the National Guard's vehicles that can make it uh, up to 30 inches of water just to get back there and do those rescue efforts. So this is something that is very important. There's a very clear need for fire rescue, but it's just not capable in a typical fire rescue truck, which is so important for the National Guard to be out here. They're making it happen going back here. This water is really high. It was even high in that very lifted uh, vehicle. Now look right here. This is Spring Bayou. It looks like nothing but water, but there is actually a park under here. There is a bench over here. The seats Everything is underwater in this neighborhood. Now, let me spin you around just a little bit more over here because you can see those fire trucks behind me. Now, they have to stop here. All of this rescue happening just down the street, but those fire trucks have to stop here because that water is just way too high right now for them to go through. So this is proof that if that fire truck can't make it through the standing water, you decide to hop in your car. Your car may not make it. It's not safe. And then if you have to call out fire rescue because you went out, there's going to be those barriers just to getting into these areas in these neighborhoods. This is proof that seeing these rescue efforts happening means that you should stay in your safe place wherever you are. And we've seen a lot of people uh, since we've been out and about throughout the county, people who are coming out and taking a look, but it's still not a good idea to do so. So as I mentioned, those trucks are back there right now. They are rescuing people in that community. We will continue to stay out here. We'll monitor what's going on. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you so much, Jada. We want to check in now with Greg D because we've been talking about the next tide happening around noon. We're about two hours away from that, Greg. Yeah, you know, guys, I, I've been looking through my Facebook page, and you guys at home have been amazing. I uh, just got a slew of images from uh, security cameras, uh, ring doorbells, from whatever you've got images, from some of you being there. And what I'm kind of getting the idea of is that the images that you're seeing from us is the fringe because that's how far we can get. But there are some neighborhoods that are really dealing with some serious flooding. I'm um, thinking about Pasco County, Hernando County, and even portions of Pinellas and Hillsborough County where folks have just not been able to get to, obviously, many heeding the warnings and getting out in zones A and B. Mostly this is a zone A issue. And there is flooding there that we really haven't gotten a full scope of uh, just yet. I'm kind of looking over at the East Tampa uh, tide gauge that I've got pulled up on a monitor here in the studio. It started falling and now as we're approaching high tide, it's now holding steady. So the water is slowly trickling out, but it, this is not going to happen in the next hour. We may have to wait two, three, four more hours for the water to really get down to some sort of reasonable level before folks can start coming in. And as you do, uh, make sure that your neighborhood is cleared before you actually start venturing in there. Remember, there is debris in this, as we've been talking about. It could be down trees, down power lines. All kinds of things could be mixed in with that water. Nothing, anything that's been touched by floodwaters should be considered contaminated. You don't know what level of bacteria are in there. There's sewage mixed in as well. In many cases, there will be. Uh, so just kind of keep that in mind before you start going in there hands-on, trying to lift things and move debris. Make sure you are doing so in a really smart way. Best of all, let's just wait, okay? We're not at the time yet where we're clean up. We're still in storm phase. This hurricane for us is still happening, even though the center of it is basically in Madison County, about to cross into South Georgia. Category 2, 105 mile an hour storm, moving northeast at 18. Hurricane warnings are up for the South Carolina Low Country and the coastal empire of Georgia from just north of Brunswick through Hilton Head, Savannah, back up to Beaufort. That's the Marine Corps base down there in southern portions of South Carolina, not as far as Charleston. They're expecting hurricane conditions here as Idalia potentially reemerges out over the Atlantic and then makes a little loop somewhere offshore. It's future track still in question. We'll deal with it if we have to again. But right now, it's today that the storm really concerns us. And although the eye obviously is gone, the convection in the storm the buildup of thunderstorms have really, really continued to remain really strong around the storm. Uh, 
Take a look at the radar out here right now. There are some showers and thunderstorms. The tornado watch south of Pinellas, Hillsborough and Polk County has been canceled. So Hardy DeSoto Highlands, Manatee and Sarasota, you're no longer under a tornado watch. North of there, it's until 3 p.m. And the biggest storm in Tampa right now is right over the bay. Nothing severe here, but there is some lightning and thunder. I'll continue to watch this. I'm going to go back to my social media, try to share more of your reports. So follow me on Instagram at Greg D. Weather. Facebook.com slash Greg D. Weather for my Facebook page. We'll be tracking the storm there. Uh, right now, I'm going to send it back to Heather and Dia. We're going to go to Katie, who has uh, more. We're going to check in with Katie in just a second. I want to pass this along to you right now. The airlines have canceled 898 flights as of 955 this morning. Southwest has canceled the most flights, 212. Uh, we're going to continue to follow these and uh, and we'll keep you up to date on that. Yeah, so we're going to get out to Katie Legrone. She is live in Hernando Beach and Katie, you're with the National Guard right now as they are actually making rescues. That's right. Hey guys, we are actually on a National Guard uh, truck with the team and we are going into Fernando Beach actually. This is the first time we're capturing, we're seeing the video of our, excuse me, we're able to get video from inside Fernando Beach. We've been hearing about significant storm surge. I mean, you can take a look. We're looking at about four feet of water um, here and we haven't even gone through the worst of high tide. Um, high tide is at 120 in the afternoon and of course we're in that king tide cycle so they are expecting anywhere from six to nine feet of storm surge but just take a look at the scene this is um get, going into hernando beach at this point the mission right now is to figure out just how far this big truck these big water rescue trucks can even get um, because there's a question as to whether or not even this truck, which has a clearance of about 30 feet, can even get to where it needs to go. Um, there's been significant success with evacuations. However, there are still about 20% of residents who live on the west side of US-19 who decided to stay, a lot of them here in that Hernando Beach area. And so there are people that essentially need to get rescued, and that's a that's basically what, what the mission um, uh, ultimately is for this crew. I mean, you can see, just take a look at those cars going through the water. I was talking to the Hernando County Fire Rescue Captain, who's actually in the front, uh, in the front seat of this truck, and he said, look, right now, we're trying to figure out how far can we actually get into it. There's a house fire, apparently, that they can't get to because of the water, because of just how, the wa uh, how high the water is. Um, and they actually have some Black Hawk helicopters that are on standby to do missions from the air, to do basically lift missions. And there was some weather in the area that prevented them uh, from being deployed. But that's this is what we're dealing with. I mean, just take a look. Here's a Silver Dolphin restaurant. There's a lot of water in this area. They expected it. I mean, this is potentially historic. For this area they expected it to be catastrophic and we're getting the first images live on the air with me right now yeah just take a look at that can you see that stop sign this is the marina here housing a bunch of boats oh here we go it looks like we've got to some higher ground here and again this is our first trip inside uh this area since this morning. So we are seeing images for the first time along with you guys. Matt, if you want to show, here's the, here's sort of the inlet. And then Matt, if you go ahead and pan to the street, you can see yeah, what we're dealing with. It's insane, isn't it? It's insane, yeah. It's way yeah. worse than I thought it was. You, you just said it's way worse than you thought it was. We're actually live on the air oh, no, now. Yeah, yeah, it's worse than I thought it was gonna be. So, so this is pretty impassable. It's, you're calling it impassable. We're with the captain from the Hernando County Fire Rescue who's been gracious enough to let us ride around and show these images. He just described the scene as impassable, worse than they thought. And this isn't even high tide. Many of the businesses are already flooded. The water's a couple of feet up on the door. Okay, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, know if you can, um, he said the water, 
it, a lot of the restaurants it's are already flooded and it's only going to continue to rise because as i mentioned that king tide expected about 120 this afternoon so this is a real mess out here yes yeah have we got a we got a we got a mess out here so. have you been able to make any water rescues yet yes they've for a residents couple this morning already, so yes. a couple a couple yep. people have been rescued yep yep and what time have, did you guys start getting out here lot. we have a uh, residential fire going at the time we can't get no units to it so that's right we're just having to let it burn and we're trying to figure out a way to get in there and get some pumps there and some lines to get the fire out yeah he talked about a house fire that they have not been able to get to so they're trying to get some pumps and some lines just to get this fire out but it's uh it's a pretty uh, catastrophic situation out here we're going to continue on then we're going to try to see okay. how deep that we can get out here all right there's anybody that needs assistance up in some of these Areas. Thanks, Captain. So it gets worse up here. Really appreciate it. Yeah, we're going to continue to move forward just to see how far we can get. That's what we're dealing with outside, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate you giving us that update. Now, Katie was in Hernando Beach and she was saying that that king tide is going to happen around 1:30. So we're going to continue to see that water rise. You hear her talking about fires happening at households that's been happening all morning. And the problem is a lot of these crews have not been able to get to those households because of the storm surge. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to guess that a lot of these uh, fires are happening because they're electrical fires. There was also a fire in Clearwater this morning and it took the firefighters a lot because they had to deal with all of that high water to actually get to the home. So I'm sure we're going to be dealing with that throughout the rest of the morning as well. Absolutely. So we've been getting new video throughout the morning, of course, of damage throughout this storm. We want you to take a look at this video here. Yeah, these are actually pictures from the Cedar Key area. This is from the Cedar Key Fire Rescue. And I mean, you just see a lot of flooding and a lot of debris around the homes. This is near where Forrest Saunders correct, was, yeah. correct? Um, so when you're hearing forest talk, this is a similar area and you just see the water just taking over those those homes right there. Yeah, the the storm surge was really bad and and you know, Forrest was saying that he had been out there for quite some time, but it was getting so unbearable that they had to leave the area because of the storm surge as well as, you know, again, the conditions you can see. Yeah, the, the stop the, sign. Look how far the yeah. water is up on the stop sign in the porches. Yeah, several feet, I think, inside some of these homes and businesses as well. And right now, Hillsborough Avenue is closed at the intersection of Webb Road. The Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office has the road blocked right now. Water levels are, remain high in that area. So definitely don't go on that road. You see it blocked off there. And we're about to show you more video from Treasure Island. This is a drone shot courtesy of ABC News. And you can see just, I mean, the water is covering the street. You do not see the street. You can see parking lots. Um, you can barely see the lines in the road, but obviously a lot of flooding going on in our beach communities. And this is why we're telling you to stay home, stay with us the rest of the morning because these roads are just impassable and you do not want to get caught in a situation like this. No, and this is, we, we, we had seen this video earlier as well. Dennis and Greg were talking about, you know, the storm surge really has been the main focus all morning. The wind really hasn't been an issue. You can see that uh, the buildings seem to be intact. The trees seem to be intact as well in Treasure Island. It just looks like the storm surge uh, really took over the roadways and probably uh, inundated some of the businesses there. Um, so I'm sure that once they open up the beaches again and they allow people to get back on to these barrier islands, uh, businesses will be able to kind of assess their damage and, and see see what's what's going on out there. All right, and I think we're going to go to uh, Clearwater Beach. That's where James yep. Tully's been all morning. So James, I know you were a little bit higher. Have you gotten to the ground level yet? What are you showing us in Clearwater? Yeah, good morning again, Heather. We're down here on Coronado Drive, uh, right by 3rd Street. And as you can see, there's still significant flooding. But I want to bring in Lieutenant Meg Hasty with the Clearwater Police Department. She's uh, joining us here. Uh, Sean Daly doing some field producing, tracking you down and finding you for us. Um, I guess the biggest concern right now is to tell people, beach access, obviously, that's, that's done. Right. Yes, there's no access to any of the barrier islands right now. The bridges are closed down due to the flooding. Yeah, and the flooding, you know, we're concerned about high tide coming our way in about an hour and a half or so uh, with this possibly getting worse. What are you guys thinking? What's your perspective on it? Well, we're hoping for the best and prepared for the worst. We've got our high water vehicles, as you can see behind me, that are ready to do any rescues if necessary. Um, and we have the Clearwater Fire Department that's standing by to help with that. Okay, uh, Lieutenant Hasty, take me through what your evening or early morning has been like. Have you done any rescues? What kind of damage have you seen? Just as you've surveyed the area, 
give us your thoughts on this is we're seeing something that most people probably haven't seen here before. We haven't had to do any rescues. I think everybody has heeded our warning and evacuated as they should have, which is a, a very good for us. Um, significant damage. We've got some trees down, but other than that, structurally, we haven't seen anything. We really need to wait for the water to recede first. Yeah, and that's going to be the big question, right? Because high tide about 1115, that's what uh, we're hearing from Sheriff Galtieri with Pinellas County and everything. So at this point, if you're here in Clearwater, you're not getting out, at least for the time being. Right. Until the, the water recedes after high tide, we'll have a better idea of when we can open the bridges. Yeah, it looks like it is drawing back a little bit here, at least on this street. That's a good sign before high tide, right? I mean, my eyes don't deceive me. No, I think you're right. We went through I here. I mean, I am very tired, Lieutenant Hasty, but I, I know what I'm seeing here. Right. This is the second time we've been through here, and I agree. I think the water is receding a bit, but we just have to wait for that high tide to hit. Uh, give us an idea. We're not able to get over to the beach right now, what, what the beach looks like, at least here where we are. Because this appears, to, you t actually told me, this is one of the worst spots right now in Clearwater Beach where we're standing. Agreed. Yes, this is one of the worst spots. In, but far worse is North Beach up towards um, Mandalay Point. That's almost impassable. Um, okay. And so thankfully everybody has evacuated up there that we that we know of. Um, south of here towards the construction area, Hamden and Gulfview area is also totally underwater. Yeah, that's that's what we're seeing as well. Hey, Lieutenant Hasty, thank you so much. Let's get back to work. Thank I appreciate you. it. As she talked about, Mike, let's just show what's behind me, Coronado Drive, and, and the situation that we have. Now we finally have daylight. This is where we were all night. And uh, it's still bad. Uh, I, I would call this impassable. Uh, you know, Lieutenant jokingly telling me, you know, you're, you and your crew can leave. You can try to, but you're not going to get back in. Uh, certainly, we're not going to try. So, uh, guys, I send it back to you. That, that's the hope, wishful thinking, maybe, uh, with high tide about an hour away. But we are seeing this recede, and you know, the police department obviously echoing that and, and saying kind of the same thing, that they, they see it as well, and they're hoping as the tide rises, this water still works its way back. But the sheriff's saying, most likely it's going to be three to four hours after that high tide mark about 11 15 a.m. So I'll send things back to you. All right, James, thank you. Still a little bit of time to go. And I know that's what we've been talking about the whole time, watching to see if that water receded or if it just kept going. That was going to be a key indicator of what was going to happen with this next high tide. So let's bring in meteorologist uh, Greg D now, because Greg, I can assume that you think that's good news as well, that the water is going back a little bit. I've been watching the gauges. It, you know, it seems like they take a step down, then they kind of hold. And then it takes another step down and then they hold. So it's a very slow progress, but clear water is dropping. Uh, the ones in the north part of Tampa Bay are dropping as well. All of them are slowly dropping. Uh, the problem is it's very slow because we're still approaching a high tide. So now the opposite is happening. The storm's forces are going down. The tidal forces are increasing. So the tide now wants to keep the water in while the storm is lessening up on the push of water uh, into the bay. Here's what's happening in downtown Tampa right now. We've got us a good old downpour happening, another thunderstorm moving through. This should be out in a few minutes, but another reason why you really have no reason to get out there today. We're going to see these waves of heavy rain and storms, occasional water spout, tornado not ruled out out of these. Of course, lightning and thunder too. The wind has not been as much of an issue. It's south at 20 miles out an hour out of the airport, and that's kind of what's interesting is you know, winds really weren't anything crazier than our strongest summer thunderstorms. Consistent gusts along the coast of 50 to 60 miles an hour. Now, that doesn't happen every day in the summer, but it's not unusual to see that. I would expect that to see a 50, 55 mile wind, especially near the coast during our summer thunderstorms. So the amount of water that was moved here without really seeing a lot of wind is really impressive. This is a hurricane that is going to go down in the record books. Unfortunately, just like the one that hit just down the coast 11 months ago in southwest Florida with Ian uh, still feels like the 90s. Humidity is really high. Look at the surf at Clearwater. You do not want to get in this water, folks, OK? I know a lot of you, probably the surfers out there are thinking, oh, maybe no, don't do it. All right, there, there's strong rip currents here. This is not the time to get close to or onto the beach. The water will continue to recede, but the surf is going to stay up throughout the day and we'll likely probably continue to see choppy conditions tomorrow and not really fully improve until we get to the day on Friday. Winds here in Clearwater, southwest of 14, so they're even lighter than they are in Tampa, current temperature 82. So there's a location of the storm, Madison County coming into South Georgia, continuing to pull towards the coast of Georgia or South Carolina, where a hurricane warning continues. This is still expected to be a hurricane. Latest number 105 is the wind speed from the National Hurricane Center. They've been updating this hourly, both the wind speeds, location and pressure, because they're able to base it on weather stations that the hurricane passes over, so they get a really good pressure reading. They're also able to look at the radar and estimate the winds in a really accurate way. On the satellite, 
you know, other than the eye has filled in, this doesn't look like a weaker, a much weaker storm. And certainly it's 20 miles an hour less than landfall. But remember, landfall was at 745. We're two and a half hours away from landfall. And this thing is still really trying to hold on with a huge area of rain and thunderstorms around the center. The interior, the center of the storm, the eye continues to bubble with additional thunderstorm activity. So we're going to continue to see the impacts of that storm all the way through South Georgia. We here in the Bay Area are on the south side of the storm, and that's what we're getting right now is waves of rain and thunderstorms coming in off the Bay. Some of these have been strong. We have not seen any tornado warnings as of late. Those were down towards the south. They're now gone. Uh, let me look uh, into Citrus County where you're seeing some scattered showers, but no thunder storms a little downpour here in your Brooksville heading down into northern Pasco County. Pasco County, another little line of showers moving through. I don't see anything too strong right now here. Now this thunderstorm over the bay south of downtown Tampa. This one's pretty strong. Uh, it is moving generally in the direction of Brandon, Valrico, Sefner, Plant City, maybe the north part of Riverview, but probably should stay north of Riverview. I'll have to watch that one. Let's pull up the wind data on that storm and take a really close look at what's going on down here. Just got a new scan. Now I'm not seeing anything here that that is uh, saying to me that there's anything spinning or there'd be a water spot or a tornado. So just a strong downpour with a lot of heavy rain and then farther south Polk, Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands counties. Yeah, more thunderstorms coming through. We'll have to watch these cells. Now you folks are out of the tornado watch, but there's not a, there's no reason why there wouldn't be a quick spin up, especially with these storms coming ashore. You could always get a water spout here. Uh, most of our tornado warnings, it seems here in the Bay Area during the summer come in times when there are no tornado watches. They simply come from thunderstorms that spawn water spouts offshore that come ashore as tornadoes. So we'll watch these right now. Wachula, Bartow, Avon Park, Sebring, quick spin up possible, but nothing here that I'm concerned about. So there is the tornado watch box. Actually includes all of Pinellas, Hillsborough and Polk County North. That's until three o'clock. Really, I think this is going to be a north central and northeast Florida issue in the next couple of hours as the storm lifts north the best the strongest dynamics the strongest ingredients that would potentially spawn a tornado start moving to the north as well as all of this lifts up towards the north and east though we will continue to see scattered rain for the next several hours 17 mile an hour southerly winds brooksville 21 in tampa 26 wachula 23 in sarasota and 25 in lake placid so well below tropical storm strength and Many of you are gusting into tropical storm strength, but this is the first time that I've looked at this map and I'm not seeing a wind gust over 50 miles an hour. 44 in Newport Ritchie, 47 in Bradenton, 43 in Sarasota and 43 in Northport. Zephyr Hills, Lakeland, Bartow over towards Frostproof. Winds gusting 30 to 40 miles an hour. There's some thunderstorms in the area, so anytime one of those pops up over your house, you may get a wind gust 45 to maybe even 55 miles an hour. Future cast this updates throughout the day. So this is the latest information really has the brunt of these storms. The largest batch shifting east of 75 after the lunch hour, and we're probably going to get breaks of sunshine and then maybe another round of a scattered rain and thunderstorms developing. If you do get into sun with temperatures in the 90s, got this onshore flow, the hurricane nearby still uh, that is going to at least favor a couple of thunderstorms popping up in the afternoon uh, tonight. Still could see a little bit of activity, especially south side of the bay, and that's going to continue into the overnight. But I think as we work into the day on Thursday, we'll start to see the rain become a little bit more scattered. Still looking at scattered rain chances in the morning, right into midday and then into the afternoon. And I think Friday is going to be the last day of elevated rain chances before we finally call it a day and start to dry out for the holiday weekend. Of course, the Memorial Day, or say Memorial Day, the Labor Day holiday weekend coming up Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So 105 mile an hour storm now pulling into South Georgia. We will see improving conditions here across the barrier in terms of the water. The chances for rain will stick around for a while. Lauren. All right, thank you, Greg. So one of the areas we've seen a lot of the storm surge issues is Oldsmar. Yeah, and this is an area that we haven't really been able to get eyes on because it was too dangerous a couple hours ago really to move our crews to this area. But we do now have ABC Action News reporter Lydia Vasquez, who is out there this morning. Lydia, this is a place that uh, that they're seeing some flooding. 
Hey guys, well, we are in Oldsmar. We've been here actually since 1 p.m. yesterday, and this is the worst that we've seen it. The wind is picking up about 23 miles an hour right now. The gusts up to 37, but the surge is the concern. Let me show you exactly what we're dealing with. The bay is really connecting with Ari Olds Park here. I mean, you can't see the sidewalk, those benches where we were standing yesterday are underwater and the wind continues to push that water up into the grass here. I was talking to Shay and she was telling me, you know, high tide ended at nine or low tide at nine. High tide is at three. So again, conditions are continuing to pick up here as we see the water just connecting with this park. And if Eugene, you want to pan over here a little bit, this playground is flooded. It's flooded. And, and if you go to the sidewalk over there to the right, just a little bit over the the, uh, the roads are blocked off because that water is covering all the way up into the street, going up into the homes over there. So we physically can't get over there right now. But I know JJ was out this morning looking at the conditions starting to pick up. We were talking with the guy who says his car was basically getting flooded. Uh, just that's the main concern here is that storm surge. There are people out here right now, you know, coming down and seeing this, but the wind is picking up again. This is the worst that we felt it since being here yesterday. That storm surge, that surge is something that we're continuing to watch, but from here, this is a little bit wild to watch the bay really just connecting with this park here. And if the wind is continuing to push it this way, you can see that for yourself. So again, we are going through the neighborhoods. We're talking with business owners. You know, they're telling us they're seeing the same thing. We're talking with people who decided to stay. So far, the homes here in front are OK. But again, the conditions are starting to pick up. You can see Eugene uh, panning over. There is some debris, uh, not much here as the wind hasn't really been too bad here in Oldsmar. Uh, it's that water that we're worried about, and you can see it's starting to go out into the street there as this park is flooded with water. I've heard a couple of parents, you know, trying to get kids away from this park as far as the getting closer to that water, but the puddles, it gets pretty deep in there. Again, we're going to be out here all day continuing to monitor these conditions, especially when that high tide comes in. So we'll send it back to you guys in the desk. Lauren, I think you have a question for us. Yeah, quick question for you. So obviously there are a lot of kids around in that park. Have you been talking to the families? Do they live nearby? How are their houses doing? Um, I'm curious since they, you know, came out to just yeah, kind so of inspect. Yeah, they really, they were here yesterday too. We were talking with families and the theme that we got, it was 50 50. So half of the homes were boarded up and with sandbags and they were saying they're not taking any chances. We also talked with other people who were here last night, who are here now kind of sightseeing with the kids. I mean, what I'm getting right now, just talking to them a little bit earlier, they're thinking, oh, it's not, it's, you know, the worst is over. So we're continuing to chat with them even this morning that, you know, again, keep in mind, high tide is coming back around three o'clock. I was just talking to a guy who says, by one o'clock, this is going to be gone. So we don't know what the conditions are going to be, but some people are concerned. I think they're here now just because, you know, you can still walk this park. You can still kind of get a little bit close. Uh, I'm not really sure, Eugene, if you want to pan over there, um, these kids are getting too close for my comfort um, in this water here. The water's starting to go up to their knees. It looks like a guy is pulling something out of the water there. But again, yesterday, he, that's all sidewalk. That's all benches where people walk. I'm not really sure what he's pulling up. That was floating uh, a little bit more inland into the into the water there. So you know what? It, it's a little bit 50 50 still here today on Wednesday as those winds pick up and that water continues to come in. We're going to continue to talk with these families and, in, in, uh, you know, just seeing are they going to stick around here? I'm going to tell them, you know, high tide again coming back. So it's not feeling really safe out here right now as that water continues to come up into this park, into these homes and where we're at. Yes, we're, you know, in dry land here, but just down the road, it's blocked off. Water's already going up into some homes there, already going up into some restaurants. So again, we'll be out here talking with, uh, you know, homeowners and residents and business owners and continuing to monitor these conditions. Guys. Lydia, thank you. And I actually was at that park last year. That's that exact park in during Oldsmar Ian, right? during yeah. Ian. Exactly. And we did not see the flooding that she's seeing out there right now. So clearly uh, it, it is a lot worse during this storm. And she's like she said that that uh, that high tide coming in uh, could make it even worse. I mean, it's just even interesting to, you know, look at Bayshore Ian mm -hmm. versus now. It's just it boggles your mind what yeah. Mother Nature can do sometimes. All right. So we want to move to uh, elsewhere in Pinellas County where we're really watching the water levels right now. Now. Yeah, we've got ABC Action News reporter Anthony Hill. He's in Indian Rocks Beach right now. Anthony, you are also seeing some flooding in that area. 
Yeah, as you can see in the back of me, a very good morning, guys, from a very different Indian Rocks Beach than the one we were reporting in towards the beginning of yesterday. Um, as you can see in back of me, this is standing water that goes as far as I could see, at least. A body of water that's not supposed to be here, obviously, and this is probably a situation that we're seeing across Pinellas County. I mean, and who knows how deep it is in the middle. I mean, we're looking at the signs to kind of get, kind of gauge how deep the water is. Um, but again, uh, the water just goes back. We're about a, a block away from the beach or what is left of the beach as you know, we know it's high tide and so you won't see any sand uh, per se. Um, we did see, uh, rather we met a guy not too long ago who said that he had to come and essentially rescue his aunt. His aunt lives in the apartment building to the left um, up there, if we can uh, switch the, the camera to the left over there. Um, she, he lives up in that apartment building right there and he said that I had to come. Find. Live yeah. storm coverage, yes. you know, we're going to have some signal issues, but um, Anthony Hill was live there for us in Indian Rocks Beach looking at the flooding. He's been there all night and it's kind of gotten to the point where it's the worst he's seen. Yeah, and that has really been the story, like we said, this entire morning in Pinellas County along the coastal areas, those low lying coastal areas. We have seen a lot of that flooding happening. Uh, I know that we were trying to get back out to uh, Katie Legrone, who Katie was in Legrone. Hernando Beach. Um, she was actually in the middle of helping or watching watching folks help she rescue was, she's with people. the National Guard right the now. the National Guard yep. um, and then we also have Jada Williams in the Tarpon Springs area following the National Guard as well are we going to be able to get to either one of those nope okay Let's, we're going to go to Greg right now uh, just for an update on the track and and where things stand right now Greg uh, yeah, uh, just looking you guys hear me? All right, yeah. here we go. Uh, just looking at some of my reports here on, on social media, uh, I'm seeing water over roadways, not just in our area, but as far south as Coquina Beach. That's Manatee County, well away from the storm. I mean, they were expecting maybe a three to five foot surge there. Could have been higher than that. So this is really just incredible storm. We're going to stay with this throughout the day as long as these rescues are happening. I, I think we're really just starting to get a real idea of the the breadth of the flooding in the beginning and early in the overnight obviously we couldn't venture anything anywhere it was way too dangerous so we took you to the edge of the water but then it turns out if you went through the water uh, you would get to neighborhoods and homes that are flooded and now there are folks that are stranded and they may be stranded if you are in that situation where you're listening to me on a radio station or watching us on a mobile device it's going to take a few hours for this water to recede in some cases, it may take until later in the afternoon, and that's because we're just hitting our high tides. The first high tide is over at Clearwater about 11, 11, 20 in the morning, and then they stagger from there to as late as 3 p.m. in the bay around uh, Ballast Point and over toward Old Port Tampa uh, down in South Tampa. So, yeah, until 3 o'clock in some cases before the water really makes a noticeable push out. It's been receding in many places slowly. Uh, have a viewer that's watching down at Tierra Verde that decided to stay in their uh, multi-level home there, and he said it receded about three inches since nine o'clock. So that's 90 minutes, about an inch every half hour. That's not gonna get the water out anytime soon. For those of you that are itching to get out, not a good idea. It's not a good idea to be out there uh, driving around right now. This is not the time to go shopping, to go running errands. Let's just keep the roads clear. Keep the attention of the emergency officials on the people that actually need it. There's no reason to, people, to put people in harm's way or in the way of the rescues and all the activity that's going on. So if you're home, you're, for, you're staying put, schools are closed, most businesses are closed, and they probably should for the rest of today as well. There's the latest track from the Hurricane Center. Uh, no update since I last showed this to you. It's tracking towards South Georgia now, coming up on Valdosta. We'll take a look at that radar out of South Georgia here coming up. Expected by tonight, so in the next uh, 18 hours or so, to reemerge off the coast of the Carolinas and then move away from South Carolina, potentially maintaining its intensity or slowly weakening. Some of the models do a loop out there. I posted this on my uh, Facebook page earlier that kind of takes it back towards Florida. Ah, 
you know, that's that track is not definitely not set in stone yet. If it were to do that and we've seen storms loop before, uh, it would not come back as the same intensity of a storm. You'd probably be looking at some sort of tropical storm or just a rainmaker, a low pressure looping back. But it's worth to note that it's out there for sure. Uh, take a look at the forecast for today. Uh, that's showing you that we are going to be up there into the 80s with scattered thunderstorms throughout the day. I don't really see that ending anytime soon. And in terms of the rain chances, those are going to stay high too. I mean, you're looking at 50 to 60 percent for the rest of the afternoon uh, as we go through the rest of today. So this is definitely a long duration rain event. The rain is going to keep coming. And you see here this view from our Rivergate Tower definitely shows that we're still looking at rain in the area, though there are some breaks out there uh, as well. Here's a look at, uh, well, I don't know if the camera's loading. Sometimes these cameras, oh, there it is. There's clear water. Looks like maybe a rain band approaching surface high. I don't see anybody at the beach. That is certainly good news. Temperatures are in the 80s. I did want to, before I send it back to you guys, take a look at the radar, show you where the center of the storm is, the eye. Uh, there it is now. It's impacting uh, Valdosta, Georgia. So it is, it is Georgia that's getting this, and they're getting basically a category two hurricane uh, right now with the wind still over 100 miles an hour lifting north generally towards Douglas, Georgia, maybe eventually uh, eventually making that turn towards the Savannah area. All right, that's the latest here. We're going to keep watching things, posting updates on my Facebook page and Instagram. You can follow me there at Greg D. Weather, guys. All right, Greg, thank you. Uh, we want to go now to Port Ritchie. Mary O'Connell is down there. She has uh, been in Port Ritchie throughout the morning, and right now she has actually uh, the Port Ritchie police chief. Uh, what is he saying? What's happening out there? Are you guys referring to the station? Hey guys, so we're stand, we're in Port Ritchie right now. We're on Bay Boulevard and behind us is a neighborhood. It leads out to Harbor Point. You might be able to, we'll zoom in in a minute, but if you might see it behind my shoulder, there's a lot of water here. This is one of the worst spots. I'm joined now by uh, Port Ritchie Police Chief Cyrus Robinson. Um, Cyrus, can you tell me a little bit about what we're dealing with back here, Chief? Well, severe flooding, uh, as obviously as a result of the storm. And some people have left due to the mandatory evacuation. Some have not. Uh, between the fire department and the police department, we have had to do several uh, water rescues, uh, evacuating people from their homes. And we see that continuing as the next uh, high tide comes in about 1230. We had seen some photos of water that was as high as a bus bench, so four feet or so. I mean, how much water are we dealing with here? Why was this so prone to flooding? I think it's a combination of the tide and the time that the storm came in, for lack of a better term, like a perfect storm for this type of uh, result. And uh, again, it's a, the area itself is prone to flooding through normal storms uh, of high, high intensity. So this is just magnified by the, the, the uh, hurricane coming in. Do you have any idea how many people are in their homes right now and need to be rescued? No, not at the moment. Uh, what we're doing is we're using high water vehicles uh, to go through the neighborhoods. Um, and we're also receiving phone calls in our dispatch center of people that are stuck in their homes and requiring assistance from the fire department and the police department. Got it. And then just give me an overall picture. This is one spot here, but what else are you dealing with here in Port Ritchie? Well, most of the streets, uh, this is sort of like a main thoroughfare and it has a lot of feeder streets off the side of it. But we have in the business district, like the Hooters restaurant and Catches and Whiskey Joe's and Whiskey Rivers, all of their docks are underwater at this point in time. And so we're hoping that the water recedes between now and the time the next tide comes in. Uh, that'll make it a little easier for us to navigate uh, this situation. But we'll see what happens. Chief, we can step this way so my photographer Richard Taylor can zoom in so people can maybe get a little bit of a, a look. What are we looking at straight ahead of us? You can see some high water vehicle or high yeah, high water vehicles that are uh, you know, out there in the waters looking for people. Right. Well, this is Bay Boulevard and the cross street you see is Old Post Road. And as you go further out, you'll dead in basically at um, Harbor Point and then as you move east, there's going to be um, Sand Pebble, which is a condominium uh, area. And then further east is Harbor Isles, which is just the name of a community. Um, it's 
well populated, densely populated back that in that area. And what you see now is now that the water has receded somewhat, some of the residents are trying to evacuate now as while they can before the next high comes in. Um, do you find that a lot of people heeded the warnings and evacuated? I have to imagine this area was in zone A. Um, do you find that they evacuated or did they hunker down and shelter in place? It seems like they did. Uh, we have not really received a vast number of calls uh, considering the population that's out here. Um, but at this point, a lot of these people are used to these types of storms and some of them may have thought that they could ride it out. But this is a different type of storm as far as the intensity of the, the water the storm surge. Chief, thank you so much. And just to kind of recap again, we are here in Port Ritchie, if you're just tuning in. Uh, this is Bay Boulevard, and it leads back to Harbor Point. Obviously, we've got a lot of water here and uh, some concern for when high tide comes back in. Uh, we've talked to some neighbors who told us they haven't been back to their homes yet. We have some uh, UTVs that are taking people back to their homes and also taking people out of the neighborhood. So we're going to monitor this situation here, try to talk to some more folks, um, and then we will be back with an update. Right now, we'll send it back. Back to you. All right, Mary, thank you. And we do want to get out to Hernando Beach. Arcata Legron is live out there. She was with the National Guard on a high water, uh, high water rescue truck. They're trying to make some rescues. Yeah, and um, she's now talking to the Hernando County, County Fire Rescue. Um, who are you interviewing right now and who are you speaking to? And I guess what's the game plan at this point um, as they make those rescues, Katie? <coughs> That's right, and that's all actually still being sort of unfolding um, as we speak. Because look, I mean, this is what we're dealing with here on Hernando Beach. I mean, this is Shoal Line, this is Boulevard, this is the main road in and out of um, uh, Hernando County, and there are portions of it that are basically just impassable. I mean, we've got about four feet of water from the storm surge um, overnight, and remember, King Tide has not even come yet, and so that's not expected until 1:20 in the afternoon. And so you mentioned we've been with. Uh, National Guard and um, the Hernando County Fire Rescue. This is actually Captain Sean Moulton, who's been gracious enough to let us really, quite frankly, literally hitch a ride. Um, Sean, thank you so much, Captain Moulton. Um, what is the biggest issue that you're dealing with right now? Oh, just the impassibility. Well, a we, couple issues. One, we have a residential fire that's going that we cannot get any units to it. So that's burning at this time. So we're working on that. The other issue we have is one of our crews, one of the rescue crews, which is actually in one of these LMTVs, which these have a 30 inch clearance, is stuck down this road at this point. So we actually got down this road and then retreated. It's just getting too deep. Uh. This water on this street is at least three feet on the road. So you can start to see vehicles are getting stuck. stuck. But at yeah. this point, most of the people who are out here have either left or they're staying where they're at. Okay, because that was my next question is what are you hearing by way of rescue needs are you actually getting calls from not people really who, need, who want to be rescued who not need to be really rescued? at this point um we've stopped and talked to a couple people who were stuck on the bridge over here most people are wanting to stay or they want to wade back wow. to their homes so they don't want to leave the area and really they can't leave with their personal vehicle the road here shoal line which this whole beach community is only able to be accessed via the north on Shoal Line or the south on Shoal Line Boulevard. It is the only way in and out and it's completely impassable from the north or south to personal vehicles. So if you're not in a vehicle like we're in, you're not getting out here. You've been with the department for 21 years. 21 Give us years. some perspective. Where does this rank in your history? Well, personally, here? I don't know if this is the worst it's ever been, but since that I've had my eyes on, yes, this is the worst that I've seen it. And uh, you know, it's only going to get worse from here. So coming out here, I didn't think it was going to be this bad. I thought we were going to hit some water on shoal line. I did not realize this was completely impassable. So, And you were out our, here at 1 o'clock in the morning, right? I came out here. Uh, we came. Our command staff came out here along with the uh, National Guard, the Army, and we brought a lot of their command staff out, and we reconned out here at 1 a.m. And we thought it might get bad, but we really didn't think it would get this bad at that time. Um, we were all through these roads, just... Uh, I don't know what time is it now. So eight, nine hours, 10 hours ago, right. we were out here driving these in a pickup truck. No problem. Completely passable. We went all the way out to Pine Island and back. 
And so this is how bad it's gotten just in the last few hours. And we know king tide expected about 120 this afternoon, so it's only going to get worse. At one point, you had mentioned that there are Black Hawk helicopters that are sort of on standby to do some lift missions from the air. What is the status of... of the last thing the- I heard, and again, I'm, you know, I'm lower down on the totem pole, so it's... Um, the command staff, I was hearing them on the radio saying the Blackhawks are unable to fly right now. I mean, if you feel that the wind's still yeah. pretty gusty There's, out here, yes. that's part of the problem we're having. You can see the water still moving in. So if there was any possibility for this to retreat, it's just not going to. It's not heavy, heavy gusts, but it's heavy enough to not allow any of this water to retreat. And the tide's still moving in. So all those, all those things are working against us. So this is only going to get worse. Appreciate your time, Captain. Thank you again no for letting us, you know, hang out with you guys. Um, this is this is pretty incredible stuff. I mean, it's just this is the aftermath of Hurricane Adalia playing out in Hernando Beach. Um, this was an area that all day yesterday, all evening, I was saying um, emergency emergency officials really honed in on. It was never about a major wind event here. It was never about a major rain event here. It was always about that storm surge, that water, water, more water. And this is exactly what they were predicting. Um, It's going to get worse. They've mentioned that six to nine feet storm surge. And so it looks like that is very much uh, where where this area is headed, at least uh, in the later hours um, of the day. So that's the very latest from Hernando County. Guys, back to you. Katie, thank you. To hear that fire captain say it is the worst he's ever seen in 20 years and they can't get their vehicles to people right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to just feel for anyone who stayed and that's why they do those evacuations Mm -hmm. because this is what happens. These emergency responders cannot get to people. And this is what Greg has been saying basically all morning. This is what we saw, uh, you know, uh, in the uh, Bayshore Boulevard area. Uh, but the, the what Greg was saying was we are seeing the storm, at least earlier in, in the morning, the storm was so powerful it was taking over, you know, the ability for that water to recede. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what we're seeing right now in Hernando Beach. That's exactly what Katie's describing. We're just not able to see that water recede. And so when that king tide comes in, it is likely going to get worse. And we will be here with you guys throughout the rest of the day while that happens. And we do want to now get to uh, Clearwater Beach. That's where James tully has been for the past, what, 24 hours? Yeah, ish? about. Yeah. yeah James, yeah. what is it like out there right now? Long time. Very, very long time we've been here, guys. Uh, I just got to hand it to my crew. I have the best crew out here. Sean Daly, Mike Brantley, my photographer and uh, chief photographer, Eric uh, Moore, has been doing so much to help me get to where I need to to get the viewers out there the information the visuals they need to see okay good good news to report is that things are significantly better here on Coronado Street this is kind of where we've been posted up pretty much for the last 12 hours and as you can see much less flooding on the roadways here as we flip around Mike just follow me as best you can here down Coronado here it's actually the first time I've seen a couple people out, out walking it's getting better. We talked to Lieutenant Hasty with uh, Clearwater Police, and uh, she told us nothing but good stuff, too. No rescue. She felt a lot of people were heeding the warning and did so. Um, and people I've talked to, you know, staying at the hotel at the Spring Hill Suites like we are, um, yeah, they, they're on vacation, and it was interrupted by this. So not a lot of people who stuck around, according to police, and what we've seen, too. So that that's all very, very good. We're approaching high tide, so it's just good to see that Water's receding as we continue to keep an eye on it. Um, you guys still have me? Everything all right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's the, the word from here. Yeah, it, it, things improving over here next to Clearwater Bay. I was giving you a bird's eye view of that uh, through the parking garage here on the other side. Uh, that also significantly improving. So hoping to be able to get out of here with my entire crew in a couple of hours, feeling more and more confident about that. Beach access, though, it is still restricted. You are not allowed to go on the beach today, and with good reason. Uh, But for now, guys, I'll send it back to you. Feeling a lot better about things. Still flooding on the streets, but a big improvement in the last half hour as we approach high tide. All right, James, thank you so much. And again, 
comes down to geography, where you're located. You're seeing uh, James say that, that it's receding. It's not happening that way in Hernando Beach. So uh, it just de depends on where you are and, and the impacts of this storm. And we got to wait for that uh, high tide coming yeah. up uh, soon for some areas, actually. Mm -hmm. So we do want to go to Kylie McGivern. She's in Bradenton for us. And Kylie, I know all morning you've been reporting the Cortez Bridge uh, is closed. So how's it going out there right now? Yes, we have moved locations just to give you guys a different perspective. Warner's Bayou is behind us. That flows out into the river and we're in a neighborhood right now in Northwest Bradenton. And Randy, our photojournalist, we've been working together through this storm. You can see how high the water is. We're not even in the deepest part, well above my ankles. When you see road closures, we see a car right now about ready to either turn around or pull in. It is not smart to drive through this. So. If you're wondering, OK, what does my area look like? Can I get from point A to point B if you've got to be out, which hopefully you don't? MyManatee.org slash road closures. If you look further down this road, just to give you an idea of where we're at further down, there are other road closures as you get closer to downtown with more severe flooding. So we are just off the water now. You can see this home near us. The water is coming in. Guys, remember, we are not at high tide yet. So the county is really encouraging people. Don't be what they call a hurricane tourist. We see a lot of people looking around, seeing how bad the damage is. The best idea is to stay close. Let us just show you what's going on in a safe way. But for now, we're going to send it back to you guys. All right. All right. Thank you, Kylie. Yeah, please don't be a looky loo. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Um, we do want to. Uh, we do want to go to Bayshore right now, our Larissa Scott. And, you know, I used to live off of Bayshore and seeing Larissa's live pictures from Jason Richards, our photographer out there, blowing my mind. I know a lot of you guys are really astonished looking at Bayshore. Let's go out to her now because I think we're seeing some uh, high water vehicles out there. Yeah, and it's only expected to get worse, Larissa. It is, and I don't know. Oh, they're out of frame now, but yes, we did just have a high water vehicle pass by us. Um, and if you check out the water levels here, it's starting to recede pretty quickly. I'd say in the past 30 minutes, it's gone down quite a bit. If you look up this way, if we can pan the camera up the side of the street a little bit, where that debris is, is how high the water was earlier. And it has receded quite a bit in the past half hour or so. But of course, Bayshore still very flooded. You know, we've been telling you all morning that, you know, we've had people we've talked to who've lived here for decades saying that this is some of the worst flooding that they have seen in this area. Obviously, Bayshore is prone to flooding, but many of them have not seen it get this bad. Um, some of them have seen the water levels rise this high, but haven't seen it this deep. So, of course, something that they've been keeping an eye on. We had a, a business owner come by here earlier who put sandbags up in front of his business because he said that he saw us, you know, reporting right in front of in front of his business. And he got worried when he saw how high the water levels were. Um, again, you know, even though the water is starting to recede some, like we said, you can see Bayshore still clearly very flooded. It is not a safe sp space for you to drive. If you turn this way, Jason, if we can just show them, we still have um, Tampa City police here uh, keeping people from driving through because that has been an issue all morning long. We've had at least a dozen vehicles that we've seen try to come through here. A couple of them got stuck up a little farther up Bayshore. A couple of people we had to stop ourselves um, fr from driving through. Some of them said they would have driven had we not stopped them because they just didn't realize how deep the water was. Um, you can see here we got ton of debris coming up all this stuff that was washed up from the bay um, we've been having you know waves from the bay crash over the seawall onto bayshore all morning long the bay does look like it's calming down some which you know is good news as people wait to see when we have high tide later that's what the business owner said to us when he stopped by here he said you know the water might recede some but we're worried about what's going to happen in a couple hours from now so of course they want to protect their homes you know we had some people who had to evacuate their homes last night this of course evacuation zone a for obvious reasons you know bayshore so prone to flooding they told us you know they're hoping that they don't have flooding in their homes and they'll be watching that closely we've had lots of people come out here today thanking us for 
for our reporting and, you know, hoping that we continue to keep an eye on it. And of course, we will do that. That's it here. The latest from Bayshore. We'll continue to report back to you guys. Larissa, you've been doing a great job out there. I know that's a long morning standing out there on Bayshore. So we've seen the video and we've shown you the video of the major flooding as the storm has moved past and now all of the rescue efforts are underway. Yeah, Jada Williams is in Tarpon Springs and she's been following the National Guard through flooded neighborhoods. You're actually with the National Guard right now on one of their high water vehicles. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm actually on the truck right now. Now this can go through up to 30 inches of water and we are coming through these neighborhoods here in Tarpon Springs. And while there's no flooding right now, that doesn't mean that they aren't going through these areas where a regular car wouldn't be able to make it through this road. Now there is a very brave crew on here with me right now. Their job is to make sure that anyone who is here past this impassable water is safe. This is the second time that this particular truck has come back here on this road. Um, they're out making sure that everyone that is here in this community is going to be safe as possible. Now the truck is stopping right now. So guys, let me know if you need me to get out of the way for you so that you get off. Um, but again, we're in these neighborhoods right here. We're right on the water. And as you can see, these are some of the manufactured homes. We see that they're uh, getting off of the truck, getting prepared for this rescue. Um, this is one of those important things to remember that if you don't evacuate and you say, all right, well, I'm choosing to stay, you call 911. It's not going to be all that simple for any of the first responders and those rescue crews to get to you. There is a lot of elements out here. These roads are closed. There is uh, extra equipment that has to go into making sure that these rescues happen and this right here is just proof that is so the little technical difficulty there with yeah. the live shot but um, I mean what Jada was showing us we'll be with her and mm -hmm. maybe see some of those rescues it's what we're seeing in you know Hernando County as well and yeah, a and, lot of rescues happening. and I can imagine that they're probably having some Wi-Fi issues mm -hmm. um, and that's been happening throughout Pinellas County because again, they are just, you know, dealing with the, the, the power outages. They're dealing with um, all of the storm damage. So we're just waking up to all of it right now. So uh, we want to check back in in Pinellas County. Uh, I know that we just were in Tarpon Springs with Jada. We're actually going to check in with uh, Keely McCormick, who is also in Tarpon Springs. Keely, are you seeing any water receding on your end? Because again, it just depends on where you are, it looks like at this point. Heather, we are starting to see some of that water recede. I mean, there still is a lot of flooding here, but just about an hour and a half ago, this whole area was flooded. So you just can see now that water's been pulled back out. Even right here on this part of the sidewalk too, that was pretty high water a few hours ago. Now it's really starting to clear up over here. But as the water starts to recede, many business owners are starting to show up again to assess the damage. Many people are shocked, telling me this is the worst they've ever seen it. While others say they expected this. Many of these stores here in the sponge dock area will have some water damage. The water got higher than many of the sandbags, and I peeked into one of the restaurants and saw around three feet of water in there. But I also spoke to a man. He just opened up his business in Tarpon Springs last year. He tells me luckily his shop was OK, but this storm brings a lot of concerns for business owners. Take a listen. Kaylee, it doesn't look like we have your sound in right now. It doesn't look like we have your interview in if you want to. Oh, okay. It looks like we lost her. Yeah. Well, we didn't lose her shot, but we lost Keely, so we will get Tarpon her back. Springs, we might be having some issues in yeah, Tarpon Springs. Yeah. But now we do want to move uh, to Crystal River. Our Michael Paluska is there. It's under a mandatory evacuation order like a lot of places on the coast. Mike, I'm looking at some of the pictures you just sent into the newsroom and uh, a lot of flooding you're seeing. A lot and Lauren, I'll just zoom in real quick. This lady, I don't know if she was checking on her boat, but she was just all the way out by that boat to the right with her neck up into the water. That is where the sidewalk is. 
Uh, and you know the photos that we were showing you earlier, we've been going up and down this area. We were able to walk this for a couple of hours, um, you know, all morning. And then for the past, well, as, as soon as the, the hurricane made landfall, all of this water rushed in. There were some fence posts that you could see that were, were popping up. Uh, and all of those are gone. We're supposed to get that 7 to 11 feet of storm surge. I don't know what we're at now, but I do know the water has come up for at least 4 feet. And really the big concern now as we just come back on me to show you where we've been reporting all day is that we just hit low tide. Now we're hitting high tide that's going to go until 444, but it's going to add an additional 2.5 feet just, just already, just from high tide here. And we, we have no clue when the water from the storm is gonna stop pouring into here from the Gulf of Mexico behind me, then Kings Bay, then Crystal River, and then in through this canal system. So this is where we are. We've been posted up on the first floor. We're not sleeping on the first floor and we'll show you why. So this water is now coming in to where our room is, where we have all of our electronics, all of our camera gear. This just started right as we started going up into that high tide period. My photographer Reed Moeller, our door is right next to him. I don't think he has room to pan over, but it's about four feet uh, to, to where we are. So we're kind of in a crunch to just run everything upstairs, regroup, reset, and, uh, and, and let you guys see how high the water goes. There's a parking lot right up front and it's elevated, but really where we're at, it's like a horseshoe. So this whole area is surrounded by water. So the water's coming in here, the water's coming in back from behind, the water's coming in there, and then the parking lot's starting to flood. Uh, when I was on a short time ago, I would say maybe 45 minutes ago, there were all these wooden fence posts right here, and sorry, the humidity's fogging up our lens. There are all these fence posts right here that you could see, and now you can't see them. Electrical boxes that are on the ground and some of the water boxes and water grates that were on the ground They've floated up and now they've left these pitfalls, these dangerous areas where if you're walking in this, you could fall right down into a grate, which could be a sewer, could be an electrical box that's three feet or so underground. And then we're seeing weird stuff like big bubbles just pop up in the middle of Crystal River. We're at the plantation inn. We're about a mile from US 19. This is uh, a home that we've been watching all morning. We'll get Reed to zoom in if he can to this little cream house with these stairs. That's had water in it for the past two hours. We've been seeing water bubbling up underneath the surface of these homes in different spots where it's just finally getting in. So it's going underneath all of these homes and, it, and it's, it's kind of creepy, of course, and it's really surreal uh, how it's kind of attacking and going into each home. So we've heard loud booms from the boats that are banging around on docks. There's a huge buzz over there, which is an electrical box that I saw blinking earlier. And then we've seen all these fires. So, you know, electricity and water, as we said, they, they don't mix. So there's a concern about fires here. Crystal River, this entire section, uh, the entire city for that matter, is in zone A, evacuation zone, so flood zone. They sit at about four feet maybe on average. And the sheriff told me of Citrus County, they went through here for two, three days in a row and he said, people, you got to leave, you got to leave. I don't know how many people didn't leave, but the sheriff wasn't pleased with how many people are still back there. They're still back there and he, of course, he's going to rescue them. But if the water goes up 7, 11 feet, you know, he, he'll have to get boats in there. He, he can't get any of those big high water vehicles like we're seeing in Pasco County going into neighborhoods. So, I mean, there's a huge concern for all these people that stayed behind. And really, it's shocking to think that just with the tide, the, the king tide, we're going to have two and a half feet of water. So if I measure it, just go to this door real quick, if we have time, it's going to be around 444, just with the tide, to about right here, about two and a half feet right here. And then that goes right into the hallway of the hotel. We're at a higher part of the plantation in all the way down there in their restaurant, in their lobby area, they're already seeing water. Uh, so, so it's a bad situation all around. And uh, I, I think if people didn't want to evacuate because they, they didn't think this was going to happen or they didn't believe the forecast models, uh, it was wishful thinking. We've been reporting it. We've been hoping that it didn't get as bad as it did. Um, but as soon as Hurricane Idalia hit landfall and then the winds shifted, the water just came in. It was a surge. It wasn't like a beach surge where it's like a tsunami wall of water, but it came in and then it got faster, faster and faster. Alligators in this water. We just saw that lady, as I mentioned, walk out to that boat, which is terrifying. These are all electric poles and all the pitfalls that I had mentioned. So I think what I'll do is wrap it up. 
so that we can get our electronics uh, out, of the, out of the way. We've got all of our gear down here. We've been out here all night reporting, uh, and it is, it is weird and surreal when I was out here to see the water low and to think that in eight hours we'd be completely inundated, and, and that's exactly what happened, Lauren. All right, Paluska, thank you. And yeah, definitely go get that gear inside. We need that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and he brings up just such an important, you know, fact, which is do not go in the water. I mean, to hear that that woman was up to her neck in that water with electrical boxes, with gators, with, um, you know, all kinds of snakes, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just not safe. And also, you just don't know what kind of debris uh, mm -hmm. you could cut yourself on. And we've, we've been talking about this for the last couple of months. Vibrio is a real thing, and it we've seen more cases of it. Uh, lately, um, and that is an infection, a very serious infection that you could get if you go in waters like that. So, Stay out of the water. Yeah. A lot of bad things could happen. We do want to move now a little bit south to Pinellas County. Yeah, ABC Action News reporter Anthony Hill is Indian is in Indian Rocks Beach right now. Uh, Anthony, last time we checked with you, we lost your signal for a little bit there, but you are seeing flooding in that area, and it's uh, more than you've seen since you've been out there. Yeah, um, and as I said before, this is a very different Indian Rocks Beach than the one we were reporting in yesterday. As you guys saw in my last live hit, there was standing water in back of me. And actually, we've been driving up and down Gulf Boulevard just to survey the damage. And we've been noticing there are complete roads that are underwater, a lot of standing water. I mean, you can see the, degree, the debris on the ground, the, the palm fronds from that intense wind. I mean, we stayed here. Um, on uh, Indian Rocks Beach and last night, um, as anybody can attest to, the wind was extremely uh, intense. And so there's a lot of debris on the ground. Another thing we noticed is that there's a lot of access that's been closed. I mean, as you can see right now, this gate to this parking lot uh, is chained down and that's something we've noticed just kind of going up and down Gulf Boulevard. A lot of things are just closed down. In fact, uh, we tried to get down to Madeira Beach, but in order to do that, we have to leave this barrier island to get back onto the mainland part of Pinellas County. Well, while we were on the beach, we, you know, a law enforcement official pulled us over and said, you know, if, if you leave, we won't be able to let you back onto the uh, on, onto uh, Indian Rocks Beach. And in fact, he told us that goes for most of the barrier islands, which means that it's very important for you guys at home who are watching or listening on, by radio to know if you're trying to get to Indian Rocks Beach or Madeira Beach or most of these barrier islands, you may have some issues getting here because access has been cut off. But uh, we're going to continue to survey the damage um, and we'll get back to you guys with an update as soon as we have more information. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. All right, Anthony, thank you so much and stay safe out there. We're going to go over to Shay Ryan now, who is uh, tracking the latest on the storm. Yeah, and you can see that the uh, that Adelia has weakened considerably now uh, down to 90 mile per hour maximum sustained winds and still uh, moving to the north northeast at 20 miles per hour. So it is moving quite rapidly, which is excellent news because the faster it moves, uh, the uh, limited it limits the damage it can do as it's moving across that area. So again, we're continuing to watch more of an onshore flow and uh, it is the threat of storm surge and that flooding along our coast that will continue to be uh, our concern here in our area today as well as a continued threat of isolated brief tornadoes. We haven't seen any uh, tornado warnings in some time so that's good news and we'll continue watching for it but at this point in time uh, we are just seeing those rain bands which I'll get to in a moment but just wanted to show you the path real quick again I know a lot of folks were a little concerned that this might hook back around, but now the models are starting to be uh, pretty consistent and showing that although it may swerve a little bit out in the Atlantic, it is going to continue heading off to the east and then eventually the northeast. So again, we don't have to worry about it heading back in our direction. So again, we do have that tornado watch in effect uh, from Pinellas, Hillsborough and Polk County on north, and that is in effect until three o'clock this afternoon uh, because these outer rain bands that are coming in from uh, the lower portion of the storm now even still have some uh, possibility of spin. And so again, we'll watch for that. Otherwise, uh, the real uh, threatening part of the storm is still well to the north of us. We do have an onshore flow, which much like if you think about a lake effect snow or when we sometimes have a gulf in uh, enhanced uh, rain showers after a frontal system will move through. We're seeing something similar here where you get that west wind behind this system and that is 
is going to continue to drive rain showers into our area, not just today behind the system, but also there's a possibility of it uh, over the next day or two. So again, we're watching here as we look a little bit closer. Uh, we're seeing some of those heavier bands of rain moving through parts of uh, northern Pinellas County around North Clearwater Beach and Honeymoon Island. We've got some very heavy rain across 41 there north of Lutes into uh, Pasco County. And then to the south as well, right around Ruskin and uh, on the southern side of the Skyway Bridge across I-4 as you're headed out toward Lakeland and then into uh, Kissimmee and Orlando. We've got some heavier pockets of rain. Again, most of these are not thunderstorms. It's just heavy pockets of rain. So uh, I'm not seeing a ton of lightning so far in this vantage point, but we've certainly heard plenty of rumbles of thunder and we've seen plenty of lightning as we move through the morning. And uh, we do have heavier rain here south of Fort Meade at the moment, as well as more rain that's going to be heavy moving on shore to Sarasota's uh, beaches. As far as the rest of the day goes, expect that we'll get breaks in the clouds, even some sunshine coming through from time to time, which may spark off a few more thunderstorms, uh, but the coverage of rain is going to come down, so we'll get down to about 40-50%, uh, so we will get some drier hours in the mix now that we're on the southern side of the system, and we're starting to see some drier air mix in, but because of that strong west to east flow, we will still get chances for rain throughout the rest of uh, more than likely the rest of the day. So we've got a southwest flow. So winds coming in right now from the southwest and moving to the northeast uh, with just a little bit of variation here as you move north of Tampa Bay. The wind speeds are sustained right now between 15 to 25 miles per hour. So much more reasonable than uh, what we had been seeing at one point in time. And our gusts are still quite noticeable. We've got a 44 mile per hour gust here in Tampa just recently, certainly not as bad as it is uh, farther to the north. Gainesville right now with 47 mile per hour gusts in Tallahassee reporting 84. So there's still significant wind across the state around that system, of course. And our current wind gusts across uh, Tampa Bay are ranging anywhere from the 20 mile per hour range to the mid 40s. We'll s continue to see conditions and the wind speeds come down. Most of the higher wind speeds are going to come along with those bands of rain that move through. So the forecast for the winds today look like they're going to come up and down a little bit here until about three o'clock or so, and then they'll steadily start to come down as we move through the remainder of the afternoon once we get through those outer rain bands. So we will also notice that the temps are going to vary as the rain showers move through. We don't really get into the 90s today, so it's not going to be one of our hot and steamy afternoons, but we will see some breaks, some sunshine coming through and we'll warm up into the upper 80s to just about 90 degrees as the peak. But as the rain moves through, we'll cool down uh, quickly again. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Shay. So we've seen a lot of the major flooding, and right now we're starting to see all of the rescue efforts that are underway, especially along the coastal areas. Yeah, Jada Williams was in is in Tarpon Springs. She was following along with the National Guard. She was on one of those high water vehicles. Jada, you've uh, you're no longer on that vehicle, but you did get a firsthand look at some of the rescue efforts that they were doing um, in, in in what looked like a mobile home park. Yeah, that's right. Exactly where I'm standing right here is where that vehicle stopped. It's actually just a little bit down doing a little more rescue that way. But earlier when they came through, this is what they responded to. Now, right here, there was a call for two of these mobile homes out here that had caught fire. They brought out the fire rescue here in Tarpon Springs. That's because the regular fire truck couldn't make it down all of these roads. There are multiple stretches of the road to get to this community that have been flooded and those trucks just couldn't make it over. So that vehicle that is part of the National Guard was able to carry them down here. They just came back to pick up those firefighters and do a little more work here. But again, take a look at this. These uh, homes are absolutely destroyed. Now the tree above is scorched from that fire and this is just an important reminder that when there is a mandatory evacuation in order that's 
it makes it even harder for the people that who are the first responders. They don't have the easy access. They can't hop in that fire truck and just go down the road. It's really tough for them as well. But luckily there is help and this help has been deployed pretty quickly. Now that truck that I was on earlier, if you were watching, it's able to drive through up to 30 inches of water. So what's really important is that it was able to pick up those first responders, those firefighters, bring them back here to be able to put out this fire. Now, as I mentioned, they are just a little bit down the road. They're still in this community. They will be going around all of Tarpon Springs, any area that is really tough to get to rescue missions, uh, any calls for service to make sure that everyone is safe and, and everyone is accounted for here during the storm. And it is very important work, very tough work that they're doing. Um, so we'll continue to be out here. We'll hop back on the truck in a little bit, see where they're headed to next. And we'll have the latest for you in a little bit. I'll send it back to you for now, though. All right. Thank you so much, Jada. And we're going to check in with James Tully, who is on Clearwater Beach. Now, uh, something that is interesting is I was just looking at the radar. It does look like maybe some bands are about to come through or have come through. Uh, you're seeing some clouds out there. Uh, and I know that that high tide was supposed to happen around 1115. 1115. Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, Heather, uh, that's right. We are approaching high tide. The good news is the water's receding on both the beach side and right here next to Clearwater Bay. Let's give you a look at what things, um, well, what, we, what we're seeing right now. If you've been watching our coverage, uh, we've been with you about every hour. Last time we looked at this street, it was completely flooded. So you see it's improving quite a bit. I'd even call it passable at this point. The sun's peeking through right now. That can hurt things. I'm also noticing wind direction probably helping matters too. You see the water still cresting over the seawall there, uh, but it's pulling back quite a bit. And, you know, with high tide right around the corner here, that's certainly a good sign. Uh, you know, talking to Clearwater Police, a lot of good stuff coming from them. They've had to make no rescues. They feel like a lot of people uh, follow the evacuation orders. And that's a good thing. I mean, we saw over six feet of storm surge come through this area you know, over overnight. And uh, the sheriff, uh, Pinellas County Sheriff, even warning us that the worst may be yet to come. I can't speak for too many other parts of Clearwater Beach besides where we are here on Hamden Street uh, by 3rd Street and also Coronado, which runs parallel to it. Uh, things are pretty bad there, but they're improving quite a bit. Um, and police also telling me that for the most part, this was one of the worst areas in Clearwater. So it's certainly good to know. But still, folks, beach access is uh, restricted until further notice. So don't try and go to the beach and uh, you just kind of have to sit tight. And the sheriff's saying for the most part, he thinks it's going to be three or four hours after high tide. So that's set for 11 o'clock, 1115 in that area. So it's going to be some time here until these most of these streets are passable. But for now, I, I got some good news to tell you, Heather. I mean, this is a, a big improvement and at a time when we we really wanted to see it. I'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, James. And we'll be watching Clearwater Beach very closely because mm -hmm. of that high tide time. And very important to note, you still cannot get on the beach, so don't try to do that. Honestly, it's probably going to be several more hours. We'll, of course, keep you updated when that reopens. Absolutely. We're going to get over now to Pinellas County. Mm -hmm. uh, we were checking with Anthony Hill just a little bit ago. He's been driving around. He has seen some flooding, other areas that aren't flooded, but now he is actually on Indian Rocks Beach. Anthony, what are you seeing out there? or what's left of Indian Rocks Beach. I mean, if you can call it that. And the reason why I say that is because as you can see, the water literally comes up. We're at the entrance of the beach. The water has literally risen to the point where it comes up to the entrance of the beach. Yesterday when we were here, there was some distance between where we are right now and where the water started. I also want to point you guys um, to your attention, the damage that we see. I mean, there's a bench here. How did this get here? We're not, where it came from, we're not sure, but this bench literally got picked up and moved across the beach. There's also another, well, we can talk about this first, but we talk about that. Um, this is the level to where the water got to. So, I mean, we have reason to believe that maybe the water is receding uh, because the water came all the way to where this bridge is. I do want to show you guys the last bench though, because I think this is pretty impressive. The bench over there that is literally submerged in the water. How did that happen? Who knows? It's the fault of the hurricane. But I mean, it kind of is a testament of the power of Mother Nature. Um, but we're going to continue to look around again, as I said before, survey the damage. And when we have more information, we'll jump right back on the air and report about it. I'll send it back to you guys.
All right. All right. Thank you, Anthony. And we do want to pass along a quick update from St. Pete that we just got in. It's an 11 a.m. update from the city. Um, the Howard Franklin and Skyway bridges are still closed. However, the Gandhi is open, but the beaches are closed. Snell Isle Bridge and 40th Ave Bridge are also closed. And as of right now, they've seen four to five feet of storm surge around St. Pete. And we also have an uh, update from Citrus uh, County School will be closed tomorrow, Thursday, August 31st. We want to make sure uh, that we relay that message. We also have have a um, picture here of the Rivergate Tower. You can see again that band of rain and storms coming through. I was just looking at the radar. Shea had pulled it up and uh, it does look like we are about to see some storms roll through again. Um, it is just a band and this is something we've been seeing basically throughout the morning as this storm has uh, made its way out. And I mean, Rivergate Tower Camp Tampa does not look too friendly right now. So again, this is just another reason why if you can and you really should be able to at this point because everything is closed, just stay inside because even if you go out wandering, you're going to get hit with some rain at some point. And um, we do want to bring in meteorologist Shay Ryan in a moment because, you know, the storm may have moved past us, but we're still getting those outer bands. We're still getting a little bit of rain in some places. We've seen it in some of our reporters live shots. Um, and of course, we're still watching those the next tide for that water to unfortunately probably surge in. Yeah, and Shay, I mean, the interesting thing is to see, you know, James, um, who his high tide was supposed to happen um, right now, yeah. and he's seeing the water recede, but then, you know, we saw Katie Legrone mm -hmm. up in Hernando Beach, and right. um, that water is not receding at all. In fact, they're seeing quite the opposite. Yeah, and, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of variation up and down the coastline. We've got about two to three hours between tides. Um, of when you move up and down the coast and you go around the bay. So there's a lot of variation. And uh, of course, there's also a lot of variation in how that water is going to move around different depths. And uh, so again, we've got that stronger west flow. The center of the system is well to the north and inland. So we're no longer getting the push of the storm. We're really looking at high tide in addition to a strong west wind pushing that water against our coastline. So again, it will be enhanced as we're coming up to those high tides, which are going to occur over the next couple of hours. We have some that are as late as about two o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, so as we're approaching that and we're watching those uh, tides starting to come up, uh, just naturally what we'll also be looking for is to see if there will be any additional uh, push from this westerly flow. And you can see how uh, fast these storms and uh, the rainfall is moving uh, behind this system, or I should say on the south side of Adelia now, and it's just rushing through, but we've got a lot of breaks in those rain bands. We're not really seeing any thunderstorms at this point, uh, but we still will have a chance for that as the sunshine comes through. That'll help to just uh, add a little energy and we could see more thunderstorms as we get into the afternoon and get a little more daytime heating in there. But at this point, we do have very heavy pockets of rain uh, right around Riverview just to the south and then across uh, the Waimama area uh, down 75. That's where we're getting some heavy rain still in northern uh, Pinellas County around Tarpon Springs and then extending back uh, toward the northern section of Clearwater Beach. The rest of Clearwater Beach is looking pretty dry and then you head uh, down the coast and you see a little more just light to moderate rain. So again, we've got a lot of variation in uh, dry spots to really heavy rain across the area and we'll continue to see this uh, throughout the rest of the day with that uh, on shore flow, allowing more of that Gulf moisture to just move inland and give us those hit or miss uh, batches of rain all throughout the day. So the varying amounts of coverage are going to be anywhere around 40 to 50% uh, all the way through the day. And even into tonight, we'll still have chances for rain with the winds uh, being fairly strong. The gusts are going to really taper off later this afternoon. I'd say anytime after about three, four o'clock, we'll start to notice that the winds are dying down and we're not getting those gusts into the 30 and 40 mile per hour range but it still may be a little breezy out there and we may have some uh, breezes tomorrow as well. Right now, the sustained winds have come down to about 15 to 25 miles per hour. So again, it's still an onshore flow, which is helping to push that water from the Gulf of Mexico against our coastline, not nearly to the extreme uh, that we had earlier when the storm was moving along the coast and that low pressure was helping to push the water. But again, it is still uh, somewhat of, a, uh, of an influence on our tides for sure. 84 mile per hour uh, wind gusts now reported in Tallahassee. 
47 in uh, Gainesville and you can also see how the wind direction is opposite. So that is where the, we know the storm, the center of the storm is going right in between those two cities when you see the wind direction uh, going uh, in different directions in between two areas. Uh, right here in Tampa, of course, we've got that southwesterly to westerly flow 44 mile per hour maximum uh, gust here in the last half hour as well. And then we've got wind gusts also in the upper 40s around Jacksonville. And we'll continue to see those gusty winds as uh, the storm continues to make its way into uh, through Georgia and into the South Carolina coast here uh, through the next several hours and uh, then off into the Atlantic by tomorrow. Uh, the current wind gusts across the area are looking actually a little improved from the last time uh, we looked. Most of the 40s are still are to the north now around I-4 or to the north. So uh, we're seeing a little less of that, although Mayaka City now 43 mile per hour gusts as well as Arcadia. Uh, but we'll continue to watch those wind gusts come down as we move through the afternoon and into the early evening. We're looking at wind speeds that are going to come down around 10 to 15 miles per hour. So really very reasonable at that point and certainly nothing that would be uh, damaging. But our chance for showers and storms continues right past sunset and even uh, past 10, 11 o'clock tonight. Uh, we will see more sunshine and lower coverage of rain over the next several days. So we will have some improving weather there. But uh, Again, we are looking much better now and we'll continue to at least see uh, some improving weather here over the next several hours. But we're watching for those high tides. Of course, that's the last of our concerns. Lauren. All right. Thank you, Shay. We want to move back now to Pinellas County. And again, we're closely watching that storm surge and that second tide. Hey, ABC Action News reporter Keely McCormick is in Tarpon Springs. She has been there all morning long. And Ke Keely, you are seeing some of the water recede, although there is still a concern for flooding and a lot of folks um, that own business businesses down there have not yet been able to get to their businesses because of that flooding. Heather, that's right, and the street is still very much flooded, but it's a big difference from even just an hour ago that we're seeing right now. You can differentiate the sidewalk between the roadway now, which is a big difference. We've been here since about 1.30 this morning. When we first showed up, it looked dry for the most part, and then throughout the day we really saw a lot of flooding, and it's good to kind of see that pushing back now, but people are showing up, still trying to see their businesses and see the damage that's inside. Some tell me they expected bad flooding. Others were pretty surprised to see how bad it got earlier today. But many of the stores in the sponge dock area will have some water damage. The water got higher than many sandbags and it I did peek into one of the restaurants today and did see a lot of water that had spilled into that front room there. I also spoke to one man who just opened up his business in Tarpon Springs last year. He tells me luckily his shop was OK, but the storm did bring in a lot of concern for business owners. Well, definitely anytime you have a storm, this is a low lying area. Uh, it's prone to flooding. Uh, we've seen worse than than this, but this is pretty bad. And as more people come out to check their businesses right now, I do want to warn you to be really careful. I mean, there is still a lot of water right here. This is one of the shallower parts behind me on this corner here where there's a lot of businesses. The water is still pretty high. There's a lot of debris in the water. We've been here since really early in the morning. I've seen flower plants. I've seen signs and you really can't see all that from the top of the water. So just be really careful. Wait till the water goes down a little bit more before you get in there and check the damage and check your businesses. Reporting live in Tarpon Springs, I'm Keely McCormick, ABC Action News. Keely, thank you. Important note there that I think every official is saying, all of our reporters are saying, just don't get in the water. You do not know what could be in that water. All right, we want to go now to Bayshore Boulevard. Our Larissa Scott is there live. So Larissa, at this point, I mean, the last time we came to you, the water was receding a bit, saw a lot of debris in the area. What are you seeing right now? Well, still the same situation, Lauren. Um, the water has receded since we last talked to you. Check out this debris here. We could not stand here about two hours ago. This was all covered with water. You can see all this debris coming in uh, from the bay. The bay brought all this water in. But, I mean, yeah, it's receded some. But, I mean, Bayshore Boulevard is still very flooded. Um, you know, we've been telling you that we've talked to people who've lived here for 40 years, um, and they have not seen it this bad. 
um, in the entire time that they have been here. Um, we still have police officers patrolling this area, keeping people out of the water. Um, we have seen some people walking through the water and it was waist deep for them, you know, obviously would not recommend that for people to do. But, um, you know, the big question now, high tide, how high will this water go? Will it will it start to go back up again? You know, that's what everyone here is watching, business owners and homeowners. You know, we've had them come out and put more sandbags out to protect their homes in case, um, you know, the water gets higher again. And the bay still looks pretty angry out there. We're still getting some of those waves coming in over the seawall onto Bayshore Boulevard. And, you know, it is, you know, in, in many parts, just completely underwater and impassable, not safe for people to drive through. So, you know, we'll, of course, continue to monitor the situation here. Good news is that the water is receding some, you know, but just not very quickly yet. So we'll continue to keep you updated with what's happening out here. I'm live in Bayshore. Back to you. Thank you, Larissa. Definitely not at the point where you want to drive on Bayshore. And now we want to take a live look at from the Hyatt Regency Clearwater camera. You see Clearwater is it's angry. Clearwater Beach is angry right now. You see, I mean, a lot of the white caps, high surf, really dark clouds. I think we were looking at a band maybe coming through that area. So, I mean, this is picture evidence of that. Yeah, and look how far the water the water comes up. I mean, usually Clearwater Beach is one of the beaches that has a lot of sand in the area for that folks to sand. sit. That yeah. beautiful sand, yeah, and it is just being taken over by the water right now. So, we are still seeing, uh, you know, that water again, not necessarily flooding uh, because we're checking in with James Tully right now who is on Clearwater Beach and has been there all morning and and he has been reassuring us that it looks like it is going out but we are still seeing some issues, um, you know, in terms of the high of the high water. And we didn't see a lot of people on the beach. I don't mm -hmm. think we saw anyone which was good. All right, James, what are you seeing from your vantage point? Yeah, good morning, uh, Heather and Lauren. We just want to take a look at that camera myself. Yes, it, the water is certainly much higher than we're used to seeing, but the key word is it's improving. Uh, and so as that improves, all the surge that we've seen, the, the six plus feet of it that at one point early this morning we saw, it, it's all improving. And as we are now past high tide, that's all just the best news we can possibly report right now. Below me, next to Clearwater Bay here, is Hamden Street. Uh, first time. We've seen somebody out here even venture out. They can actually walk across the street. This, of course, was all flooded out. Uh, the, the, the water in, the, in Clearwater Bay here is a very strange green color. You know, it just got churned up so much overnight. Uh, it just don't see that too often either, like, like an aquamarine almost, uh, very unusual. Also keep an eye on those, on those rain bands you guys had mentioned were heading our way. You know, the sky's got uh, pretty dark, a little ominous uh, earlier, but we still haven't seen much rain here in the last couple of hours. So. You know, uh, echoing what uh, Clearwater Police said, you know, that is that, um, you know, they told us, our crew here that, I, that I'm with, uh, you guys can get out, but you're not going to be able to get back in. Uh, that's better than what they were saying, you know, six, seven, eight hours ago. So a lot of roads are becoming more and more passable, but still beach access restricted today until further notice. And it's going to be a good three or four hours from now when we see the water fully recede and these streets get back to normal and you can really truly safely drive your way through clear water so that is really the latest from here guys uh, but yeah take a look at the look at the camera there from our Hyatt Clearwater camera at the beach yeah it's it's a it's rough surf out there for sure and uh, what we saw early this morning late last night into early this morning even now just not something that uh, has been seen here very often at all certainly not in the last uh, last couple of decades for sure so a uh, very unusual morning, but things beginning to slowly return to normal, and that is a very nice thing to see. I'll send it back to you. All right, thanks, James. And a quick note while we're still while we're still in Clearwater, I'm just looking at a video Clearwater Police tweeted out, and it looks like South Gulf View Boulevard on Clearwater Beach is uh, under a lot of water right now. So just be aware um, if you by any chance live in that area, don't think you're about to get on South Gulf View Boulevard anytime soon. All right, quick update now on some local school closures just coming into our newsroom. Citrus County Schools will be closed tomorrow. Hillsborough County Schools says they're still deciding whether to cancel classes tomorrow at this point. They tell us a decision on that will come later in the afternoon and we'll of course keep you updated right here on air and uh, push alert from our ABC Action News mobile app.
And I'm sure it will have something to do with whether or not we're seeing storm surge in Hillsborough County and whether buses are going to be able to get to and from schools. You know, storm surge has just been a major problem. It's also been a major problem in Oldsmar. Um, ABC Action News reporter JJ Burton is out there now with a look at the conditions. JJ, what are you seeing? Hey, I'm JJ Burton here in Oldsmar. We are at Jack Willie's restaurant here on St. Petersburg Drive, which the road here is closed because of the water is up here. You're Austin Smith with the restaurant here. Yeah. This is the northern end of the bay here. Yes, but it's looking yeah. like the beginning of the bay. Yeah, it does look like the beginning. This morning about 530 was uh, about probably two feet deep out in the parking lot. When you got here this morning, sort of walk us through what it looked like. Uh, well, it looked like a lake. It looked like this was out there to the center of the parking lot. The dumpster was just floating. Um, we anticipated it, so yesterday we brought everything in high and dry up so nothing would get damaged with minimal damage inside. But have you, and how long have you worked here? Have you seen it this high before? Uh, I've been here about a year, but it's a couple years ago it was pretty high. Not as bad as this, but with the super tide, it's been a lot worse this time. And you live, you've been, you've worked here for about a year, but you've been here oh, yeah, probably been in, longer. Oh, yeah, County about eight years. Yeah. Seeing how high this crazy. is, are you surprised by this or are you like, okay, we're anticipating? No, it's Florida. Yeah, anticipate it. It's it's Florida. It, you know, it's the weather. And we were down near Shore uh, Drive yesterday, and we saw that. And, and now today, it's literally again a part of the bay. Yes, it always gets like that. And I feel sorry for the people that live over there because they get two, three feet of water in their house at a time. And it's it's it's, it's a lot going on here. So you guys are gonna be close today. Uh, we will be close today. We should be able to reopen tomorrow. The two o'clock tide this afternoon might be a little challenging. Okay. We're expecting it to come back up and probably get another foot of water, but. After we clean up, be back in business. All right, cool, cool. Again, this is the story here again. It's the storm surge that everyone's dealing with. The wind has died down for now. It's not raining right now, but it's on and off rain and a lot of wind. A lot of people dealing with flooding here in Oldsmar, especially along Shore Drive. The bay is right there. And then we're here on St. Petersburg, which is about two blocks away. Again, this is what they're dealing with flooding. And you see that right out there beside us. So we'll be here all day reporting in Oldsmar. I'm JJ Burton, ABC Action News. JJ, thank you. And this is the video I was talking about right before JJ's story there. This is video from Clearwater Police Department. It is of South Gulf View Boulevard that's on Clearwater Beach. And you can clearly see there is a lot of water. You can barely see the lines on the road. So this is an area that is currently flooded. You will not be able to drive through. Meanwhile, I mean, you can't even get onto the beach anyway. But if you are on the beach right now, uh, just know South Gulf View Boulevard is flooded at this point. All right, so right now rescue efforts are underway for a lot of sections of the Tampa Bay area. Yeah, Jada Williams, we've been checking in with her in Tarpon Springs all morning long. She spent the morning following the National Guard through a flooded neighborhood. She was in a mobile home park. Uh, you had brought us an update on the two mobile homes that had caught fire that they weren't able to get access to right away. Uh, any updates, any any further updates on those? And, and was everybody OK in that? Did those folks um, leave those mobile homes? So actually, Heather, right now we're not sure about that. Um, what's going on is the trucks are coming in and they are uh, just making sure that everything is OK right now. They help the firefighters here in Tarpon Springs put out the fire to that house. Um, this water over here, you can see that these roads are flooding with this water. It's not safe to go by this vehicle that we're in right now is actually something that is used in situations like this so that it is possible for uh, first responders and any type of people who are rescuing and doing these missions can safely get in, get through that very high water. We actually just stopped. This is the end of the second time that the truck has come through. So the crew that's on here right now, they're about to get off, but this isn't the uh, last stop for them. Of course, this is a situation where there are so many people in so many parts of this community that are going to need some help. This is the important work that's happening right now. But as I continue to say, this is an important reminder that if you guys are if you if you are under that mandatory evacuation this is why it is so important that you evac evacuate but also if you're seeing this and you're saying it's not raining in my neighborhood it's totally fine i can drive through this water just don't chance it we have the true professionals who are out here and you could end up being one of those people that they have to rescue and they already have a lot of work on their plates that's why it is so incredibly important right now that you stay at home don't hit these roads just wait until it's safe let the men and women who i'm here with right 
now and continue to do their jobs. If they do their jobs quickly, safely, efficiently, it just makes it a lot easier for everyone here. Now I am going to send it back to you guys because they're ready to get off of this truck now. They have a lot of work ahead of them. So uh, back to you guys in the studio. All right, Jada, thank you. Yes, they're doing very important work and we thank all of them for the work that they're doing. So we want to move now to Bradenton. Our Kyla McGivern has been kind of bopping around. She was at the Cortez Bridge earlier. Now she's at Where's Creek, which is Kylie, a historic neighborhood. Uh, what's it look like there right now? It is. So Where's Creek comes off of the Manatee River. This is an area that is prone to flooding. This is just one example of a spot that is blocked up. Why? We're going to show you. So when you look down this area, just a few minutes ago, we saw some people returning home, had stayed with family members that live in the houses right along here. Uh, Randy, I don't know if you can see out here, the ducks are right in the where cars would typically be driving through. And this is why it's so important when you are heading out today, which hopefully you don't have to, but there is an easy way for all of the areas that we cannot be mymanatee.gov slash road closures. That will show you these areas that are blocked off. But earlier today, the Cortez Bridge, that is blocked off. Bridge going to Anna Maria Island. Keep this in mind, and we are still not quite at high tide. So as people are driving around, officials are really encouraging you not to do that. When you look at this, it may not look that deep, but a few minutes ago, we saw a truck where the water was just below the hood as it was driving through. That's how you get stuck. That's how it creates a dangerous situation. So as you guys said, we are kind of bopping around this area in Manatee County to show you. We will show you what we can so you don't have to go out and put yourself in a dangerous situation. We're reporting live back to you guys. All right, Kylie, thank you. And a quick note to pass along here. Uh, Polk County is actually sending assistance to the north. They're sending um, an emergency self-contained rescue team to help in Levy County. So we're already seeing other parts of Florida really helping the areas that have gotten hit very hard by this storm. And we're going to move now to South Pinellas County. ABC Action News reporter Anthony Hill has been in Indian Rocks Beach. He was on the beach. Anthony, are you still there? No, you're along Gulf Boulevard. Tell us what you're seeing out there uh, in terms of flooding. Yeah, as you said, we're on the same island, different location. Uh, we were driving on Gulf Boulevard uh, surveying the area and we stopped because we noticed this. We thought this was truly impressive again, just to the what Mother Nature can do. I mean, what you're looking at right now is essentially an observational deck. It's, it's suspended above water usually. People can go on and look out over the water and enjoy themselves and, you know, have a fair distance between where they are in the water. That would not be the situation right now. As you can see, it is completely covered with water. And this observational uh, dock or deck rather is connected to a wall that's meant to keep the water from spilling over. Well, the water is spilling over. You can see it right now. And this is ground level right here where the street is right in back of us. Um, also wanted to bring to your attention again um, earlier, about uh, 45 minutes or so ago, we were trying to get down to Madeira Beach and because we're on a barrier island, we have to take a bridge to get back onto the mainland part of Pinellas County. So we're on the bridge and a police officer essentially, you know, stops us to tell us, hey, listen, if you leave, uh, if you leave Indian Rocks Beach, this island, we won't be able to let you get back on. And in fact, he said that's the case for most, if not all of the barrier islands, including Madeira Beach. So if you were planning on coming to any of the barrier, barrier islands, I'm, I'm imagining St. Pete Beach again, Madeira Beach here, Indian Rocks Beach. Just keep in mind that you may have some issues getting on due to um, lack of access. Again, we're going to stay here. We're going to keep surveying uh, the situation. And as soon as we have more developments, we're going to get back on on air live, but I'm going to send it back to you guys in the studio. All right. Thank you, Anthony. We do want to show you now some images that are coming into our newsroom from whether they're viewers or our team out in the elements right now. All right. So this is in Hernando Beach. These photos from Hernando County Fire Rescue. You see a home on fire and some major flooding in that area. And we have some pictures here from our reporter Katie Legrone. 
and some some more flooding of course that's that's been the story out there and rescues happening in Hernando Beach that's what she's been working she's basically been working with the National Guard yep. as well as the Hernando County Fire Rescue uh, assisting in these rescues the, um, she was speaking with the Hernando County Fire Rescue captain who was saying in his 20 plus years of working with that fire rescue uh, he hasn't seen anything like this and at some point they had to actually pull their equipment back because they couldn't get to certain areas so uh, she'll be with them through the duration working to uh, get to these rescues and really working to see what people are dealing with at their homes right now but we do want to now move to Bayshore Boulevard that's where we've seen a lot of flooding since very very early this morning our Larissa Scott has been out there live all morning Larissa what are you seeing right now Well, we've got something new to show you. We have several people out on Bayshore in the water. Um, you can see it's deeper in different parts. You know, when you get over to where the sidewalk is, maybe it's about knee high, other parts waist deep. Obviously, um, you know, this is not encouraged to do, but we've had some large crowds come, come check this out and people have been in and out of the water here pretty much all morning. Um, you know, want to remind you not encouraged to do this because, well, you just never know what's underneath all that water. We've had, you know, all these these waves wash in from the bay for the past several hours overnight, you know, all into the morning. We've been dealing with this, this flooding here, um, this water coming in and, and you just don't know what has come in with that water. So, you know, don't recommend that people are doing this, but here they are, they're out here. Um, running in this. Um, but, you know, just to show you in terms of how much the bay has receded some, clearly Bayshore still continues to be flooded and, and likely will be for some time. But if, if you check this out, Jason, if you could pan this way, where that Tampa police car is, is where the water was a few hours ago, and it has receded now back to here. And, and again, uh, just for a locator, we're near Swan and Magnolia off of Bayshore Boulevard in Tampa. So we are definitely still seeing the water recede, which is good. Even we had a, a heavy band of rain come through here not too long ago, and, and that didn't really, you know, do anything for the water level. So for those homeowners who are still watching for the high tide and worried about what could happen to their home and their businesses here along Bayshore and near Bayshore, they're, of course, still watching that closely. Like I said, we've had some people come and put some extra sandbags in front of their doors to try to keep water out if that's the case, but we'll keep monitoring this for you all morning long. Back to you. Larissa, a quick question for you. Have you been able to talk to any anybody out there, any officials um, about whether we're seeing flooding in homes? Because I was able to see a video. Now, this is from South Tampa, so I'm not sure how close that is to where you are along Bayshore Boulevard. Uh, but we were seeing some um, flooding in what looks to be um, streets and getting into homes as well. It looks like a pretty bad situation out there. So we've, I've been able to personally talk to about six different police officers who've been out here patrolling all throughout the night and this morning. And they have told me that they've not been able to safely um, kind of look to see the extent of the damage. So we don't have the specifics on that, but they did tell us that they do expect there to be some water damage, especially to the homes that are facing right on Bayshore Boulevard where the water is. Yeah, that makes sense. And I know that you haven't really been able to move yourself because it has been so bad out there. Uh, so yeah, stay safe, Larissa. Thank you so much for that update. All right, we do want to move now to Pinellas County. We are again closely watching that storm surge and that second tide. ABC Action News reporter Keely McCormick is in Tarpon Springs. Keely, you've been out there. You've seen the water receding. Folks are starting to come out, look at their businesses. Uh, but like we just said, that it could still come back up and get worse. Heather, that's right, but right now things are looking really good, a lot better than a few hours ago. You can stand on the sidewalk without my feet being soaked in water right now. Let me show you where the water was just a few hours ago. It came up to about right here on our tires here, and that went all across from this sidewalk, across the roadway, covered that sidewalk, and you couldn't even see the seawall a few hours ago. So I think that's a really good sign that we can see that now, these boats here, they're starting to come down a little further into the water. The river is still high, there's no doubt. There's still water on the roadway, on the sidewalks, but 
things are looking a lot better than they did a few hours ago. Now, as people are starting to see the water recede, they are starting to come out and check on their businesses right where we are now. This is probably the best situation for flooding. If you go down the corner, the water is still pretty high. It'll go up probably to someone's knees. So I do want to warn you, be careful. Maybe wait a few more hours. Wait till the end of the day, maybe tomorrow until you do go back and check um, on your business. A few hours ago, we did see some people pulling their shorts up, wading through the water. We saw a few people on their canoes going through it. You know, it was really a river here before. So canoeing through the water, but there's a lot of debris in there. You never know what you could run into. So definitely just play it safe. Stay out of the water for now. All right. just Seems like we're having a, a little bit of an issue with the Tarpon Springs service, but we do want to show you this drone video. This is from ABC News, and this is an aerial video of Treasure Island today. You can just, I mean, that is uh, uh, incredible flooding, incredible and not in a good way. You see those people biking through, so you can see really how high the water is there. Uh, it looks like I believe this was uh, a reporter was standing right there. That mm -hmm. wasn't, um, uh, you know, a resident. But you see all of the flooding in that street. And again, this is Treasure Island. This is new video. Thankfully, not seeing any cars on the road here. People trying to get through because um, obviously you will not be able to drive in that and nor should you try. But now we want to uh, send it on over to meteorologist Shay Ryan because Shay, some areas are still experiencing those outer bands. We need to talk about that mm -hmm. second high tide. So yeah. take it away. Yeah, I wanted to show you. So we've already been through the first high tide, which of course occurred overnight. And that was as the storm was approaching and uh, moving past us here in the Gulf. And now that the storm is well off to our north and inland, we're waiting for that second high tide. And it does vary from one spot to another. So around Sarasota, it comes at 1215. Uh, but around St. Pete, it's not until just before two o'clock. Ballast Point around 212 and then Bayport 212 as well and uh, around Crystal River at 247. So you can see that there is a lot of variation depending on where you're at along the coastline. And of course, there's lots of little spots in between uh, across the area. Of course, we're talking about Oldsmar is around 324 to 325 in the afternoon. Uh, so we do have plenty of time here before we're reaching high tide. So in a lot of cases, the tides are rising right now. We've got that west wind and uh, that flow coming in. But overall, it sounds like from our reporters that we are seeing improvement across the area or at least much of the area and uh, you can see where the storm is at now it's weakened considerably but it does still have a very well-defined eye and uh, circulation that looks like a tropical system so uh, last check it was around 90 mile per hour maximum sustained wind so it is weakening as it's moving inland but still quite a force and we do still have some very heavy downpours some of them coming around the west chase area and then extending north into uh, Lutz and across 41 and then we've still got rainfall that is coming across uh, northern Pinellas County, just south of Tarpon Springs and across northern uh, parts of uh, what is this Clearwater Beach and the Honeymoon Islands. So very similar to the last time we were looking on the map. Those rain bands are just uh, training right along the same area. And that is quite common. This isn't anything unusual. And the good news is we haven't seen any tornado warnings in quite some time. That's also something that's common with these uh, rain bands, but we haven't been seeing the spin that we saw earlier this morning. And we uh, do still have a tornado watch until three o'clock. But again, things have been very quiet in that regard uh, over the last couple of hours. Uh, we do still have some heavy pockets of rain in Polk County as well, south of Haines City and north of Frostproof. We also have some here south of Bartow. And then heading into Manatee and Sarasota counties, we've got a nice big batch of heavy rain. I'm not seeing a lot of lightning uh, right now. So as we continue through the heat of the day, I do think there'll be a greater chance that we will see with the breaks in the clouds and some sunshine, the return of some thunderstorms. And the coverage is going to come down, uh, not dramatically, but now that we're seeing just rain bands and not consistent rain, we've only got about 50% coverage. So we'll range somewhere around 40 to 50% coverage as we move through the day. What we're seeing is behind this system, we're getting almost like a lake effect, but of course it's the Gulf of Mexico. So we're getting like a Gulf of Mexico enhanced rainfall. And we'll continue to see that as long as we've got these strong west winds on the southern side of the system. So we're 
we're continuing to pick up that Gulf moisture and just bring it around. So 90 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. It is moving north northeast at 20 miles per hour, racing off to the north northeast. And uh, so that is great news. The faster the storm moves, the faster it moves out of the way and uh, the less damage it can uh, cause in its path. And it is still a cat one hurricane working its way out into the Savannah, Georgia area, eventually working out uh, close to Myrtle Beach and then off into the Atlantic where it will work its way off to the southeast and then curve back to the north. So again, it is taking quite an interesting curve curved path, but the bottom line is by Thursday it'll be back out over open water. Now, uh, as far as the winds go in our area, 15 to 25 mile per hour sustained winds. This is similar to the last time we checked in. I'm not seeing any big changes there. And the same goes with the wind gusts. Not a big change from the last time we looked, which was probably about mm, maybe 20 minutes ago. So uh, we'll continue to see some improvement, but it looks like it's going to be gradual. We're actually seeing higher wind gusts along the coast right now, uh, more than likely because of those rain bands that are moving on shore in that area right now. And uh, that's why we're getting those stronger gusts around Bradenton and Sarasota. So there will be some variation in the wind speeds and the gusts from time to time as those rain bands move through. But overall, we will see improvement as we get into the afternoon and uh, certainly into the early evening. You can see the sustained winds will be coming down to about 10 miles per hour. Uh, so overall, we'll see the temps vary somewhere in the low to mid 80s throughout the rest of the day and into tonight as the rain showers move in and out. We get a little sunshine that'll help to heat us up, but we're not going to get into one of those really hot and steamy days ahead. And we will have decent chances for rain even over the next couple of days. So we're making some progress with that big deficit in the uh, severe drought that we've been in along the coast. This is definitely uh, helping us out there. We just didn't need the flooding to go along with it. And of course, that's what we're going to continue watching. That is the biggest threat that we continue to have for damage along our coastline here over the next several hours. Heather. All right, Shay, we'll check back in with you in just a little bit. Thank you. And we have Jackie Calloway joining our uh, coverage this morning. She's going to be over at the University of Tampa. Jackie, I know that's along the Hillsborough River. Are you seeing any flooding from that? Because obviously a little closer to Bayshore, that is where we're seeing a lot of the flooding in Larissa's live shots. Uh, are you seeing that along the Hillsborough River? Hey, good morning, everyone. Well, for those of you who are familiar with the UT campus or you've spent any time on the boardwalk, this is just a site that I've never actually seen. There's no difference between where the UT campus begins and where Riverwalk starts. Hillsborough River has overrun its banks by probably 50 feet, if not more at this point. You can see the benches out there that are for the most part underwater. The water comes all the way up to the bench. There's trash cans that are submerged. The seawall that you can normally see that differentiates from where the campus ends and the water begins, that's completely gone. And if you look across the way, I know it's a distance away, you'll see Riverwalk. You can see some people walking along Riverwalk. Look how close the water is to the sidewalk of Riverwalk. And as you've been hearing from us for hours now, um, this isn't high tide yet. We're not going to see high tide until this afternoon but yet we're already seeing this kind of surge and this much water cross over barriers, cross over banks. Just look at the trees, for instance, how uh, if you look at the trees that are about 30 feet in the distance, how high the water comes up on those trees. We were talking to some UT students who kind of wandered out to, to see what was going on this morning and to see how the campus fared overnight. And they said they've never seen anything like this. Some of them actually went out and sat at the benches in the water, which we do not recommend. I mean, we've been told over and over, if you don't know how deep the water is, don't drive in it, don't step in it, because you just don't know what's underneath the water or how deep that water goes. Of course, we're gonna be keeping an eye on things. The only damage we've really seen out here is as we were driving down Ashley, we were driving um, by the, the Tampa Museum and by the Straw Center, a lot of downed branches, a lot of downed limbs, uh, but for the most part, as far as damage goes, 
Uh, nothing, nothing really too concerning, nothing really too serious. Just a lot of flooding um, in this area downtown in the entire Riverwalk area. And of course, we're going to be driving around. We're going to be keeping an eye on things as the high tide uh, continues to build for the next few hours and let you know how it's looking in this area. Back to you. All right, Jackie, thank you. And where Jackie is on the UT campus, right across the river is the Riverwalk. So like Curtis Hickson Park is right there. And we were looking at some pictures from the city of Tampa about an hour and a half ago. And the part of the Riverwalk that actually goes under the bridge that you could see in the back of Jackie's shot right there, that was completely underwater. So there's a lot of flooding on the Riverwalk. Granted, it may have receded slightly, but uh, today is not the day to take a Riverwalk stroll. Let's just say that. Let's, uh, let's leave it alone for a while. Yeah, we'll avoid that yeah. area for sure. Uh, we're going to check in now with James Tully. He's on Clearwater Beach. Now, James, we were looking at Gulf Boulevard. We had seen some video from there uh, where they were experiencing flooding. But from your vantage point, things are getting better. A lot better, Heather, for sure. I mean, what a night it was for Coronado Drive. I got to take that line from our own Sean Daly, who's helping us out this morning. This, a couple hours ago, was a river with a current. Now, it's just dare I say, some ponding. And this is good because this is actually an accelerated timeline from what Pinellas County officials told us. Uh, high tide hit about 11.15. Uh, you know, we're flirting with it, I guess, an hour past that. Uh, easy to lose track of time when you've been doing this for 12 straight hours. But um, this, is, uh, this is a great sign. Uh, water's receding for sure. Uh, over here, we've been showing you uh, shots of Clearwater Bay. Uh, as you can see, this is um, these are passable roads, guys. And this was, according to Clearwater Police, one of the worst sections uh, when it came to flooding from the storm surge we saw last night. Storm surge in excess of six and a half feet. And so, you know, we were able to give you uh, a vantage point of what that looks like when the surge is over six feet in Clearwater. And it wasn't good. Uh, almost all of Clearwater was underwater at, at one point, and that. That was really something. But, you know, the great news is that most people heeded the warnings. Police didn't have to do any rescues. We know of very minimal power outages around here. So all really good stuff. And again, the timeline accelerated from what officials said. I mean, we were told four to five hours after high tide. Uh, you see what it looks like now. And uh, the beach there, I, I should point this out. The beach, there, Mike, uh, one block this way. That's the beach. That's where the majority of the surge was coming from, obviously. So this is a great sign as you look down 2nd Street that uh, is, is improving really by the minute. So uh, lots, of, um, lots of improvement here. That's what we want to see. Do want to reiterate beach access is still restricted until further notice. So until Pinellas County lets us know that beach access is, is still available, uh, it is restricted. Don't know why you want to go out there. You guys showed us the Hyatt Clearwater cam uh, a few moments ago, a couple minutes ago, and uh, it's 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 still rough out there for sure. But this is this is nice to see this water receding. And um, you know, not just my crew that I'm with has done an excellent job tonight, but anybody else who may be vacationing and wants to get out of here should be able to do so very shortly. All right, thanks, James. Live for us in Clearwater Beach. We do want to move south now to our Kyla McGivern. She's been in Bradenton for the past few hours. She's now in Wares Creek. It's that historic neighborhood. So, Kylie, what's happening there right now? Yes, we've moved to a bit of a different area. A lot of different roads blocked off because of flooding. What we want to show you, this may not look like much just as you're driving by, but see these chairs here? Those are on a dock. All of that is underwater. Our photojournalist Randy Wright, if you go a little bit further over, it's the seawall that almost looks like a sidewalk right now. Behind that, that's a road. All of this water creeping into closer and closer to some of these homes along the water where now there's not a road. There's not anything really separating the water from seeping into these surrounding communities. To give you a bit of an idea, if you're not in Manatee County, you don't know really where this is at. We're very close to downtown Bradenton. You can see some of those bigger buildings over there. So as you are going around again. Do not go around unless you absolutely have to. But if you're looking to see road closures, you don't want to get stuck somewhere. MyManatee.org slash road closures. Of course, we're keeping you updated here on ABC Action News as well. You know, we checked in with some emergency officials 
We heard of one rescue off of a sailboat uh, later last night overnight, but in this area compared to other areas in the Tampa Bay region, we're not hearing of, of different water rescues at this point. Um, it sounds like people heeded those evacuation warnings or they were, you know, basically took their chances and were able to stay safe. Right now it's people just assessing what's going on. And again, we keep reminding people while things may seem calm, we have not hit high tide yet. We're talking maybe the next hour or so. So conditions in terms of the water coming up higher, we're not there yet. So we will continue checking in with you all. We're going to drive around to some different spots to give you different perspectives. But for now, we'll send it back to you. All right, Kylie, thank you. And like she said, I mean, it just depends on where you are and it depends on when that high tide moves in. Uh, some places are seeing that water recede. Other places are not. Uh, moving back to Tampa now, we've been showing you all of that flooding on Bayshore Boulevard basically all morning this morning. Yeah, and our Robert Boyd is reporting now from the Davis Islands Bridge. Well, this is Robert Boyd in downtown Tampa. Right now, I'm standing on the bridge that connects Bayshore Boulevard onto Davis Island. As you can see behind me, not many cars whatsoever. That's because this bridge has been closed down uh, to most drivers. They don't want anybody going onto Davis Island unless it's an absolute necessity. And of course, what is a necessity? Medical care. So as you can see, what is open is the ramp to Tampa General Hospital. So if you need to get to the hospital, that is still open. Otherwise, as of uh, this afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, uh, don't try to come to Davis Island. Island. It is being closed, obviously taking every safety precaution necessary following this storm. This is Robert Floyd in Tampa. No, where Robert is, I just got a viewer picture of Davis Islands, and uh, yes, there is a lot of water there. So I'm sure there is. It yeah. is you know, portioned off for a reason. And that's that's really been the story. We've just been seeing the bay. Um, you know, the, the the bay water was basically just being pushed north. Mm -hmm. And so you're seeing it on all sides of the bay, yeah. which would include Davis Islands yeah. as well. And we want to go now to Port Ritchie. Mary O'Connell is down there. Uh, Mary, just tell us the conditions that you're seeing. You had uh, spoke with some officials out there. You are seeing flooding. Is it receding at all in that area? Well, it has receded a little bit, probably over the last hour or so that we've been here, two hours. But what the concern is, is about 1230 is when high tide is for here. So they expect that water to come back. I can tell you we're in Port Ritchie off Bay Boulevard. There's a neighborhood here behind me and it is just inundated with water. It goes about a mile, uh, 1.3 miles back to Harbor Point. I'll step out of the way so you can kind of see there are uh, different utility trucks that are going on back there. It's not as if everywhere you are in the back neighborhoods there are just you know, waist deep in water. It's more ankle deep on the roads, but there are spots that are three to four feet deep. So there are people who are in their homes, you, you know, they're out in their driveways kind of um, cleaning up. You could see where the water line was at one point, and it all kind of runs into different channels that are now overflowing as well. So we actually took about a half hour to be on a, um, a, a Hummer with the Port Ritchie police who took us back to kind of see what they are dealing with. It is a lot of water for these folks. Um, we spoke to the Port Ritchie police chief also this morning who said that they are just, you know, waiting for calls for anyone that needs to um, needs help getting out of the area. Obviously, some of these cars are a little bit taller. Um, we've also seen some smaller cars trying to drive through this water, which is absolutely not recommended. They're actually blocking this road. There's a barricade now way down the way, so people shouldn't be able to drive here unless unless you live here. They're actually asking people to just walk. Um, and, and that's also, you know, the, something that we're not recommending either. Um, we're told that a lot of people were chose chose to ride out and not leave, you know, this storm. So there were um, airboats that were out here. We've seen just people with their own UTVs that are out asking, hey, does anyone else need to be rescued? Is anyone stranded? Because this is a lot of water and it's going to take a long time, you know, for it all to recede. We saw some photos from one gentleman who is on a UTV who is building a home back here. He showed us some photos of water over a bus bench. So that's just how tall and high that water got. Um, it's receded quite a bit. Uh, earlier it was just down this road, so there was water where we're standing, but we do expect with that high tide for the water to come back. We're going to be monitoring this. We're actually going to go um, send some video back so you can see what the neighborhood looks like back there, and then uh, we'll be back with an update. 
Mary, just a quick sure. question for you, if you can ask them, um, even maybe your photo, because they were able to zoom in. What what were they carrying across the water there? What, what, what was that? Let's let me step out of the way again. If uh, my photographer can zoom in, maybe he might be able to see what they were carrying. Richard, you tell me if you see anything we see. The, there's a car blocking his view right now, but there are people that are walking. You can see some uh, UTVs in the distance, uh, more people walking. They're probably in about ankle deep or a little bit higher water right there. Um, gosh, there are some there are some spots back there, though, that is at, at one point earlier today. They said it was probably, you know, above your knee. Uh, that's how deep it was. And you could just see and a lot of these not all of these homes are on stilts either. So you could see the water line on homes. We actually spoke to an officer. He doesn't live in this neighborhood in particular, but he's with Port Ritchie Police. He said he had three feet of water in his home. He still had to come into work, obviously, because he's got a job to do. Uh, but he he fears that he lost everything, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and we know there was another officer that we were out with this morning. He said the same thing. He said that they likely lost everything, but they're still out here uh, trying to help people and help protect their community. That's, you know, what what everybody's here for right now. So we saw some more utility vehicles go back there. Um, not sure what they were carrying, but hopefully you got a little bit of a view back there. Mary, thank you. And we have to give a big shout out to those emergency responders to hear that they themselves lost everything, could have lost yeah. everything, and they're still um, helping the people who are flooded in their homes right now. Uh, it's, it's really to be commended. Absolutely. We do want to move now uh, to Pinellas County to Reddington Beach. That's where Anthony Hill is. Yeah, and Anthony, you just got to that area. You've really been driving around all over the place. What are you seeing out there? We have been, I mean, pretty much all up and, up and down this barrier island. I'm pretty sure you guys can see in back of me, again, what we've been reporting uh, pretty much all this morning, standing water to this magnitude. And I mean, this is what we've been seeing in the different towns we've been in. Standing water going as far back as you can see. We're, even Town Hall apparently is on the other side. I also want to tell you this, um, about five minutes ago, we saw a pretty big vehicle, kind of military-like. We believe that they were like a rescue crew. We're not sure, but what else would they be, right? Uh, driving through this body of water. So, I mean, we believe that they were either assisting or, or helping someone. Uh, another thing we want to mention is how driving up and down the boulevard, everything is closed. Everything is closed, is closed including gas stations, stores, uh, windows are boarded up. I mean, a lot of these towns on this barrier island are essentially ghost towns. Um, nobody here. Now, you do see people here and there walking, observing. Um, I don't know if we can see. There's a lady right across the street right there. I mean, she was uh, kind of cleaning up some debris earlier. And so you see that people coming out surveying what damage they may or may not have. Um, but other than that, I mean, this is pretty much a ghost town. You see a car uh, every now and then. But um, yeah, and as I said before in the last live hit, if you were planning on coming to any of the barrier islands, you may want to think twice because we try to go to Madeira Beach and where we are, we have to take a bridge to get back onto the mainland part of Pinellas County. When we we're trying to do that, a police officer told us, you're going, if we let you off, we're not going to let you back on. So they're not letting access back onto many of the barrier islands. This is Madeira Beach. This is where we are right now, Indian Rocks Beach, potentially St. Pete Beach. So just keep that in mind if, if, you're, if you're home watching us or however you're, you're hearing us that you may have issues uh, getting onto the barrier islands. Again, we're gonna continue to travel around and drive up and down the boulevard and, and survey the damage and we'll be back on air live with the latest. I'll send it back to you guys. Anthony, thank you. And of course, you know, rescue vehicles are doing that, or, or, or I should say uh, officials are doing that because rescue vehicles uh, are coming out to the beach. Uh, they're searching for people who need help. But then on top of all that, they have to make sure that it is safe for people to return back to their residence. So that, you know, that could be down power lines. Again, that could be flooded streets. That could be an array of things. So they have to make sure it is safe before they can give the green light and say, all right, you can come back. So if you evacuated it, I mean, don't think you're going to get back like right now. You know, we'll, yeah. we'll give you the all clear when we uh, hear about the bridges and the access being available again. We do want to stay in Pinellas County now because again, all up and down Pinellas County, really all up and down the coast, we are watching that storm surge and we are watching for that second tide. Right. And Keely McCormick, she's been in Tarpon Springs basically all morning long. Uh, you know, she's seen, she's seen the flooding it was uh, I want to say even 
maybe waist deep, not, probably not waist deep, but it was pretty close to waist deep at one point in the middle of the night. It has certainly receded from that, uh, but you're still waiting to see if that high tide is going to have any impact on on the uh, water. Heather, that's right, and it was waist deep in certain parts of this street in the earlier morning hours, and this whole section was flooded. Now it's starting to dry up. We're still seeing some water here in the street and on the other side of the sidewalk, but an important note here is you can see that seawall again. That was an issue this morning. The river, the sidewalk, the roadway, it was all just covered in water just a few hours ago when we couldn't even see that seawall. Now the sun's starting to come up. People are actually out on walks. We've seen some people riding their bikes on the dry portion of the sidewalk. But like you mentioned, Heather, I say all this with high tide in mind. We do know that's coming. And another thing that you want to keep in mind is if you are in Tarpon Springs, not all areas are perfect in time to go for a bike ride and a walk right where I'm standing right now. Yes, it's great. But just down the road here, I mean, that's still knee deep water. That's because that's a little bit of a dip in the roadway there. So that filled up with water and you're going to see that all along those roadways here. So you definitely want to be careful. There are a lot of people that are coming out to assess the damage, taking photos to see what's happened, but it's definitely not a safe situation yet. Um, so be cautious as you're coming out and as you're checking the damage. And I would suggest just staying in for a few more hours and we'll keep you updated on when things are clear, when things are looking good. So for now, I'm reporting live in Tarpon Springs, Keely McCormick. ABC Action News. All right, Keely, thank you. And as we take a live look outside from the Rivergate Tower cam uh, and bring in meteorologist Shay Ryan, Shay, I noticed two things. Number one, that camera was shaking when uh -huh. we went to it. And uh, yeah. number two, it looks like we're getting one of those outer bands still in Tampa. Those clouds look nasty. Yeah, it does. Uh, quite a few of our vantage points are looking pretty nasty. And you do notice uh, with our cameras that it calms down for a little bit, then it starts shaking again. And uh, so we are, again, still seeing those bands rolling through and we have varying conditions based on the band. So right now, as we're looking across the area, we've got uh, partly sunny skies being reported in St. Pete and Tampa. We've got a little sunshine coming through the clouds, 85 degrees, uh, both in Tampa as well as in St. Pete. And you can see the winds are so much higher than what they normally are that the um, that they don't even really show up on the map properly. It's about southwest at about 17 miles per hour, and that's why it's showing up and looking so funny. And the same with here, southwest at about 20. But our gusts have still been in that 30 to 40 mile per hour range. We've got some rain around Sarasota, a bit heavier there uh, than in Lakeland, but temps are a little lower where we're seeing the rainfall. And you can see that it is a lot more widespread. There is a batch of rain that is light to moderate that's rolling across uh, well to the south of us outside of our area, but we're still getting a couple of those areas with very heavy downpours. I was just checking and I haven't seen any lightning in uh, in quite some time on the radar. And so I checked and kind of scanned the whole uh, radar in the central Florida. Not one strike of lightning in the last half hour. So things are really calming down in the atmosphere. But if we get more breaks in the clouds and more sunshine coming through, that could fire things up again. We may see a few more thunderstorms, but I think overall Overall, that's helping to tamp down that uh, possibility of seeing more spin in the atmosphere and also uh, seeing more of those isolated tornado warnings that we had seen so much of earlier this morning. Now we're continuing to watch uh, Idel. Adelia continued I'm still everybody's struggling, including me, of course, with the uh, pronunciation of our hurricane, even though it's been plenty of time and plenty of practice saying it uh, continuing to work its way north northeast across uh, Georgia now, and it is speeding just racing across, which is great news because it limits how much damage it can occur, how much rainfall we can uh, accumulate in any given area. We are still getting those rain bands just going over the same area because the storm is is not moving north, it's moving more northeast. We're not seeing these rain bands lifting northward. They're just training along that same line. So again, we are going to see a lot of the same areas getting rainfall over and over again, and the spots that are getting breaks are going to get more breaks. But in general, we are seeing rainfall totals across the area to be highest in a couple of spots, and it's uh, to the south. We can see that one band here that ha uh, that's been going through uh, DeSoto and Hardy counties, bringing some areas about seven inches of rain.
substantial. We were looking at about uh, four to six inches is what we were expecting in the area and then locally higher. And that's about what we've gotten. So we do have plenty of places where you're seeing the light blue. That's somewhere around an inch to an inch and a half. And you can see uh, areas in purple are about two inches. And then when you get into those deep purples and the reds, that's where you're getting into that three to four inch range and anything uh, that's in that red to yellow is somewhere around six to seven or so. Uh, so again, we do have some decent rainfall totals. We really needed the rain, especially closer to the coastline. We just didn't need the flooding, right? And uh, as far as that storm surge flooding is concerned, we are on our way up. We're watching the tides increase right now, but we are not seeing the water levels coming up dramatically. In fact, we're seeing uh, that the uh, tides are starting to recede. So this is good news that we may have reached some of our highest tide levels during low tide. Again, we're continuing to monitor it because we haven't completely gotten to high tide yet. But again, we do still have an onshore flow and uh, we're still seeing rain showers moving on shore. We will continue to see this west to east flow and uh, more showers driving across the state here, not just today, but also over the next couple of days. We get that west to east pattern typically in the summertime and it allows that chance for rain to move from the Gulf on shore and it's being enhanced now, of course, because of uh, the hurricane. But we'll continue to see a very similar pattern even after uh, Idalia is long gone. So right now we're still getting those uh, outer rain bands from the southern side of the system. Uh, but as we look at the future cast, you can see how into tonight after sunset, we still get some of that onshore flow and more scattered uh, showers will develop tomorrow. So it'll be hit or miss. And as the daytime heating kicks in, we get a nice round of showers and uh, maybe a couple of isolated storms in the afternoon and the Onshore flow continues into Friday. The coverage isn't going to be as great as what we have seen through the hurricane, but uh, we are going to continue to see that west to east flow. And you can see how churned up the waters are in the Gulf right now and how rough the water is out there. Another reminder that we just stay clear of the beaches for now until we get the all clear from the officials and they've been able to check over things and make sure that we don't have power lines in the water and uh, so on, as you've been hearing our reporters uh, tell us. So uh, as you're planning ahead for today, we do have quite a bit of cloud cover. We will get some sun sunshine coming through and as that happens, it'll heat up a bit and we'll get into the mid 80s for highs. And then as the rain showers come back through, we will see the temps drop back down. The same with the wind speeds. They're going to vary. We're getting gusts still in the 30 to 40 mile per hour range, but after about three, four o'clock, we'll start to notice uh, them declining pretty quickly. And after sunset, we'll be back to breezy conditions and we may even have some winds picking up from time to time tomorrow but it's not going to be as extreme as what we've experienced today. Uh, so basically from here on out, conditions continue to improve uh, with our fingers crossed that we're not gonna see any changes with the storm surge. And I think we're getting to the point where it's starting to become unlikely that we will. Well, that is a piece of good news. All right, thank you, Shay. We want to go now to St. Pete. Our Vanessa Ariza was in the Vinoy St. Pete Pier area yesterday. Uh, Vanessa, so what is it like in the downtown area this morning? Yeah, hey to you, Lauren. We are in front of Frescoes. A lot of people enjoy this waterfront bar right now, restaurant right now. They can't. Uh, we spoke with uh, an employee or owner trying to find out manager's exact title, but uh, we spoke with him. He's here on the property. And while it doesn't look the best right now, he said they actually boarded it up rather well. So not a lot of water got inside. So that's good news. If you're a fan of Frescoes, you're thinking, oh my gosh, what happened to my neighborhood restaurant bar? We're told for the most part it is okay. But earlier this morning, guys, around 9 o'clock, photographer Allison Shaw, she came out this morning. And I want to go ahead, if you can go ahead and toss to that video so we can give viewers a look at what it looked like in front of Frescoes around 9 o'clock this morning. Severe flooding in this area. There were uh, cars that were parked here overnight. They're actually still sitting here. And the water has receded right now, but... Hours ago, that was a different story. That water up to their bumper, up to the top of their tire. Uh, so a lot of water that had come in this morning. Again, like I said, it has receded. We also had a chance to talk to uh, someone with the, uh, the boats over here. He and his family, they own the business. And he said, we were able to tie them down. Funny enough, he said, I've never really expertly known how to tie down a boat. I learned overnight into the early morning hours. The boats are fine. The water is receding. 
But this area, you can actually, you know, when you usually drive down to go to the pier, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that this morning around 9 o'clock because it was severely flooded. Uh, so it has gotten a little bit better out here, which is the good news. A lot of people out walking about uh, the rain. We, there's a little bit of a band between 9 and 10 o'clock this morning. That has since stopped. But very important here, uh, law enforcement, they are around this area and they say while it's not raining, while it is not severe uh, flooding anymore, there are still some puddles out there. I don't know if you can kind of see behind me, there's still a little bit of water and they don't want people to go out and walk around into these waters where you don't know what is in it. You know, it may be like, hey, it's only to my ankle. It's fine. You don't know what's underneath there. And I say that because there's an electric charging station out here for your electric vehicles. And a law enforcement officer was telling our photographer, Allison, earlier this morning that he wants people to stay away from it because it was sparking. So just another example of, I know we're all curious. We want to come see what the storm brought, what it left behind. But just to err on the side of caution, if you can try to refrain, especially going out into those waters because you don't know what is underneath it. So you may think, okay, it's not raining. It's just a little overcast. It's safe to go out not always the case. So please continue to stay safe out there. Uh, and I actually, when we were leaving our hotel, one of the uh, employees there said, I live over in Coquina Key and it is severely flooded in that area. She said, we don't even know if we're going to be able to get back there this evening. And she said, they do have uh, electricity, but as far as getting into her neighborhood, she says, that is not the case right now. So we wanted to give you a view of what the downtown St. Pete area looked like over close to the marina. We're also going to try to make it out over to Shore Acres, because as you know, if you live in that area, they get severe flooding. They get flooding on a sunny day. So you have a hurricane come in and bring all this water. So we're gonna to try to make it out there, but we wanted to give you a view of what St. Pete looks like right now. So for now, I'm gonna to toss it back to you guys. All right, thank you, Vanessa. Very good look there in the St. Pete Pier area. And uh, piggybacking off of what she was talking about, electric vehicles, um, HCSO actually put out a tweet not too long ago saying if you own a hybrid or electric vehicle that has come into contact with salt water because of the flooding within the last 24 hours, it's crucial to relocate the vehicle from your garage as soon as you can because salt water exposure can trigger combustion in those lithium ion batteries. They also said if possible, get that vehicle to higher ground. So be aware of that if you have a hybrid or electric vehicle. That is very, very good advice and probably something that most folks wouldn't even think about. It's so. some new technology that we have to yep. deal with in hurricanes, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So we uh, we are continuing to see flooding on the Bay, on Bayshore Boulevard. Larissa Scott has been live out there all morning long. Uh, Larissa, it does seem like it is getting a little bit better and you have seen folks uh, out there, which of course is not a good idea, but um, it, it does seem like it is receding slightly. Yeah, Heather, that's exactly right. We came to the other side of the street to give you a kind of a different vantage point now that we're able to more safely walk over this way. That now that the water is coming down a little bit. You know, as we've been telling you, Bayshore is still very much flooded, you know, not um, safe driving conditions for anyone. But, you know, you can see people are. Okay, it looks like we're we just lost Larissa's we shot. Not... Around. Yeah. I think we just lost Larissa's, uh, Larissa's shot. So we're going to go ahead. You have an update from TPA, right? Yeah, uh, Tampa International Airport just tweeted saying TPA to reopen to arriving flights only at 4 p.m. today. They sustained minimal damage from uh, the hurricane. Departing flights and normal operations will resume early Thursday morning. So check with your airline. But that is the latest update uh, just in from Tampa International Airport tweeting that moments ago. And I want to show you some video because we continue to get some incredible images from our crews in the field. And this is video from just north of us in Taylor County, that small community definitely seeing a lot of damage from Adalia. Our anchor Paula Grone and photojournalist Tim Jones were on the ground there. Uh, this looks like it was a little earlier. Obviously, um, look at the storm damage here. You can see the the, the winds were 100% a factor there. So we've been talking all morning how storm surge really was the issue for our area. But up in Taylor County, where uh, this uh, storm made landfall in Keaton Beach, uh, it went right through Perry, which is exactly where this crew was, Paula Grone and Tim Jones. And wind was really, really bad out there. So bad that they had to actually go into their hotel because the doors, the glass doors, could not handle the wind. Uh, and again, you can see here, 
that is what they were dealing with. It was really, really bad out there, although we were able to follow them through this entire process of seeing the eye go over Perry. And when that happened, uh, as soon as it started to pass, you know, Dennis and Greg were able to give the, the good news, which was that, you know, the worst of the storm had had gone. So uh, I, I, Paul, Paul did a fantastic job. Tim did a fantastic job up there. Uh, and they were speaking with folks who had left the Keaton Beach area, uh, you know, and, and surrounding areas um, because they wanted to, you know, seek higher ground, uh, seek a safer area. And um, they were also getting images um, of their houses out there. And most of them, it looked like their houses had fared pretty well, although there was one house in, in uh, I, I believe it was, uh, I'm forgetting the name of the city here, but uh, they they had, it looked like the roof had been completely taken off and you could see right into the bedroom and, and the up, upstairs area. So there is damage out there, 100% sure. Um, and I'm sure that Paula Grone and, uh, and Tim Jones will be heading out there to, to assess that as well when it's safe. That wind video is something we are mm -hmm. not getting around here. And it was, it was crazy to see because you usually look to the trees for the wind, but I was looking at the water being blown all over the place. All right, now let's uh, get back to our coverage here in the Tampa Bay area. We do want to check in with James Tully. He's out on Clearwater Beach and James, we're hearing rescues are happening there now too. Oh, good afternoon, Lauren. Yeah, I mean, it's not a really nice day here. It's it's raining, it's cloudy, uh, it's windy a little bit still, but that's OK because five hours ago, pretty much all of Clearwater was underwater and this is a nice sight to see. Uh, I've been coming on live with you guys, giving you uh, some pretty positive news of improvements, uh, with the exception of some side streets. As we take a look here at Bridgewater, uh, Michael, that's over here to my right. Uh, you see Bridgewater. There's still that's that's an impassable road. However, on the other side of me, Coronado Drive, looking great. Uh, this uh, road below me, right next to Clearwater Bay, is. Uh, all but completely receded. So it, again, great, great news. Uh, Clearwater police telling me that uh, no rescues, haven't had to do anything. Minimal power outages. Uh, I think a lot of people did the right thing and evacuated. We found out firsthand, you know, six and a half feet of storm surge, perhaps more. We'll get the final readings on that. I'm sure to get that, that data uh, in the coming days. But uh, yeah, we saw what it did here and it put the all of Clearwater pretty much under uh, six inches, sometimes, you know, a, and place a foot of water. I talked to a couple of uh, a, a couple of people who were vacationing here. Told me that they they took a step uh, about a m half mile down the street here and said it was two feet deep. So you know the water uh, sinking in there and that surge coming through. But uh, it's the sun's peeking through. That's nice to see too. Uh, things are looking really really good here. And I, I don't think myself and my crew, uh, Michael Brantley here on camera, Sean Daly field producing, Eric Moore, our chief photographer, surveying and doing all kinds of work for us. They're not going to be a problem getting out of here. And that's great news. Um, that goes for anybody else who, who needs to get out of here. Uh, but at the same time, proceed with caution. Some side streets still are full of water. Uh, but um, you know, high tide was a couple hours ago. Um, we thought at that point we would see more, uh, more flooding. Uh, we haven't. So all good stuff. Uh, the beach access still restricted. Stay away from the beach until further notice. But otherwise, things looking very good here. And it's, it's nice to come on and report that to you after the night that we had. I'll send it back to you guys. James, thank you. And just really quickly, um, I was I was trying to remember the name of that town. It's Steenhatchee, and that is where they saw some pretty major damage to homes in that area. And I'm looking at Florida 511, which gives you updates, uh, live updates on traffic uh, and closures. And in that area along US 19, there is a major incident, emergency vehicles on US 19 in both directions at Northeast 124th Avenue, all lanes closed. And again, that is probably because they have seen some pretty significant damage out there. And just another reason to not get on the roads right now. And as we're taking a live look at from the Mainsail Beach Inn, this is Anna Maria Island, and this picture is not something you see on the West Coast very often. I mean, this looks like an East Coast. This looks like the Atlantic Ocean. You see the waves crashing on Anna Maria Island. Usually this area is so calm, serene and peaceful, but uh, clear evidence that a storm has gone through and we're still, you know, waiting for that high tide and that the storm surge to potentially be an issue again. So now we are going to go to Madeira Beach or Anthony Hills. Uh, Hill has been kind of going around the Pinellas County area. Anthony, what are you seeing on Madeira right now? 
first, we finally got here. People have been watching and they've been watching for the past two hours. We've been talking about how we tried to get here and we had issues uh, with not being able to cross the bridge. Well, we found a way. We just kind of came down golf and turned this road, turned that road, and, and now we're here. But we are here at the Madeira Beach 9-11 uh, Memorial, which is partially underwater. I want to show you guys. Uh, this is part of it right here. Um, as you can see, there is a seawall and look how close the water level is to the seawall. There's supposed to be a difference there. Um, obviously, to your left, uh, those kids over there, they were playing in the water um, after the hurricane, kind of seeing uh, what's what's left and, and more bodies of water right here. If you look at this, this, this body right here, uh, again, this is the 9-11 Memorial here on Madeira Beach. Another thing that we want to point out, and this is about safety, uh, because we know that a lot of people are experiencing standing water where they live. Um, if you look at right in front of that, in front of you, that is an electrical box. Don't assume that you can just, because we saw some kids getting in the water, putting their feet, don't assume that that is the safest thing to do because um, water, electricity, you do the math. That's not a situation you want to be in. Another thing we noticed driving here uh, that I want to tell you, like I said before, we were going up and down a Gulf Boulevard through a lot of the, the towns on the coastal um, barrier islands. And we saw a picture from last night and the boulevard was completely inundated with water. And that makes sense because one of the things that we keep reporting is that we see so many of the roads that meet with the boulevard just inundated. So again, just wanted to bring that to you guys that it seems like the water is subsiding, but if you were on a lot of these barrier islands, a lot of the side roads will be inundated. Again, this was an evacuation, a mandatory evacuation zone. I said before how, you know, you drive through these towns and it kind of feels like a, a ghost town. There's a little bit more people here, but from uh, the other towns we were in, it felt like a ghost town. And it makes sense because it was a mandatory evacuation zone. It was uh, zone A and local officials were strongly urging people to at least get to a zone C or higher for their own safety and due to it looking like a ghost town I mean I guess that's proof that a lot of people heeded uh, to that warning which is a good thing we like people staying safe uh, we will continue to travel around and give you the latest updates from Pinellas County for now I'll send it back to you guys in the studio all right, thank you, Anthony. He was talking about those electrical boxes. Perfect reason to not go into the water. Also, Hernando County Sheriff put out a photo on Twitter saying they found a snake in the middle of flooded roads. So if we can't convince you with electricity, we'll try to convince you with the snakes. You don't want to accidentally step on that or oh, just please don't go in the water. Definitely not. And it looks also like parts of that road have caved in. We, I know we can't show you the pictures right now, but we'll work to get some of these pictures up for you so you can see if that is the case. That means that that water was just so incredibly strong uh, to, to be able to cave that road in. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, we want to move now to the Tampa area. We've seen a lot of flooding in the downtown Tampa area, Bayshore, the Riverwalk, that, that section. Yeah, our Jackie Calloway is out at University of Tampa and has a report for us now. Hey, everybody. Well, this is what it looks like on the campus of UT. There's no difference from where Hillsboro River starts and the campus ends. You can see the normal cement wall that usually is the blockage and delineates where the campus ends and the river starts, it's gone. It's underwater. Uh, we see uh, one young lady out here now who's trying to bicycle through this. That is not something we recommend. And look across the way at, at Riverwalk sidewalk itself over there. You can see how high the water is. It's just inches from actually overflowing its banks on the other side where Riverwalk actually is. We're taking a look at some trees now over here and you can see how high the water is on those trees over there and that really all there is out of the water um, are the actual limbs. And if you look over there at, at one of the wrought iron fences, how the fence is underwater, the garbage cans are underwater, the benches are underwater, and we are still you know, a couple of hours from high Counties tide, that so we don't know what the... Right now, you are listening storm. to Governor Ron DeSantis like giving Dixie, us an update Lee, on the Taylor, storm Swanee, here in Florida. Madison, Let's listen in live. In Columbia. Utility workers are actively working to restore power in all affected areas, and they have started doing that as soon as it was safe to do so. So those, those restoration efforts are ongoing. Uh, we do anticipate you could have um, that these power outage numbers could go higher, uh, but but the re restoration numbers are going to go higher as well. All eight uh, urban search and rescue teams uh, are 
uh, deployed. Uh, our National Guard uh, has folks uh, in places like Taylor County. Uh, they're getting on scene there to do things like clear uh, major pieces of the roads and, and get debris that, is, that has been uh, knocked around. So there's a lot of moving parts there, kind of at ground zero. So we've got a, a National Guard unit there. General Haas is going to talk more about that. A Coast Guard uh, is active, including with rotary wing assets. Florida Fish and Wildlife uh, has both boats and vehicles in route to the affected areas. And Florida Department of Transportation has been conducting cut and toss operations starting at the southern part of the state as the storm moved through southwest Florida, uh, clearing those roads and then moving all the way up north. And so they are en route to clear all the way up to Taylor County. Uh, right now, Tampa Airport is going to reopen for incoming flights at 4 p.m. Uh, by 3 a.m. tomorrow will be fully reopened. Gainesville Airport will reopen tonight and Tallahassee Airport will reopen first thing in the morning. Uh, the ports in Tampa and Manatee are currently undergoing assessments and when those assessments are concluded, uh, they will be able uh, to resume operations assuming all is well, which we anticipate it will be. There are, as of now, no confirmed fatalities uh, and those fatalities are uh, things that get a, a confirmed by the Florida Department of Law Enforcement through medical examiners. We do not have any uh, confirmed fatalities yet. Uh, if you have any questions about how things are unfolding in your area, you can go to floridadisaster.org for updates. The Florida Division of Emergency Management will continue uh, to update uh, that website with all the latest information. We, we have a really good uh, retail in terms of all the counties, I think, other than the, the Big Bend proper, uh, the Tampa Bay area, I think things are good. Um, Leon County is, is, is doing well. Uh, we're still assessing what is all going on on the ground in the places that had the, the initial impact. And so we're probably going to be, you know, I'm probably going to try to get down to some of those counties today. Uh, but we've got a lot of people that are going in, uh, offering assistance uh, from the state perspective, helping these, uh, these counties be able to, to stabilize the situation. So for more updates on this, I'm going to bring up Kevin Guthrie from the Florida Division of Emergency Management. All right. Thank you, Governor. Uh, so far right now, the, the biggest impacted area that we have following up on what the governor said is uh, seems to be in Perry. Um, right now, we know we have a, a couple of businesses that have caught on fire. Um, a few that have roofs knocked off of them, maybe maybe potentially one collapse. We're getting um, some conflicting information on that. But we do have crews that are there working hand in hand with Taylor County Sheriff's Office and Taylor County Fire Rescue. So uh, that's going on. Madison County is another county that has been uh, impacted. Um, they have a lot of debris on the ground. <clears throat> they have about 99% power outages in that particular county. So again, we do have resources heading in that direction. Again, I'll let General Haas talk about that. He's got one of his uh, task forces heading in that direction as well. So uh, other than that very specific detail, we continue to uh, search, secure, and stabilize areas that we can do that in. Uh, most of what we're doing here in the Big Bend, Big Bend area is initial search. Um, I will say this, uh, I know we don't have anybody from the uh, CFO's office here, but in, uh, in search and rescue uh, in Fort Myers, we were able to clear a lot of houses very quickly because of the uh, footprint of Fort Myers. Up here in the Big Bend, you may have two houses that are on a five mile road. So that is going to take a very long time to clear those. Now we have more than enough assets, more than enough resources to get that done in a timely manner. But I just want to go ahead and set expectations. Some of this is going to take longer than what we experienced with initial search and rescue in Fort Myers, just again because of the the landscape. We're going to have to do a lot of uh, tree cutting and a lot of uh, push emergency access to get into those areas to then do the securing and stabilizing. But we are working through all of that. We have maintained communications with all of our counties. We did have a couple of 911 centers that went down briefly uh, for about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, but again, all 911 calls have been answered. Uh, there are some minor backlogs in uh, Taylor County and Madison County. 
that, uh, again, local officials are working through, and then we are supplementing those resources to help them get through those calls as quickly as possible. Um, I will reiterate uh, that even though there we have 911 calls, there is no one in distress that has not been taken care of. The ones that were in distress, we got folks to immediately. We have a lot of people that have called 911 saying, I'm, I'm entrapped in my house, I'm okay, but I need help. So uh, they are 100% okay. We're gonna get to those uh, folks just as fast as we can get our emergency access teams into them. The state emergency response team will continue to work around the clock uh, to meet the needs of all the survivors, support our first responders, and initiate an efficient, reco uh, efficient recovery process to communities impacted by Hurricane Adelia. We are actively working with our law enforcement partners to, con to continue to conduct search and stabilize, as I've already mentioned. Uh, we have a recovery team that's already uh, in the EOC. We, uh, here at the Division of Emergency Management, we activate our recovery team the exact same time that we activate our response team. So our recovery team has already been working for several days getting ready for this. They are uh, already conducting windshield assessments throughout the state of Florida. We will go into the next um, phase of this will be individual damage assessments, where the, or I'm sorry, in, initial damage assessments, where those are done at the local county level in a little more detail to get numbers that will then roll up with us. We already have uh, FEMA that is uh, standing by ready to do what we call joint damage assessments. So they have teams here already ready to go for that. So um, you're gonna see a very, very quick response on the recovery side of the house to do uh, individual damage assessments and what's also referred to as public assistance damage assessments. That's where we check uh, public infrastructure, uh, city, county buildings, things of that nature. So again, all of that stuff will be unfolding most likely as soon as tomorrow uh, so that we could get the recovery process uh, jump started here in the state of Florida. As always, we could not do that without the leadership of the governor and uh, the, the uh, objectives that he sets for. So again, governor, thank you so much. Okay, general. <clears throat> Good morning and thank you, governor, for your leadership and support of your Florida National Guard. Director Guthrie, thank you again for the great work your team is doing to protect Florida citizens. As we continue to assess the damage uh, landfall caused across the state of Florida, our thoughts and prayers remain with the impacted, uh, impacted, uh, the impact of the storm on the folks. Uh, Florida National Guard is fully mobilized with approximately 5,500 soldiers and airmen supporting hurricane response efforts. Post landfall, uh, uh, guard elements have been uh, providing support to our state and local partners with mission sets, including uh, reconnaissance, uh, search and rescue, damage assessment, and route reconnaissance operations. Our 53rd Infantry Brigade Combat Team is heavily engaged in Florida's western coastal counties, uh, primarily conducting ground search and rescue and route clearance operations. In fact, Florida's, uh, Florida Guardsmen are conducting high water vehicle rescues in Hernando and Taylor counties. Likewise, our 164th ADA Brigade is conducting similar missions throughout our central and northeast counties. We maintain uh, additional immediate response forces available to rapidly uh, reinforce our presence and capabilities in areas with, the, with greatest need, like Taylor County. Uh, we are embedded with uh, each of our impacted county emergency operations centers and remain ready to provide support as requested. Uh, as briefed earlier, the Florida National Guard is currently has uh, 2,400 vehicles, including high water and high uh, mobility vehicles, 40, 14 rotary wing aircraft conducting planned um, urban search and rescue operations this afternoon, and 23 small watercraft on hand to support riverine operations as needed. Additionally, Florida is receiving assistance from other state national guards. We are expecting two truck companies, one from South Carolina and the other from Tennessee, and we're also preparing to receive three UH-60 helicopters from Kentucky. As at the same time, Maryland, Tennessee, and Colorado are standing by to in case we need additional air assets. We remain grateful to our fellow Guard states for their assistance and support. Your Florida National Guard is prepared to accomplish any mission required by the Florida Department of Emergency Management, and we stand ready to support our state, fellow citizens, and our neighbors in need. Thank you. All right, thank you, Governor DeSantis, for your continued leadership. Thank you, Director Guthrie, for your continued partnership as we respond to this event.
And we want to welcome you back to our continuing coverage now of what is still Hurricane Adalia for Jamison Euler and Wendy Ryan here. We want to welcome you back into our coverage here. You were just listening there uh, to an update from the EOC and Governor DeSantis right now. They say there's no confirmed fatalities at this point. They've been going through their 911 calls and they're now working through the recovery efforts in the Big Bend area. They were saying Taylor County, Madison County, Leon County, a lot of uh, down trees, a lot of power outages there, so they're working to get through all of that. We also heard Tampa's airport will reopen at 4 p.m. today. Meanwhile, let's get to our Katie Legrone. She has been out in Hernando Beach seeing many rescues out there so far due to that severe flooding hitting many of our counties. And uh, Katie, we were looking at some roadways that seem to have caved in. Are you seeing that in person out there? I'm sorry, say that one more time, Wendy. We saw some roadways that had actually caved in due to the severe flooding. Have you seen that? Oh. No, not at this point. However, I can tell you, I mean, look, it's just, uh, what time is it now? 1243, so high tide, which is that king tide cycle, is expected here around 120 or 130, and that's really the big area of concern uh, for emergency officials. I just want to give you a little bit of a, of, of, of sort of a scene setter here. So we are on Cortez Boulevard, which is a main thoroughfare uh, in the Spring Hill area to get to Hernando Beach. Um, we were in on Hernando Beach um, earlier, and we'll show you some video of that in shortly. But right now, you can see this road is closed. It has been closed since yesterday. Quite a few cars are attempting to make their way to Hernando Beach to check out the damage. They're doing a great job here, the Sheriff's Department of Hernando County, turning people around. There are a couple cars, those like that car that is able to get through. What we're being told is those are residents um, on the basically on uh, the east side of Cortez. Tez Boulevard who have left and are able to get back. Anybody on the west side, which are all the homes along the canals uh, leading into the Gulf, the, they, nobody is able to get to that area other than emergency crews. Um, as far as evacuations are concerned, a lot of people did leave the area, but uh, there are still some people there. In fact, earlier today, we went out there with the National Guard and the Hernando County Fire Rescue. We've got some video where we saw just enormous flooding in that area, about four feet of water. Um, they uh, said, look, this is going to be kind of, um, you know, just going to get worse as the day goes on with that high tide expected at 1.30. And, but we saw some people. We saw uh, a father with his two young sons pulling sort of their canoe. We saw a couple other people in canoes. We saw a guy stuck in his truck. Um, he couldn't leave um, or he didn't want to leave. That's the other thing is the people who are out there, there are these search and rescue um, efforts underway. National Guard, that's why they went in there. But the people who are there, they made the decision to stay and they're not leaving. Uh, we only hear that a couple people uh, ended up being rescued this morning, a mother and her daughter. But that's pretty much it. In fact, while we were out there, crews were going out on the boat saying, hey, who wants to get, you know, who wants to leave? And they're saying, nope, not us. In fact, we saw a, a couple guys look at the at the sheriff's department or the, the fire rescue guys going, nope, we're good, we're good. Um, that's kind of the, the temperament here. I mean, they decided to stay. They're, they're going to stay. They just want to see, uh, you know, how, how this king tide goes and, and what happens with their property. Um, as for, you know, uh, you know, the rest of the afternoon, what we're hoping to do is at some point get back into that area if we can and get on the boats and actually go through some of those neighborhoods that have been hardest hit. But again, the big concern at this hour right now is what that area looks like in the next 40 minutes or so after that king tide takes through um, and gives brings potentially anywhere from six to nine feet of storm surge. I mean, that is essentially what emergency leaders have always been saying, even since yesterday. They've been throwing the, those numbers out. Um, and so that, you know, with four feet, that was starting to recede a little bit as we were making our way out with National Guard, uh, but certainly, you know, nothing significant. And so they've already have a big problem there and they expect it to only get worse uh, within the, the next hour or so before eventually later this afternoon, hopefully that's, that water starts to recede. We do know power has been turned off in this area because of just how high the water is. It's really just a matter of a, a life safety issue at this point. And I've been reporting about these Black Hawk helicopters. Apparently those are also on standby. We have not seen any of them deploy. I know wind has been an issue, but the idea behind those Black Hawks is that because the water um, is so high and, they, and certain parts of Hernando Beach are 
literally impassable. The idea is let's have those on, on standby in the event that we do some lift operations. Um, but as of, uh, as of this, uh, this moment, we have not seen any helicopters actually, actually doing any rounds for now. It's been a couple National Guard trucks. One of them actually got stuck while we were there. Um, we've seen quite a few you know, boats from FWC, Hernando Sheriff, um, Hernando Fire Rescue um, make their way. But we have not seen them sort of take those, you know, take residents, um, you know, out uh, the way necessarily that, you know, they were intended to or that we even thought. These people who are there, they want to stay there and they want to ride this thing out. Back to you guys. All right, Katie, thank you. And as she mentioned, we saw that with Katrina, especially so many folks waited to the last minute, had to be rescued by helicopter. Literally, they're staying on their on roof, the roof yeah. for hours until they could be rescued. So hopefully that won't happen in our area. But we do continue to watch the flooding throughout our local counties, and that also includes in Pinellas County. Our Lydia Vasquez is hearing from homeowners in Oldsmar. Lydia? I'm Lydia Vasquez in Oldsmar, where that storm surge is already doing some damage. Homeowners here tell me this all happened from around midnight to 4 a.m. You can see a few inches of water here now, the street underwater. We actually just saw, our, saw a car drive through, pushing more water in here, obviously not making homeowners here happy to see that. You can see behind me here that yellow fire hydrant. One of the homeowners tells me earlier this morning the water was above that. So now the water has, you know, gone back down here as we are continuing uh, to deal with the uh, low tide ending, reaching high tide again around three o'clock. So this was all flooded overnight into the morning. We have some debris here, some branches down and one of the homeowners, Sean, who we're going to talk to, he tells me his whole lawn filled with water. His home actually flooded. Sean, tell me uh, what happened here and what did your home see or endure? Well, when I got up about four or so, um, the water was already into the carport and up to the uh, stoop of the house. Um, actually, you can see the little ramp right there. The water height came all the way up there, which is probably almost three quarters of a foot into the house. Um, I got most of the water out when the water started to recede, but you know, the damage has been done. So what can you do? Tell me what, you know, did it look like when you were finally able to come out of your home and see the neighborhood? Oh, it just, well, at first I couldn't see anything like you guys see back here. That's that's all this looked like. So up until about, I don't know, 45 minutes ago, I couldn't even come out here. It was all filled with water. So it's been receding now. I think the city may be pumping, pumping water out. I'm not sure, but uh, it's starting to come down a little bit. So uh, tell me high tide coming back around three o'clock. What are you thinking right now? How are you preparing? Uh, just keeping the sandbags and stuff and plastic up as much as I can. And hopefully it doesn't get too high. We can only hope. Yeah, you let me in your home and I saw a little bit of water there. I guess what's going on in your head? You told me you have a couple of dogs in there as well. Yeah, well, um, you know, there's water in the house, but there's some, you know, dry spots and we're just, uh, I got the dogs in a certain area where that's not wet. And then I'm obviously staying in the area that's not wet and just trying to mitigate the water as best as I can. So, but you know, they're hanging out with me and they got trackers on and just in case they got their vests, so they're good to go. Yeah, and tell me, I guess, what, you know, we saw that guy come here and push all that water into your lawn yeah. here. What do you want other people, you know, your neighbors, other residents here to keep in mind? Uh, just be respectful because the water's already coming in and you guys drive through really fast like you people just were, and all it does is push more water into our house, so, you know. Yeah, it's a tough situation to kind of see that water here. I'm hoping you can yep. kind of get that home, uh, you know, cleared out. Anything else you want to add for us, how you're feeling, how you're doing today? That's Florida. You know, it happens. So all we can do is uh, overcome and rebuild. That's it. Yeah, I know it's Florida and I've heard that. Thank you, Sean. I've heard that Thank from you. a couple of people, but also I've heard they haven't really seen it like this. I mean, we were at Ariel's Park where the water was covering the benches and the sidewalks. Again, this is what we're dealing with now hours after we saw that high tide overnight. You know, residents in here, uh, they're telling me they're a little bit more concerned come 3 p.m. So again, some homes are seeing flooded or are flooded already. We're still watching that uh, the storm surge coming around at 3. But for now, I'm Lydia Vasquez in Oldsmar. All right, Lydia, thank you. And we have a little more flooding now. Jackie Calloway is on Bayshore Boulevard. Jackie. It's underwater. Um, Bayshore is actually supposed to be closed, but we've been here for about the last 20 minutes and it's anything but closed. We've seen a number of high water vehicles, uh, several um, 
four wheel drives and like high rise Jeeps driving through here. It's not closed by any stretch. People are finding ways to get through. Uh, we're gonna take a further look down here. A lot of young people are making it their playground today. Uh, we've seen people surfing out here. We've seen young kids with body boards and floats. And uh, it's a party down here on Bayshore, uh, despite the public's warnings that you just don't go into water where you don't know what's underneath that water. You don't know how deep it is. You can look out there right now out to the open bay and just see that it just is constantly spilling in. It's getting higher and higher. It's actually gotten higher. The level on Bayshore has gotten higher uh, since we've been here in the last 30 minutes. And as all of you out there watching know, uh, it's because the you know the high tide is starting to build. It's starting to come in. There have been some showers uh, today, uh, some wind gusts, certainly nothing serious. Uh, the biggest thing out here is the water and um, people are in it and no one's stopping them. We have seen up and down Bay Shore, there are a couple of block off points where law enforcement has actually blocked off the ability to turn on Bay Shore. But right here at this intersection where we're at, um, it's, uh, it's, it's open season. if he's trying to cordon off uh, this intersection so that people uh, can no longer drive through here. It, uh, it's hard to tell exactly what he's doing, but that may be the case. Uh, they may be trying to stop more people from uh, getting out here to Bayshore and uh, kind of limit the access. Um, if you look down there, you can see police vehicles down there on Rome, so people are no longer able to get on here at that intersection. So just, you know, again, it's just you know, this isn't a game, and so uh, we understand it's just fun. People have a, a day off, they're curious about what's happening, what's going on out here. Um, just be smart if you can't see uh, at the bottom uh, how far down it goes, just avoid it. Back to you. All right, Jackie, thank you. And, and certainly windy out there. You could hear that in her microphone. A lot of folks like to go down to Bayshore when it floods out. And yeah, and it's around. like the last thing you should do, especially yeah. having kids play in that water because yeah. it's sewage. Yeah. It, there could be snakes. Manhole covers, of, yes. too, also. I mean, maybe not there. So be careful where you're stepping to. Well, I was just driving into work about an hour ago, and even though there was a lot of people not out on the roads, which is which was good, right? right? But we still saw three cars that had spun out and off into a ditch and then a four-car accident. So even though there's not a lot of cars out there, people People are still finding ways to get into trouble. Of course, and as you yeah. know, I lost my car on yeah. Bayshore a couple years ago yeah. during Tropical Storm Ada, and it was simply because I, I didn't see yeah. the water, and they the officers thought it was safe as yeah. well. They directed me, and I, I, and along with probably 15 other cars, mm -hmm. were stuck because you don't yeah. see the water right. necessarily until you're in it, and by that time, it's your car dies. So yeah. please be careful out there. Yeah, please do. All right, we have crews positioned up and down the coast all the way north to North Florida. And right now, our Sofia Hernandez is on the way to Tallahassee to get a close look at the storm's damage there. She has an update while driving on the roads. Take a listen. Hey folks, it's Sophia in Live Oak, and I just wanted to send you guys an update. Uh, we are about an hour and a half or so from Tallahassee. It's just driving cautiously. We're experiencing a little bit more wind right now, so we're just trying to make sure we drive nice and slow. And we're also seeing a lot more down trees, down limbs on I-10 specifically. Um, you can see specifically on the eastbound lane, there's a lot more trees as well. Very few cars going east. Um, we've seen a couple of trucks going west along with us, probably to provide assistance to the area. Um, but of course, if you are on the roadways, you can see again, a lot of down trees, a lot of down limbs. Take a look over there. You can see a couple really just covering the roadway. So again, if you are planning on going eastbound, you're going to be seeing a lot of downlifts. You need to drive with caution. It's better for you not to be on the roadways at all. Again, it's raining. The wind is still pretty strong. We can kind of feel the turbulence a little bit in the vehicle right now. Um, we'll give you an update as we get closer to Tallahassee. We've got an hour and a half to go. A uh, good thing to remember is that areas like Live Oak, and as we continue driving westward towards Tallahassee, it is very rural. There are a lot of vegetations. We are close to a lot of farmland, so the likelihood for you to see downlands, down trees on the roadways uh, is pretty high. So we'll give you an update as we get closer. All right, Sophia, thank you. Let's go now to our Kylie McGivern, who's in Bradenton along the Manatee River. Kylie, what's happening out there? Are you seeing conditions dissipate as we get closer to that king tide time? Well, it looks like at last check, Wendy, we are kind of just a few minutes past the high tide in our area. I'm gonna step out of the way behind me. I mean, you can see there is no separation 
between the Manatee River and what should be a street that our photojournalist Randy Wright is showing you all right now. We are along what should be the backside of homes. Um, just to give you some perspective of where we are off in the distance here, this is downtown Bradenton. And then if we look further over to the left after you see that, um, we are near Palmetto as well. And so all this water has come up. We spoke with a neighbor recently, Wendy, who is at one of these corner homes who said that they moved in, you know, early 1990s and have never seen flooding quite like this before. So we've been going to different parts of Manatee County to give you guys an idea. There are a lot of road closures. So if this is an area where you live, the easiest way to check before you try to go out, if you absolutely have to, is mymanatee.gov slash road closures. But yes, you can see what should be a road here. Yeah, not so much. So we will continue to check in with you all. But for now, we are live in Bradenton. We'll send it back to you guys. All right, Kylie, thank you and stay with us. We're continuing to track Adalia next. Well, take a look at this. These images showing a snake in the flooded roadways there right towards the uh, bottom of your screen. Now you don't have to worry about down power lines, but now snakes. <laughs> the Hernando County Sheriff's Office posted these pictures online. Another important reminder, you never know what's out in those flood waters. Jackie Calloway standing there on Bay Shore. Po folks are walking through that. Uh, you might have to contend with that, so uh, you might want to get up on the sidewalk and just kind of look at it from there. Yeah. Uh, deputies in Hernando County telling everyone just don't wait out in that water. Yeah, don't stay in it. Yeah. Don't play in it. Don't let your kids play in it. Yeah. it. It is disgusting out there. We've seen some severe flooding in Pasco County as well, and our Mary O'Connell is in Port Ritchie to show us the conditions out there. We're in Port Ritchie in Pasco County, where the neighborhood behind me has just been inundated with water. It's actually receded just a little bit since the time that we've been here, but the concern from officials is that when high tide comes, that water will come back. If you can take a look behind me, you can just see just how much water that this, these people are dealing with. We actually were able to go back on a Hummer with the police and they were able to take us around as a little tour of the area to see just how much water they're dealing with. At one point they said they had spots as high as three to four feet. There are 
other spots that are just ankle deep, but it's just widespread flooding from all the storm surge in this area. We had also talked to the Port Ritchie police chief earlier who had told us a little bit about, you know, how they're operating, how they're managing this. Um, they're waiting for calls to see if anyone needs um, help getting out of their homes because obviously they do not recommend people driving through this water. There were airboats, there were different UTVs that were going back looking to help people. Again, the concern is when the high tide comes back, what this water will do, but we will be out here and monitoring it and bring you the latest. Right now we're in Port Ritchie. I'm Mary O'Connell reporting. Thank you. Let's move south now to Pinellas County. ABC Action News reporter Anthony Hill is on Madeira Beach. And Anthony, I know you've been kind of everywhere in Pinellas. I understand you've also come upon uh, some down power lines, which can be very dangerous. Yeah, absolutely. It can be very dangerous, especially we were talking about with so much standing water. We were driving down and the photographer I'm working with, Matt, he noticed this smoke over here. So we we pulled over so that we can get on the air live right away um, to see what's happening. We've been here for a few minutes and we don't exactly know where that smoke is coming from. There's no signs of a fire, but it's been doing that. This as we see a Duke energy truck passing by. We've been talking about the inundation a lot of people have seen these trucks on the roads before. They're not the smallest trucks in the, the world. So hopefully that gave you some context as to how deep um, the how deep the inundation is in some of these side roads that we were talking about. But but again, to your, your point, yes, we've been seeing a lot of down power lines. Um, even some of the power poles here in Madeira Beach um, have are kind of crooked, which is a testament to the wind, which is a testament to the wind and, and what Mother Nature, as I said before, can do in, in just a few hours. But um, we're going to stay here. We're going to continue to survey, as I said before. And once we notice something, if we notice something, we'll get right back on air. I'll send it back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Anthony. We do want to mention before we get to Shay, I just got word that traditional Sarasota County schools will reopen tomorrow. So Thursday school is on in public schools in Sarasota. We haven't heard from all the different right. school districts just yet. Um, but Shay, take it away on what's going on right now. Well, what we're seeing right now, of course, behind me, we've got the Rivergate Tower Tampa camera looking over Harbor and Davis Islands, part of downtown Tampa, and uh, we've it looks like a little bit of lightning, but it's not. This is actually just water that is on the camera lens and it's kind of sparkling there. So uh, again, we actually haven't had much lightning recently. We are noticing some breaks in the clouds and some sunshine coming through, uh, but we're not seeing the storminess that we saw earlier. And although we are still under a tornado watch until three o'clock, uh, we haven't seen any tornado uh, warnings in several hours. So conditions have calmed down in that regard. And as far as the current conditions go, we've got temps that are in the low to mid 80s. Temps are a little bit warmer where we're seeing a little sunshine coming through and it's drier. And when, when the rain comes through, temps come down. One of the things to keep in mind is that we are on the way from a low tide to a high tide. And we saw some of the highest water levels and flooding levels during our low tide. So now that our tide levels are coming back up, and we're seeing the water receding, it is much less likely that we are going to see additional higher tides as we're getting to high tide. Does that make sense? Did I say that the, the right way? It's unlikely we're going to see the waters exceed what we saw earlier, is my point, because we have already seen the water come down as we are going to the next high tide. So as we're watching right now with Adelia, 80 mile per hour maximum sustained winds moving to the north northeast at 20 miles per hour. So this storm is racing off to the north northeast. It is weakening as it's doing so, but it still looks like a pretty well formed and well organized system. You can still see a very formed eye uh, there. But we are still getting the southern edge and the rain bands wrapping around uh, the southern edge. We're getting a lot more breaks, a lot more dry air starting to work its way in here. Uh, so we do still have some heavy downpours and we'll get gusty winds with those, but we're not seeing the thunderstorms and uh, the very heavy uh, and gusty winds and potential for damaging winds that we had earlier. So again, we've got uh, very high rainfall totals in spots, but again, this is still 
really decent when it comes to a tropical system. So just a little over seven inches here in a band between uh, Hardy and DeSoto counties. And then we've got a little over six inches in Pasco County. Other areas are getting between two to four inches. Uh, so this is pretty much on target with what we were expecting. And uh, that's all in the last 24 hours. Right now we're seeing much drier conditions across parts of uh, Pasco County. We do have some heavier downpours uh, just to the south of Zephyr Hills and moving over 98 just south of Dade City. And we are finally driving, drying out in northern uh, Pinellas County. That's where we just consistently saw these bands of rain moving through. And now they're starting to shift out of the area. And we're seeing that rain instead moving a little closer to the I-4 corridor. Uh, also to the south of I-4 in Polk County, we've got some moderate rain, but nothing that's terribly heavy. The heaviest bands, uh, once again, to the south are just to the south of the Skyway and moving through Sarasota, as well as across North Port and into southern Manatee County around uh, Mayaka River State Park. So we'll continue on the future cast. That's what we're looking at now to see those bands of rain move through and the onshore flow that west to east flow will actually continue to drive showers against our coastline and across the state uh, through the day tomorrow. Even overnight tonight, we may see a few isolated showers. And then when we get to the daytime heating tomorrow, it'll be much like a typical summertime pattern where we get a west to east flow and we get scattered showers in the afternoon moving across the state and then they taper off or at least try to after sunset. But then on Friday morning, we get that chance for rain again right along the coast. So that's going to be more typical, uh, typical summer weather, not necessarily enhanced from the tropics like we're getting right now. So we've got current winds that are anywhere from about 15 to 20, 25 miles per hour in the uh, sustained winds. These are all coming from the west to southwest and the wind gusts are still reaching that 40 mile per hour range. So we've got wind gusts around Mayaka City and Arcadia around 43 miles per hour and uh, 44 in Newport Ritchie as well as in Spring Hill, Hernando around 42. So there's certainly some wind out there, but we will start to see those wind speeds coming down as we get closer to sunset and after sunset, they really start to come down quickly. So I think we'll notice a, a really nice difference there. As far as uh, Clearwater Beach goes, we're still looking at pretty rough waters out there and uh, we are seeing some sunshine though coming through those clouds, it looks like, but a little ominous overall and not looking like the best beach day. But if you're planning uh, ahead, uh, uh, again, want to stay off the beaches, still don't have the all clear to be heading out there. There's certainly a lot as we saw in the water and around the water, and we want to make sure that everything can get cleaned up and they can get the uh, power taken care of. But we are going to see those temps go up and down as the showers move in and out across the area. Back to you guys. All, all right. right. Thank thanks. you, Shay. I do want to mention real quick, I'm just getting word that the St. Pete Clearwater Airport is now reopening at 3 o'clock this afternoon. You talked about TPA reopening at 4 o'clock uh, for incoming flights, but now we're hearing that St. Pete will also reopen at 3. All right. Another area we've been keeping our eyes on is Riverview. Yeah, ABC Action News reporter Rebecca Petit has a report on how Hurricane Adalia has affected that particular area. I'm Rebecca Petit in Hillsborough County. You can see this road behind me is flooded. This is from the storm surge from Hurricane Adalia. This is actually the river Alafia River that has come into the neighborhood, flooded the streets. According to the county, the river has major flooding stage of 6.56 feet at about 8 a.m. That level is expected to rise later today because of storm surge and heavy rains. Cars in this neighborhood are being turned around because the roads are impassable. No telling when the water will recede, but when we have that information, we will keep you updated. In Hillsborough County, I'm Rebecca Petit, NBC Action News. Rebecca, thank you. One of the areas that's seen a whole lot of storm surge is Oldsmar. Yeah, ABC Action News reporter Lydia Vasquez has been out there all morning for us. Uh, Lydia, what it's, what's it like out there at this hour now? All right, we're going to work on getting Lydia there in just a little bit. Uh, do we have some pictures from Hillsborough County that we want to show uh, folks from the web? Uh, it's coming from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. Do we have that? At this point, yeah, here we go right here. This is uh, coming in from the Hillsborough County Sheriff's Office. They said we're going to still see some rain bands and high tides rolling in, and they're just asking at this point, don't drive through any of those flooding roadways. 
Uh, and the best thing, again, is to stay indoors. Uh, I, again, on my way into work just a little bit ago, not a lot of folks out there. And it's one of those days where everything is, is pretty much closed down. If you've already uh, planned ahead for this storm uh, and you're inside for the day, it's probably the best place to stay. Just uh, binge watch something and, and, and eat all that food that you got at Publix uh, <laughs> before the storm came and, and maybe uh, have a drink or two. Just just sit back. Just don't go out on the road. Yeah, no doubt. It's it's time to take a day off yeah. uh, for That'd you. That would be nice. Yeah, our Lydia Vasquez is still standing by now. She is in Old Tamar with the latest on conditions out there. Lydia, are you ready for us? There she is. Hey, yeah, I'm ready for you guys. Sorry about that. So we are at Ari Olds Park. We have been here all day today and yesterday as well. And honestly, this is the worst that we've seen it since being here. The water continues to come here where we are. Just take a look at this. I mean, cars have been driving down this road a couple of inches here, a couple of feet as it caves in. And this is what uh, homeowners and people living here have told me they are, you know, the least happy with. Because as you see these cars trying to drive through this water, it's just pushing more water into these homes right behind these trees. We can't really walk over there right now but they're getting some flood. I mean, it's flooding into their home here. And you can see just from these drivers here, it's pushing water from the sidewalk to where we're at. So right over there behind us here, that's the park. There's benches that are underwater over there. And while we've got a little bit of a break from that wind and the rain, it's that storm surge that we've been continuing to watch here. And it's just keeps coming back up to where we are. I mean, the street was closed off earlier today. It's back open now, but again, not safe for anyone to be walking or driving in. Like I mentioned right here, this dip, a couple of feet of water and that home right behind me getting flooded. And we've been driving around the neighborhoods here. They're dealing with that surge from this morning. And so they're still worried about what they could get from this water here. I was talking to a mom who had some of her kids up at the park. They told me they like to bring the kids to see uh, what the damage is because they get really worried when they're prepping for these storms. I know we were talking about that earlier. But yeah, some of the parents here, they want their kids to see, you know, what's done. But Eugene, I don't know if you can pan just a little bit over here. This is continuing all the way to the front of Ari Olds Park. I mean, back there, that's typically grass and it's filled with water coming onto the street here and it's just blowing down this road. So again, these conditions not really letting up as far as that storm surge goes. And a big thing for people in this area, other residents and homeowners, they're just asking me to, to relay this message. Please try to stay off the road because when you're driving through, it's just continuing to push water into these homes. And I'm looking at debris from where the water has already been, already pushed up into their homes here. So that's just one of the major issues here. You can see the debris and some branches off onto the floor here or onto the ground, I should say. And the wind is coming and going. It's just that water that we're continuing to watch. So we just pulled over here to see this damage. It's not stopping. It's not letting up. So we'll be out here continuing to monitor conditions, showing you guys what we're dealing with. But again, if you don't have to, please stay off the roads, especially if it's flooded out here. Guys. Yeah, so as Lydia was saying, if the water levels are still going up in your area, uh, we are approaching high tide across much of uh, our coastline. Uh, I think there was only one spot to our south around Sarasota that had a high tide at uh, about noon. So that would be where we've already reached that high tide and the water level should be coming down. The rest of the area, the high tides were uh, coming up around one o'clock, two o'clock, and then into the three o'clock hour. Uh, so at this point in time, the water levels will be coming up naturally. Naturally. And uh, and then in addition to that, we do have that onshore flow, which would be enhancing uh, the high tide. So if your water is receding right now, you are in good shape. But if you're still seeing the water coming up, uh, then it will take until after we get to the next high tide and get beyond that time frame before the water will start coming back down. Now, you can see that we do have a very well formed storm here, even though it is weakening and moving very quickly offshore or uh, that's uh, inland across uh, Georgia, we are still seeing a very strong uh, and very organized system. We do still have rain bands moving across our area. We'll continue to see these throughout the rest of uh, this afternoon and even into tonight with the onshore flow, we'll pick up moisture off of the Gulf and we'll still get showers moving through. They may not uh, continue to be directly related to or associated with or connected to Adelia, but we will get that west to east flow that's more typical of a summer 
summertime pattern developing over the next couple of days, and that'll keep giving us uh, those showers and isolated storms in the afternoon. So right now we're looking at the future cast and you can see the pattern just continues as we get into uh, tonight. We still have a few showers left over. This doesn't look nearly as heavy, certainly not as widespread as what we've experienced so far, but then tomorrow afternoon when we get that daytime heating, those showers and storms flare up just like they normally would on a summer afternoon. We've got plenty of moisture out there. We've got plenty of energy out there and we are going to see those showers and storms taper off after sunset and then return against the coastline Friday morning. So right now, as we're looking outside at the Rivergate Tower Tampa camera, we still have water drops on the lens. We've got plenty of cloud cover, really looking like a pretty nasty day. Again, like Jameson was saying, you might as well just hang out and, you know, enjoy a, a couple of shows and, you know, maybe a cocktail and, and relax across uh, and, you know, call this a day off and uh, a bonus day off because we've got, uh, you know, just nasty conditions outside. It certainly isn't uh, worthwhile to be heading out on any of our roadways. We've got gusty winds still in that 40 mile per hour range. The showers have been coming back and forth. Reporting a thunderstorm in Sarasota right now. I haven't seen much lightning at all on uh, our radar recently. So again, most of it has just been rainfall, most of it light, but a couple of heavier downpours. Temps are ranging anywhere in the in the low to mid 80s. Nothing really extreme as far as the heat goes today for sure. And right now we've got 80 mile per hour maximum sustained wind. So Adelia hasn't changed much as it's been moving inland here over the last hour or so. Uh, and it is still moving north northeast at 20 miles per hour. We'll get another update uh, at least at two o'clock, if not before. But again, we aren't seeing any changes here over the last hour. Now, as far as the winds go, the winds are certainly improving around Tallahassee and Gainesville. This is much improvement and uh, we're seeing winds around 22 miles per hour in uh, Gainesville, Tallahassee at 17 miles per hour. These are sustained winds, so improvement here in Tampa at 12 mile per hour winds. The gusts uh, still though looking extreme. Now this might be due to some faulty data coming in now around Tallahassee because it's unlikely we're still seeing 84 mile per hour wind gusts in Tallahassee and this has been stuck at the same number for what about four hours. So this is unlikely. But uh, again, we are looking at uh, wind gusts that have been anywhere in the 30 to 40 mile per hour range here around Tampa Bay and we'll expect those wind gusts uh, to really start coming down after sunset and will be very reasonable as we uh, head to bed tonight as we're planning ahead for the rest of today. Again, we are looking at a mix of a little bit of sunshine, a lot of cloud cover, showers, storms possible, temps topping out in the mid to upper 80s, and then when the rain comes through, expect the low 80s. We will see improvement as we move through the rest of the day. We're still watching for areas where we may see some additional uh, tidal flooding as we're reaching high tide. We've got until about 3, 3.30 before we reach the end of that high tide cycle across our coastal areas, and once we get to that time frame, we should see improvement from that point out when it comes to that uh, storm surge uh, flooding or influencing the flooding that we're seeing along the coastline. So a few more hours and we should be in the clear with that. And again, we do still have the tornado watch in effect, but we've been in good shape there. That stays in effect until three o'clock this afternoon from uh, Pinellas and Hillsborough and Polk counties on north. But again, that's been looking pretty good. So overall conditions are certainly improving. Back to you. We'll be right back after the break.
Welcome back to our continuous coverage of Hurricane Adalia. An update now from Pasco County. All East Pasco County shelters are now closed. Yeah, there are some that do remain open. However, those are up on your screen right now. Fasano Regional Hurricane Center in Hudson, 5A High School in Hudson, and River Ridge Middle and High Schools in Newport Ritchie. We'll continue to update this list as we get more information. Let's move south now to Pinellas County. Yeah, and ABC Action News reporter Anthony Hill is on Madeira Beach. And Anthony, I know the last time we checked in with you, you saw power lines down, uh, some smoke in the area. How's the flooding out there as we get to that high tide? Yeah, and, and we still see power lines down. Hey, Wendy, we are still on Madeira Beach. And I want you to see also, I mean, I think the theme of this live hit is wind and what it can do. It can down power lines. I'm standing on sand right now, and I'm not on the beach. Does that make sense? It has everything to do with the sand. And obviously, the water, the rain adds insult to injury. And so you have a mushy sand. And then we get to a situation like this where, you know, your car, your truck can potentially get stuck. But what I love about this is that you see the community coming together. This is something we tend to see after natural disasters. When somebody is in need of help, you have people coming together, including our photographer who was back in the back of this truck trying to push it out. Um, and so, yeah, a lot of people here trying to uh, get this truck um, out of this this rut, out of this mud, the sand, whatever you would call it. But again, uh, the theme is, is wind and how much sand um, has been essentially thrown onto the road. So uh, we're going to stay here and continue to, to uh, monitor the latest and hopefully they can get this truck out of here. If they do, we'll report back to you guys and hopefully we have a, a happy ending to report about. But for now, I'm going to send it back to you guys at the station. And uh, Anthony mentioning down power lines there, 15,000 people without power, according to Duke Energy right now, just in Pinellas County alone. So you're seeing some of the effects of all those down power lines. No doubt. And before we get to St. Pete, I just want to mention that uh, Hillsborough County Sheriff's Department, their aviation unit has now returned to the skies um, and they're now assessing the damage through Hillsborough County. For a while, it wasn't safe for anyone to fly mm -hmm. because of all the outer bands that were coming through. But now we're hearing they're back in the sky. They're going to assess the damage and they're actually going to turn over to some video to us to take a look at what it looks like from the sky in Hillsborough County and the flood damage. So when we get that, of course, we'll bring that to you. And we turn now to St. Petersburg. Our Vanessa Ariza has been there since yesterday. And Vanessa, I know you were experiencing some real tough wind and rain whipping you around last night. What's it like in the downtown area today? Yeah, you guys, we actually just left the downtown area. Uh, we were there maybe about 30 minutes ago. And I want to go ahead and toss to some video. And this is what the owner of Fresco's, if you know Fresco's down there, the waterfront bar and grill, so many people uh, patronizing that amazing restaurant there. The owner spoke with us and he said about two feet of water got up to the building. Luckily, it didn't get inside because they were prepared. But that whole area by the pier, the marina, frescoes, it was all underwater around six o'clock this morning. And if you want to come out to us live real quick, because we've got a truck going through just to give you uh, a little perspective of how far the waters have gotten here in the Short Acres area. A lot of people trying to go through. You are braving it, sir, with a very big truck. I'm braving it. Yes. <laughs> So, you know, yeah, luckily he has got the uh, the vehicle to wade through that water, but we have been seeing uh, a number of cars trying to test their luck with the waters here. Here's the good news, though. Shore Acres, you know, if you live in this area, uh, it floods rather easily. As quickly as it floods, it recedes. We've been out here for about 15, 20 minutes, and there was one intersection that we parked our car at. And within that time, we couldn't drive through it, nor did we want to test our luck in driving through it. But in the time that we sat there, uh, the water receded. So that is the good news. But farther down behind me, uh, the water is still higher than you would like it to be. Uh, so hopefully that will recede as well, uh, you know, rather quickly. That's what we have been seeing. We've been driving around the Shore Acres neighborhood. You've got hot spots, right? Uh, if you live here, you're saying, yeah, we know. We know how easily that that area floods. So we uh, just trying to assess the good news is is we haven't seen any down power lines we haven't seen any down trees so that is the good thing uh but the one thing that remains a constant is the water but that is to be expected so uh we also i want to go back to that video if you can just to give people another idea of what downtown st pete area looked like over by the frescoes area the marina that water around uh, nine o'clock this morning was pretty high. Our photographer Allison Shaw was out there getting that video. 
And uh, the one thing that law enforcement really want to press into people's minds, well, the skies are clearing up, the sun is coming out. If there are still puddles of water, please do not go in them. And one of the reasoning is because one of those law enforcement officers told uh, Allison that, uh, you know, you've got the electric vehicle plugs and one of them was sparking. So you never know is what is what underneath the water right now. So if you can, just kind of try to stay away from it. And the owner of Fresco's, uh, we spoke with him asking him how the restaurant was. He said, look, I've been here for 20 years. This is the highest that the water has gotten. Take a listen to him. Oh, uh, we did okay, because having been here this long, we knew with this one, the storm surge would be higher from the tide, because uh, it'd been high tide this week. So we went ahead and boarded up all the areas where water could come in. And it looks like it fared very well um, with very little water even coming inside, even though it was two feet up on the restaurant. So the pressing question for all of those locals and fan favorites of that establishment, I said, when do you think that you're going to be able to reopen? He said, honestly, we may be able to reopen tonight. It's Florida. If you do a hurricane in Florida, you know, before the storm, you go and enjoy a cocktail. After the storm, you go and enjoy a cocktail. So he and his partners are, uh, yeah, you chuckle. Yeah, we're wishing we were there with them. Uh, so he said hopefully that he they're going to open this evening. He's trying to check on it. Hopefully there's not much water. He said really that got in because they were prepared. They knew that uh, Mother Nature could pack a force, so they were ready. So fingers crossed that they will open tonight. I know a lot of people uh, wanting to go and, and patronize them. We're gonna continue to stay out here and monitor the situation. If there's anything extra uh, that you need to know, pertinent information, of course, we'll keep you updated. But for now, back to you guys. All right, Vanessa, thank you. Meantime, some crazy video here. Take a look, this is Florida in a nutshell. Do you see it? That's an alligator just sitting on the grass in the rain, enjoying the weather. And then if you look into the water, that's a beautiful manatee. This is in the Seminole Heights area of Tampa, right outside of one of our own producer's apartments, our sweet Caitlin. She shared this video with us. The Hillsborough River is flooding a little there as well. But, you know, manatees and alligators, I guess this is what we live with, right? So if you're keeping count if, <laughs> if, on your bingo card, we've already had snakes. Now we've had manatees and alligators. Right. I mean, so this is uh, this is a Florida hurricane. Florida. But in fairness, they were here before yeah. we were, right? Yeah, that's true. So this is kind of their home. <laughs> we're just visitors. Yeah, exactly. All right, we want to go now to Port Richard. Mary O'Connell was down there earlier today and uh, Mary uh, last time we saw you you were in a neighborhood that was dealing with some flooding. Where are you now? We're in that same area. We haven't moved and about an hour ago is when we were hearing concerns about high tide. We kept an eye on that flooding and really it, it hasn't gotten too bad now. At this point, it looks as though it's receding. If you take a look here, you can see that water now earlier today when we got here, I'd say it was about 10 in the morning. It was kind of about to where we were standing actually a little bit past us so you can see it's receded quite a bit and these taller cars are driving through this water at this point to get back in the back neighborhood we actually were out on a hummer earlier today with the port ritchie police department and they took us through the different neighborhoods we're at bay boulevard in port ritchie and this leads all the way back to um, harbor point and harbor isles those neighborhoods and the community back there was just inundated with water. Um, not necessarily, you know, all the way up to your waist or anything like that, but you know, you'd have ankle deep water, but it's widespread. They also had at the high point some places that were three to four feet deep. Um, we, we saw a bus bench that was underwater. We saw a gazebo that was filled with water. Um, and we were walking around, or we were driving around and saw people that were cleaning up you know, their homes and their driveways, you could see the water line kind of on the roads there. And so you can take a look back here and you can see some cars that are, are driving around. There were UTVs, just people in their personal UTVs that were asking, does anyone need help here? And who can we go help? And that's kind of the community that we see around here. Just another point of note, we were out here with the Port Ritchie Police Department for a while this morning, and we were talking to one of the officers who said he doesn't live in this neighborhood, but another one, he said he lives about three to four miles from the Gulf and had about two and a half feet of water in his home. He said this morning uh, he saw the water coming. He grabbed his wife. He grabbed uh, some of his things and he got out of there. His 
car actually had to be towed. His police car had to be towed and then he went into work. But he says he likely lost everything. But if that speaks volumes of the community that's here, uh, people just want to help each other, you know, in their time of need. We're going to keep an eye on here once it's safe for us to drive back there. We'll try to get back there and talk to some of the neighbors uh, that are just kind of picking up the pieces here in their own neighborhood. We'll send it back to you. All right, Mary, thank you. And we've been talking a lot about storm surge a lot today. Uh, as we were seeing Lydia Vasquez earlier today, it's been a big problem in Oldsmar. Oh, definitely. And now our ABC Action News reporter JJ Burton joins us live from there. JJ, has the water gone down at all or is it now rising due to the high tide that's uh, that's been here for now about an hour? Hey, the water has gone down. I'll step out and we're in a different location from where Lydia was, where you can see the pier right here. And this is at Ariel's Park. And you can see the water still kind of high, but it's gone down from what it was earlier. And there was a lot of people out here. There's still some people coming out, taking some video and taking some pictures and seeing what they see out here. We spoke to this one woman earlier, uh, Anne Marie, and you live out here. You've been out here for hours. What, you know, describe for the people that are watching what it was like here earlier and what you're seeing now. So I was out here at about 6.45 this morning. All of this was underwater over in the behind where the camera is now was all underwater. That's short, pl so short drive there. Yes, yeah. short drive. Um, around 11, I was out here. The pier was still underwater. Uh, it was receding some, but not a whole lot. It's definitely receded a lot since 11 o'clock. How long have you lived out here? Have you dealt with flooding like this before? I've only been here four years. I have not dealt with flooding. Um, when it is high tide and we have rain, it does get up to the pier and along this path. I've not seen it down here, not down the other direction. Now this is a mandatory evacuation zone. You didn't leave, why not? <laughs> well, <laughs> we left last year and of course it, Ian followed us over to Orlando and then we didn't get anything here. Uh, we only live just on the other side of shore. Uh, but we live at a little bit higher of an elevation, so. And your house is fine this year, too? Oh, good. yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now, so it's receded some, but it's we're expecting high tide again, and it's going to come back up. Are you going to come back out and look? Oh, yeah. We'll be <laughs> back out <laughs> with the dog. i got to come out anyway, so. All right. We've all just right. put thank it in our routine. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you. Welcome. But again, that's the good news, though. A lot of houses are okay out here. There are some houses that did get some flooding. We, Lydia spoke to a guy whose house was completely flooded, and that's over near St. Petersburg Drive. We spoke to um, um, some restaurant owners over there, the Jack Willies, and it was flooded somewhat there. That's the end of the bay in that area, the north end of the bay. And the water was up somewhat. There was a boat that got loose and they were able to catch it and tie it up. So that's some good stuff. But again, not much damage, but that storm surge, that storm surge they're expecting again around high tide coming up soon. So that's the problem out here. And the wind has died down somewhat and it's not raining right now either. That's good news as well. Reporting live in Old Smart, I'm JJ Burton, ABC Action News. All right, JJ, thank you. We're going to check back with you shortly. And here's some of that video that Wendy was just mentioning, a bird's eye view of flooding in Hillsborough County from the Sheriff's Office helicopter. The aviation unit has been out there taking a closer look at all of the damage. We're going to be viewers with you at this moment. We haven't even seen this video yet, uh, so we're looking at it for the very first time live on the air like you are as well. Uh, just trying to get a, a sense of where this location is. Um, Hillsborough. Yeah, just Hillsborough County, but I'm trying to look at the I can't tell by the coordinates, but certainly you can see the flooding in uh, in backyards there in this neighborhood uh, that they're dealing with. You know, that at that point, that's inside those homes. Uh, maybe not that one. That's a little more elevated there. Uh, but folks, uh, you know, just kind of walking around uh, assessing their damage. Oh, there uh, it is. It's yeah. waist deep, yeah. as you can see there. Yeah. So yeah. that's uh, that car is yeah. probably a goner. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, it's definitely some... impacted. Yeah, and you can see that this is going to be kind of the scene that we're going to see all around uh, several of our counties, uh, especially anything that's uh, maybe along the Alifaya River as uh, as as another uh, you know high tide is coming up here. Uh, in, in these areas, these low lying areas, uh, some of these neighborhoods that sit kind of down in bowls a little bit, uh, you know, as the sheriff's helicopter is going to be going around uh, in lots of different counties, you're going to be getting scenes like this. Uh, we haven't seen anything that looks catastrophic uh, from this uh, so far, but again, we got another high tide coming up here in just a little bit, so we want to keep our eye on that certainly for you as well. But as Dennis has mentioned so many times, it is the water that mm -hmm. often causes, yeah. you know, death because, yeah. you, you know, you hide yeah. from the, the, wind, the, the, wind, the wind and then run, run from, from the, the water. Right, and right. so, yeah. yeah, so you've got to get out of there and hopefully those people did evacuate because 
because it, that obviously looked um, yeah. pretty scary. We just want to mention as well, President Biden is expected to speak about the federal help, hopefully, that's on the way due to Hurricane Adalia at 145. So we have um, just about 10 minutes, um, and we will, of course, bring that to you when he begins. Yeah, they're certainly going to need that up in the Tallahassee and the Big Bend area from, uh, from some of the damage. We're waiting to get some more video from there to turn that around and get that to you as well. Stay with us. We're continuing to track Hurricane Adalia. Next. All right, take a look at the radar right now and you can see what is uh, happening with Adelia. Still very well formed storm and a very well formed eye. And at this point, it looks like the heaviest rain is all to the north of the eye. We're still getting some of those southern uh, rain bands uh, as we're looking at the storm trying to work its way off to the north and northeast. Uh, it is still keeping those rain bands bringing rain to very similar areas. So instead of it just lifting north and out of the area that west to east flow continues to tap into the Gulf moisture and gives us that chance for rain and that continues not just for the rest of the day today but also over the next couple of days so uh, we've got what is turning into uh, over the next few days a more typical west to east summertime pattern we do have some rain showers that are getting pretty heavy here but all of these are rolling through very quickly uh, and we aren't seeing really the lightning and the thunder 
that we saw earlier. The uh, tornado watch has uh, been uh, canceled a little bit early. It was supposed to uh, stay with us until three o'clock, but they did cancel it early because conditions are calming down. So uh, right now you're looking at some heavy downpours that are uh, coming down across Tampa Bay and we'll be moving into the Riverview area or across I-4 and we'll be moving into Lakeland. And then also to the south uh, across Sarasota and then heading up to Fort Meade. Also around Arcadia and then heading into uh, Hardee County. We've got some heavy downpours. The future cast continues to show the majority of the rain here is around I-4 and to the south. But we're also seeing some of those rain bands moving through our northern counties. Again, it's going to be hit or miss right through sunset and beyond. This is 11 o'clock at night and we're still seeing a pretty strong west to east flow bringing rainfall on shore. And like I mentioned, as it turns into more of our typical summertime pattern over the next couple of days. We have chances for rain in the morning and then more numerous showers and storms in the afternoon. So this is 12 o'clock tomorrow afternoon and we've got another round of showers. But again, this is not associated necessarily with Adelia. This is just our typical summertime pattern that we're uh, going to continue to see. So right now, as we're looking at the Rivergate Tower Tampa camera, still looking awfully ominous out there, very dark clouds. Uh, and again, we do have uh, lots of uh, periods of rain ahead of, ahead of us, but we're also getting some dry uh, times as well. And as the rain moves in and out, the temps are going to fluctuate. We're going anywhere from the low to mid 80s. If you get a little sunshine, the temp may pop up to the mid 80s, maybe even the upper 80s if, uh, if uh, we get real warm. But in most cases, we are not seeing a lot of sunshine, maybe just a few breaks in the clouds. We'll get our next update around two o'clock from the National Hurricane Center, but at this point we haven't really seen much of a change in Adelia in a little bit here. So 80 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. It is still a hurricane. It's moving to the north northeast at 20 miles per hour and continuing to work its way through Georgia and then we'll skirt the uh, the South Carolina coastline before moving offshore and into the Atlantic tomorrow. As we look at the wind speeds, the current winds across the area are ranging from 13 miles per hour sustained around Tampa to 20 in Gainesville. Uh, so we are seeing some lighter winds in areas now, not necessarily all across the state, but we're certainly seeing some improvement and we'll continue to see gradual improvement as we move through the rest of the afternoon and into the evening. And again, uh, we are seeing, I think the wind gusts are just stuck. I don't think we're getting good data here. We're seeing the same thing just over and over again throughout the day. Now, as far as the rest of the afternoon and evening goes, those wind gusts will start to come down past sunset. They come down pretty quickly, in fact, and uh, we'll mainly just notice breezy conditions. We won't even have the wind gusts uh, once we get past sunset. So right now, looking at the beach, it's well, looking pretty cloudy. I have been noticing folks have been walking along the sand and again, things are looking a little calmer than they did before, but we haven't necessarily had uh, just got setting alarms around here. So uh, we've uh, we haven't gotten an all clear to be out and about in uh, many areas across Pinellas County and up and down the coastline. So again, you want to be really cautious. This is not the time necessarily to go into any of the uh, floodwaters that you may be finding around your neighborhood. We've been telling you that on and on, of course. But uh, so again, things look interesting out there for sure, but it's definitely not a good time to be out and scouting about and and uh, as we look at the conditions for the next couple of hours, we will still see some showers and storms rolling through and the temps are going to vary between the low to mid 80s, maybe the upper 80s at best. And we'll have those breezy conditions, if not gusty winds right through to sunset. Over the next couple of days, we'll see improving conditions uh, as well. We'll have uh, some decent chances for rain with that west to east flow over the next couple of days. And then as we get into the weekend, it'll be much drier and we'll start to notice more sunshine and store and uh, we get back to more typical weather. One thing to keep in mind is that we have um, we are headed into the high tide right now. So our tide levels are coming up and in a lot of cases we're noticing that the water levels are lower than they were before. So this is good news that we're getting into the high tide levels. We'll reach the I think the last high tide across our area around 3:30, And at that point, from that point on, uh, we will see the tide levels coming down naturally, and we don't have a strong west wind that would overcome our tides at that point. So we should see improving conditions as far as any uh, flooding goes along our coast from that point on.
Back to you guys. All right, Shay, thank you. And speaking of improving conditions, we want to go now to Port Ritchie. Mary O'Connell up there. And uh, Mary, that neighborhood that you were standing in earlier, the flood water has started to recede a bit from where you were standing earlier. It certainly has actually where we're standing right now. When we got here, I'd say about 10 o'clock this morning, this was all water where we're standing and it went all the way back past a sign over this way. And you can see behind me that folks are driving through this water as it continues to recede, likely going back to their homes. But I want to show you some video that we took earlier today when we were on a Port Ritchie uh, police officer's Hummer and they were able to take us back into the neighborhood that was just inundated with water. There were some spots that were at their high point three to four feet deep. Others were just about ankle deep, but it was pretty widespread. Of course, this neighborhood here and the communities in this back neighborhood, they all butt up to the Gulf. We also saw photos of a bench underwater, a gazebo filled with water. Uh, there were people on UTVs helping rescue others from their homes. Um, some people who had evacuated hadn't even been to their homes uh, since they had evacuated from the storm. So they were getting rides in and out of the area so they could go check on their homes. Now we did speak to a Port Ritchie police officer who said he woke up and saw water coming towards his home, not right in this neighborhood, but in an adjacent neighborhood. He grabbed his wife. He grabbed uh, what he could and he had to get out of the way of the water. He said he, about two and a half feet of water is in his home and he likely lost everything, yet he still came into work today. Here's a little bit more about what he had to say. I'm a combat veteran, so I'm in combat mode, if that makes sense to you. Uh, it'll hit me later, but I'll deal with that when it gets here. It is hard. I know a lot of people are going to struggle from this. Uh, there's going to be people that are really going to have a hard time recovering, so uh, you know, uh, we can only do what we can do for them. And that's just a testament of those hardworking police officers, fire rescue, who were all out here, uh, you know, making sure that, you know, people who needed help got the help they need, despite their own issues that they're dealing with in their homes. Now, that police officer, he said that he's about three or four miles from the Gulf, just as a perspective of how far uh, that storm surge was to reach his home. Um, and he also said that in order to get into work, he had to tow his police car um, because he could drive through waters. This water was quite deep earlier today. Uh, again, the conditions are improving. People are kind of able to get through a little bit more easier. Um, and as soon as we're able to, we'd like to get back in that neighborhood and talk to some of the folks who are uh, kind of cleaning up after this aftermath. Guys. All right, Mary, thank you. And, and certainly not the worst flooding we've ever seen before, but you could just tell from the neighborhood that Mary was going through there. You know, that's still a property loss and property damage inside those homes. Just a couple of inches of water. You can lose a lot of stuff in there. So. Oh, no doubt. No yeah. doubt. So our Paul Legrone, by the way, uh, has been in Taylor County, north of the region in that big bend area. He's been there since yesterday. That small community getting some major damage from Hurricane Adalia. And we've learned Governor DeSantis will give another news conference from that area in Perry right around 345 today. Today. And that's exactly where Paul joins us now with an update on the aftermath of the storm. Paul? How you doing, everyone? Paul Legrone reporting to you from downtown Perry and Taylor County. Uh, the damage is everywhere. Roof damage here at this looks like a cafe. Ripped the doorknob right off. This canopy came crashing down. Uh, there's glass everywhere. You kind of have to watch your step. Uh, this shop here, it looks like a thrift shop, uh, or no, kind of more like a cafe. Glass blew out from this window here. 130 mile an hour winds from Hurricane Idalia that came through here. We're seeing widespread roof damage pretty much everywhere in the downtown Perry area and debris everywhere as well as down trees. Uh, so the first look at damage and people are out surveying it for themselves to see what uh, the hurricane did. It's a lot of roof damage everywhere you go as you're driving into town uh, and a lot of down trees and a lot of debris everywhere from 130 mile an hour winds. Uh, now further away from us, closer to the coast, you've got storm surge issues. That's the one thing they didn't have here. The storm was quick in, quick out, but it left its mark uh, with those powerful winds. So we're gonna keep surveying the damage, but right now there's plenty of damage uh, to be seen here in uh, the small town of Perry in Taylor County. 
All right, Paul, thank you. I want you to take a look at these pictures from the mayor of Crystal River. He posted them on Facebook not too long ago. And as I looked through them earlier, a car is underwater. You can see uh, so many homes flooded and business flooded. I saw there was a local beach shop there, a florist, farmer's insurance. I mean, the list goes on several, several streets completely uh, flooded. And it looks like so much damage out there. And um, again, this is, I think, prior to the high tide, which means they could be experiencing even more water in the next hour or so. So uh, just devastation in that area and, and just so much loss mm -hmm. for the homes and the businesses. Yeah, let's move south to Pinellas County where they're dealing with about uh, 13,000 power outages right now. And ABC Action News reporter Anthony Hill is on Madeira Beach there. Anthony, I know you've seen power lines down, flooding, sand where it really shouldn't be. Uh, what's new out there now? Yeah, and then not too long ago, about 45 minutes ago during that live hit, I was talking about, we, we showed you smoke coming from a building. We have uh, exclusive video uh, that we'll show you. That's next though. What I do want to show you guys though, is if we turn the camera around, oh, we're already in the video. So we might as well just go with this then. That, then that video that you're watching right now, that was the fire. That was an actual fire that happened overnight. And so uh, authorities had to come in and, and um, extinguish that fire and that smoke that you saw in our live hit not too long ago uh, were, were the remnants of that fire. Um, but to an update story that we, we told you about in our last live hit where there was a when there was a truck that was stuck here. It's right here. Good news. I promise you we will come back um, and update you. Uh, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Office uh, came and, you know, got their ropes, did what they have to do to get the truck out and it was hard. I mean, this thing was lodged in there because as I said before, there's a lot of sand that has been kicked on land. And with that is also a lot of water. And so the, the ground is very muddy. And so even, and they were saying that they have a four wheel drive. So you don't want to be too, too confident. Even if you have a four way drive, you want to be, uh, make sure that you're okay with that. And would you mind talking to me? <laughs> so nice. Um, well, one, how does it feel that your truck is out? We were kind of nervous for you, but people came and helped. It feels so nice. I, I'm so embarrassed that we were trying to be so careful and trying to be so smart. And then the parking lot was sand and I wasn't used to that. Listen, but <laughs> it turned out well. It turned it out well. A lot of people came and, and they helped out, including yes. you guys were exactly, shoveling exactly. Um, and the officers and the neighbors and everybody wanted to help. So that was really, really I wonderful. Mean, they were putting work in. They were behind the truck. Oh, yeah. trying to, we were trying every way we could do it. And the sheriffs came and they, you know, yes. they came with their, their stuff in. And success. Exito. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank so you. happy that everything yeah, turned out. Be careful. Take care. Yes, yes. Everybody be careful. Um, that is the latest out here. Just wanted to share um, good news here again about communities coming together during times like this. Uh, of course, we are here all day and we're going to continue to track and survey um, some of the damage that is here. We're staying here. We're going to be live soon. I'm going to send it back to you guys in the station. All right, Anthony, thank you. And we have Jackie Calloway on Bayshore Boulevard. Uh, Jackie, what's the latest there? Hey guys, this water is deep where I'm standing. We're actually at the intersection of Lowell and Longfellow. We're in South Tampa, just a few blocks off of West Shore. So we're gonna give you a look down this street. It's pretty bad. And if you look all the way down to the end of the street, you'll see a white SUV down there. The house next to that house uh, actually took on water inside the home. And so that family is dealing with that. Uh, you do see people out and about cleaning up. Uh, they certainly expect it to get worse before it gets better. Uh, they expect the worst of this to show up at around uh, 2.30 during high tide. And um, there are actually cars that are trying to drive down this road and you actually have residents who have come out of their houses. We'll show you, you can kind of see people out and about. And it's almost like they're on patrol because when you drive down and you're in this water, not only does it pose a threat, but it's not very respectful. It's, it's splashing water even further up into people's yards as they're trying to clean up. So uh, they're asking people just, you know, don't come down to these neighborhoods to sightsee. Um, they, they're dealing with enough as it is. Uh, one gentleman told us that uh, uh, in the heat of the storm, at the heart of the storm, the water was all the way up in his garage. He said it was inches from coming inside his house. And so we understand that um, it's going to get worse than it is right here in the next couple of hours. Thankfully, you know, we're not hearing about anyone getting hurt. Um, you see people playing in the water. As we keep saying, that's just not the way to go. It's not safe. 
Um, and so if you're out and about and you're surveying storm damage, please don't drive down these roads and, um, and, and make things even worse for the residents who are already mopping up their garages. Uh, and in some cases, as we're seeing, they're actually mopping up their homes. Uh, we're going to keep driving around South Tampa, let you know what we're finding, how people are faring, and uh, the extent of damage that we're seeing. Back to you. All right, Jackie, thank you. You want to yeah. go over to Shay. And Shay, so many times we see that on Bayshore, folks are yeah. swimming in the water, their dogs are playing in the water. We've yeah. even seen jet skis on Bayshore Boulevard right. uh, in the past. Just not a good idea because you just don't know what's in that water. Yeah, I mean, I remember growing up in South Florida, whenever we'd have a big storm like this, you know, we used to play in, it's just not a good idea. There's no way around it. It's uh, it's not, and um, we got excited about the canoes and the canals too, but it's <laughs> not a good Good idea. All right, so as far as what we're uh, looking at now, the next high tide is coming uh, at Crystal River at 247, Bayport 212, St. Pete 154. So basically just reaching high tide right now. And uh, 1216 already reached high tide in Sarasota. Ballast Point uh, reaches high tide at 212. So the good news here is that we have either already reached high tide or we're about to reach high tide in many cases across Tampa Bay and up and down the coast. Once we reach that high tide and we know that the water is no longer rising, we're in the clear. And in a lot of cases, we have been on a rising tide and the water has been receding. If that's been the case where you're at, you're also in the clear. So we are seeing improving conditions across the area. There are a few spots like Oldsmar where the high tide is not until almost 3.30. So there's a little more time there. But again, if the water has been receding, it is highly unlikely at this stage of the game that the water is going to be coming back up again because we're already in that uh, range where we're going from low tide to high tide. So again, as we're taking a look at what we're seeing with uh, Adele, down to 75 mile per hour maximum sustained winds now moving to the northeast at 20 miles per hour. So the two o'clock update has just come in. It hasn't weakened substantially, but it has weakened. It's looking a little bit smaller here and less organized on the satellite image and will continue working its way along uh, the Georgia coastline and into South Carolina here over the next several hours. Now uh, looking at the Rivergate Tower Tampa camera, Still pretty dark and ominous out there. We've got range bands that are still moving through. And right now, we've even had a couple of flashes of lightning, it seemed, on some of our cameras. But uh, we do have very few thunderstorms. Uh, temps have been in the low to mid 80s. We've had mainly cloud cover, some sunshine peeking through from time to time. But uh, we haven't had a lot of thunderstorms. And again, on the radar, you can still see a very clearly defined eye. And the heaviest rainfall is on the north side of the system. We're just getting bands, and we're getting lots of breaks in those bands, some gusty winds as they come on through and that west to east flow is what we're going to continue to see here uh, turning into our typical summer like pattern over the next 24 hours. So uh, we should get familiar with this because this is what we're going to see more of as we return back to our regular weather. Uh, and again, we're almost beyond the worst of what we're going to see. Uh, and in some cases, we've already gotten through the worst. So again, we're watching right now. We've got some heavy rain that's moving through Riverview. It's also across I-4 and I-75 into Lakeland. We've got some heavier rain and to the north around Gibsonton, Kathleen. And then as we look south, uh, almost to Fort DeSoto, but uh, Tierra Verde getting some heavier rain. We also have some around the Pinellas County beaches south of Clearwater. So Indian Rocks Beach, um, uh, Madeira Beach, Reddington. And it sounds like the mayor is now uh, ready to fill us in. All right, thank you, yeah. Shay. Mayor Jane Castor uh, has, has called into the newsroom and we have her uh, on the phone right now. Mayor Castor, are you with us? Yes, I am. All right, Mayor. All right, very good. Can you tell us um, if you've been able to survey the damage at all in the city of Tampa? What are you seeing? Yes, I'm out on the, the road right now. I actually went to uh, Davis Island over to Tampa General, and uh, their aqua fence worked. It kept back uh, the storm surge. And Bayshore is still flooded. But it looks like since we're hitting the height of the tide that it's going to start receding here soon, hopefully. Our first responders are all out on the streets. 
uh, not only assessing the damage, which mostly looks like limbs, um, you know, some of the debris that's floated up with a storm surge, but they have the roadways that are flooded. They still have them blocked off. Davis Island still has water uh, across uh, Davis Boulevard in both directions. Uh, we have our bridges that may have opened up. Howard Franklin was uh, had the one lane block. Courtney Campbell Causeway, same thing. Gandy Bridge is fine. We're down in South Tampa right now on Gandy Boulevard. Uh, no flooding down here. So things are looking good for us right now. Mayor Castor, it's Jamison Euler here. Uh, have you seen any other areas that have had any potential damage? I've, I've noticed, too, uh, it, just, uh, it looks like maybe 1,000 power outages around the city at this point. Uh, certainly things looking pretty good at this 2 o'clock hour. Yes, without a doubt. And I've been in close contact with Archie Collins, with Pico, and um, they are getting power restored as quickly as it goes out. And so... I know those individuals that may be without power, especially with this hot, muggy weather, it's not uh, pleasant, but Kiko is working as quickly as they can with the additional uh, resources that have uh, staged in our area. And Mayor Castor, what about the flooding issue? Have you had any rescues that um, your folks have had to take on because folks are stuck in some of these really areas that are really badly flooded. Yes, that happens every year. You know, despite orders to evacuate, we're always going to have individuals that are disregard that. And so uh, we have had to mostly uh, cars trying to go through deeper water and we the police have to go out and rescue them. But uh, no health emergencies that I'm aware of right now. Again, CGH is still accessible and they are uh, running at full speed. So I think that we are, again, I think we're in good shape right now. Yeah, Mayor Kessler, this is, a, this is somewhat of an easy storm here for the Tampa Bay area. Obviously, the, the Big Bend area and up toward the Panhandle uh, got it much worse. Uh, just being in that EOC last night, kind of getting a, a, a little preseason run here uh, at, at the height of storm season, how do you feel like you guys did last night and, uh, and maybe anything you can improve on as we head into what is the busiest mm -hmm. time of hurricane season? Right. That's a great question, you know, especially since we haven't been taking a direct hit in a, a century, so we don't really have any muscle memory. But uh, as we have done in the past and will do probably tomorrow or the next day, we will be sending our resources to those areas that are the hardest hit. And so we bring those lessons back, uh, you know, positive and negative, and we incorporate those into our a strategy into our approach. Um, one really poignant example is our evacuation and the way we address that. We don't tell people leave the state. We just say go to higher ground, you know, hide from the wind, run from the rain. And that way people are more apt to follow those orders when, when they come out. And so I feel like our team did an outstanding job, and we are prepared for whatever Mother Nature brings our way. And, uh, Mayor, one last question. Uh, do you have any advice for the folks in the city of Tampa? You know, we are expected to get that high tide level, um, especially along Bayshore and other areas near Davis Island at 3 o'clock. And so the water could uh, once again continue to rise. Do you have any final mm -hmm. recommendations and advice for the folks who live in the city of Tampa, especially as we finish out our Wednesday here? Yes, just to understand that you know, we're not out of, of the danger quite yet. So please just use common sense. As we left Tampa General, it was a group of young men with a raft and, you know, I was watching them and I thought, well, nothing good can come of this. Uh, but just to, to stay in, don't go sightseeing. Um, we just want to ensure that everybody in our community stays safe. We were able to weather the storm well. And so we want to ensure that we maintain that record. All right, Mayor Jane Castor out and about today, surveying some of the storm damage and uh, generous with her time today. Thank you for calling in, Mayor. We certainly appreciate it. 
Thank you so much for keeping the community um, informed. We do appreciate you. Thank you, Mayor. Meanwhile, one of the areas that's seen a lot of storm surge other than Hillsborough County is we're talking about Oldsmar. Uh, ABC Action News reporter Lydia Vasquez has been out there all morning and into the afternoon. Lydia, what's it like out there now? Hey, I can tell you that the winds are definitely picking up. And as Shay has been saying, we're seeing that onshore westerly flow. We're seeing that and feeling that as the water continues to move a little bit more onshore. But I've been talking with a lot of people here, and one of them I want you to meet. His name is Don. He has lived here for 40 years. Don, tell me, I guess, what's your reaction? You know, we see the debris of how far it went up. What's your reaction to that? And have you seen anything like it? Yeah, the, uh, the storm surge was a little bit higher than I had actually anticipated. Uh, I think we're very fortunate if we'd have been, you know, the storm would have been 10 miles closer to shore, it would have been a lot more devastating. Have seen conditions like this numerous times in the past. Uh, nothing to really be surprised about with a storm of this magnitude. Um, Elena, back in, you know, years ago, um, there was a lot more devastation going on in here. There was a lot more substantial flooding along Shore Drive, Country Club area throughout the city, I was, you know, up at St. Pete Drive and, and State Road 580 before it was reconstructed. I remember wading through water about waist deep up at that intersection, up on Douglas Road in the industrial park, same thing. So water has gotten a lot higher in the past. We're very, very fortunate that more people didn't get damaged from this storm. Yeah, and we just heard a woman right now saying that her whole house was flooded underwater, and we drove through those neighborhoods talking with people. I guess, how does that feel? Some of your neighbors maybe not as fortunate it as what we're seeing in front of us. It's very sad. Anytime anybody gets any kind of water damage in their place, you're, you just feel devastated for them. You know, that, that couple, they only live about four or five houses down from us. We were fortunate we did not take any water on. Um, so, yeah, you, you just feel terrible for them. And I know we were talking earlier when we were here, we saw so many kids playing in the water. There's actually people in the water here and the water was past their knees. What's the concern? You've lived here for 40 years. What are you worried about seeing these people get into this water? Well, you, you do need to be careful. Um, there's a lot of, you know, debris that came loose from all over the county. There could be, you know, boards underwater with nails in it that you can step on. Um, all the all the you know, critters, snakes, spiders, ants, fire ants are terrible and stuff like this. They have to have a place to go. They go through the water. Um, it, it's you know, places have sewage overflows during courses like this. We're at the upper part of the bay with the wind. Everything comes up into this area, so everybody should not be out walking through the storm waters. You know, at this time, wait for them to go out of there before you go out. And, and you know, it's as younger people, you always want to go play in it, but. Right. You just can't really do that. It's dangerous. Don, thank you for your perspective and sharing some of that insight. I'm so glad you were fortunate enough to not see some of that flooding. Others here, not so much. Again, we're going to be out here all day continuing, continuing to monitor these conditions and checking in with people who live here about you know what they're dealing with and how they plan to move forward. But for now, I'm Lydia Vasquez in Oldsmar, ABC Action News. Lydia, thank you and stay with us. We're continuing to track Hurricane Adalia next.
do to it. Just tie it up. No, no, no. Welcome back. We want to go back now to Pinellas County. And that's where ABC Action News reporter Anthony Hill has been on Madeira Beach now for a while. Anthony, how's the flooding out there with high tide hitting now? Yeah, um, as we've been saying, uh, high tide is definitely affecting this part of Pinellas County. A lot of standing water, but I did want to show you guys, give you guys a little bit of an update. If you guys are just tuning in, um, in the distance right there, not too far, you can see like smoldering smoke. Um, and we weren't exactly sure when we first got on the scene what that was. We just noticed the smoke. So we stopped and um, essentially what we found out was that this was a full house. It, it burned down to the ground. I want you to take a look at, look at this right here. This is an exclusive video from um, Laura Mesh, uh, who we met. She recorded this video right here. This is video of the fire actually burning the house down. And so this smoke that you see right here are the remnants of the fire. So obviously it's under control. Again, uh, you ask about how were the conditions? Oh, and as you can see, too, this is something that we are seeing quite a bit, too. People going through, like, I like to call them bodies of water because who knows how deep it is in the center. And, and as you, oh, water is coming up to us right now. Um, if you were with us last time, you saw how there was a truck that was lodged into the ground because of all of the sand that was kicked up kicked off up over the beach and onto the roadway and then the water that saturates it and, and, and moisturizes it and so even though the guy had a four-wheel drive he got stuck in it so we want to make sure that people are being safe when they're next to bodies of water always think twice when you think should I drive through this or not there's always you're, you're running a risk honestly and especially uh, earlier uh, where were we we were in um, I think we were in Madeira Beach actually uh, th near the 9-11 center there was standing water there too we saw two kids having fun, but they were playing in the water. And a lot of people know, like, you do not want to get next to any standing body of water, especially if you turn around, Matt. We have power lines that are there. And so you want to be careful with that. But I'll send it back to you guys and the station. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, you know, and as we all know, once the storm is gone, cleanup begins. And we have on the phone with us now uh, Sheriff Chad Cronister, if he's still there. He are, do we still have him? I just heard a dial tone. We do not have him. Okay, I'm we lost, lost him. him. Okay. But hopefully we will get him back because I do want to ask him about that. The yeah. aviation units mm -hmm. who were up in the sky just to, so we know wh yeah. where that flooding was the worst. Well, we know he's busy. I know he's going around the, the different parts of the county right now. So we're going to get him to call back in in just a little bit here. We want to turn now to St. Petersburg. Our Vanessa Ariza has been out there uh, covering the storm for us since last night. Certainly getting hit with a lot of wind and rain last night. Uh, Vanessa, what's downtown uh, looking like at this point? Are we having any flood water down there or are things kind of starting to dry up? Yeah, so we were actually there about an hour ago, you guys. We keep shifting on you guys, so our apologies there. So downtown St. Pete, it was uh, water was receding, but they definitely had their share of flooding. 
We're back here in the Shore Acres area because as you know, this area floods very quickly and this is proof of that. Yesterday when we were out here, we were able to walk these streets, to drive these streets. Now you can see it is up to people's shins, almost to their kneecaps. There are in fact people who are kayaking around here. And Allison, if you want to point here to uh, Grand Bayou. So we were standing by the seawall there yesterday. Uh, we can't get out there right now. We did see these paddle boarders. They uh, stood up over there. So it kind of ebbs and flows, if you will, with the elevation, you can kind of stand and then in some areas, just not safe to do so. Also, we spoke with one neighbor who told us that uh, maybe about two or three blocks from here, that there was a fire. Don't know if it's a house fire, don't know what type of fire. We're trying to get that independently confirmed, but we did see a fire truck go down one of these neighboring streets and the residents said they were trying to get through, but because of the water, they weren't able to get through. So we're trying to get confirmation of that right now. We haven't seen any smoke. That's not to say that something is still happening. So we're going to try to work and get some information on that. Uh, right now, the uh, water or the water. The rain is starting to come down now, so we're starting to get little bands every now and then. Sir, how far do you live from here? I live on Denver Street. Do you, how far is Denver Street from right here? Uh, from right here, I'd say about a thousand yards. Okay, and how is your house doing? Uh, we got about two inches of water in the garage, uh, but no structural damage. Oh, that's good. So we had heard from another resident that there is a fire. There is. I just passed by it. Actually, I took video if you want to see it. Yeah. So is it a house fire? Describe yeah, it for us. Do you know when it happened or what exactly happened? Uh, I, I'll guess probably electrical fire. Um, and it's probably been burning for like the last hour. Most importantly, do you know if anybody was inside or if uh, anybody's hurt? I don't think so. I, I, most of everyone that lives in this area, when they hear hurricane, they, they evacuate. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is the structural fire that I actually took as I was floating by. Oh, wow. And about how long ago was that? Two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was just, I'm just floating by as I was coming around from my neighborhood because I live just at the corner of Denver and Ohio okay. over by Denver Park. So when did it start to really get bad here with the water coming in? Uh, probably about 3, 4 a.m. maybe, but I didn't notice it until I woke up um, and I was around 6, 37. Uh, I heard the rain. I heard the wind. I went out to the garage and, oh, look, there's, sorry, there's water in my garage. Oh, man. And so have you stayed with previous hurricanes? Yeah. I'm, I've, I'm a Floridian. <laughs> I've lived in this neighborhood going on close to 10 years. You know, what we have been seeing is just as quickly as the water comes in, it recedes out. It recedes. Um, but unfortunately, I, this is this when this was all at its peak, that was low tide. So about another hour, hour and a half, you're going to have high tide. So the water is probably going to come back. Come back. Okay, thank you so You're much welcome. for taking the time to talk with us. I You're appreciate welcome. you. So he's maybe one of two people that we have seen uh, kayak. We're going to try to get you some of that video as well uh, to show the house fire. We're also going to check, hopefully, that nobody was inside, that nobody's hurt right now. But another reason to uh, kind of stay safe in your home, because you never know what is going to happen. Yes, the skies may be blue. Yes, the clouds may be parting. But there are still dangers out there. So a heads up for you guys. We're going to uh, stay out here, get some more information. As soon as we have it, we'll toss it to you and come back to you guys. But for now, we'll leave it to you at the desk. All right, Vanessa, thank you. And it's certainly Shore Acres always floods. Yeah. Uh, so it's uh, no doubt that, that they're really struggling out there. Once again, we have Hillsborough County Sheriff Chad Cronister with us on the phone. Sheriff, are you there? I am, thank All you. All right, very good. What are you seeing countywide? I, we had some video of your aviation unit up in the sky shooting some um, real severe flooding. Where was that area? Where are you seeing the most damage, especially when it comes to the, the surge? Yeah, we're seeing some increased flooding, especially now as we approach this king tide here in just a little bit. South end of the county, Riverview, Gibsonson area, and then over in the town and country area. Um, it was a little more widespread. Now it's been uh, reduced to about Memorial Highway and Country Way Boulevard. But even in Progress Village, we're starting to see as this tide comes in, we're starting to see now that uh, we're getting some additional flooding. This is what we were all worried about this, this next high tide. Sheriff Chronister, Jameis Euler here. Uh, I would imagine too, uh, uh, some, of your, um, some of your deputies are probably getting close to that Alifaya River area where we know that the banks are gonna get a little bit swollen here in just a little bit. Have you had any issues uh, along the Alifaya yet at this point? We have, we've had to do some rescues 
Uh, some of our cut teams have been out there trying to open up some of the roadways, uh, chainsawing, again, trying to open up the roadways, but uh, even the rescues have been keeping them busy. We have an additional 1,000 deputies out uh, overnight and then this morning, and they've, they've been quite busy, as you can understand. And, uh, Sheriff, can you tell us, um, do you believe this is worse than you had expected? I know we're hearing that a lot. If the areas are flooding that haven't flooded this bad um, pretty much ever. What is your experience as you've looked around? Yeah, in 32 years, I've never seen it this bad. Uh, when they talked about we were going to see the historic storm surge, that's what I was worried about uh, with the high tides, all the amount of water that's trying to get out and the water that's being forced in. So I, I feel horrible. I tell you what, I was at around 4 a.m. And uh, I got to tell you what really frustrated me is some people thought it was okay to come out as the, the day was beginning and they're driving around in their trucks. Now, now, Wendy Jameson, here's the problem. You have people who unfortunately have already sustained a foot to two feet of water in their homes. Now you want a hot rod like Monster Jam in your trucks through neighborhoods. Now the wake is causing four to five feet in their homes. And I'm just encouraging people, listen, we're, we have a lot to do here. You've done a wonderful job of keeping you and your family safe, either finding shelter, staying with a friend, Please, we're almost out of this. Keep you and your family safe and stay off the roadway. Yeah, Sheriff, and we've been kind of telling people all day long, you know, you're already off work, school's closed. This is one of those good days that, to just stay off the roadway. We have seen uh, some car accidents out there and whatnot, but you were talking about um, high water rescue uh, a little earlier. We know that Citrus County, Hernando County was doing some high water rescues. Have you had to do any high water rescues at this point, or has it pretty much been, been able to walk people out on foot? Now, our airboats and uh, shallow water recovery efforts are, are in full swing, so we, we, they, they've done a wonderful job making, making some re recoveries. i, I got to tell you what, I'm, I'm proud of them. Uh, uh, they've had to go into some deep water, even, even overnight uh, when it was dark. You know, we usually get worried if we ever get around that 40 to 50 mile per hour wind, we'll have to suspend the service. And it never happened last night. We had 214 calls for service just overnight alone. Wow, that's a lot. Um, and finally, do you have any fatalities that you know of and uh, any advice uh, for those in Hillsborough County who, as you mentioned, still want to go out and be looky-loos and, and play in the water? Fortunately, no, none that have been reported to us yet. I, I tell you what, uh, it, as shameful as it is, there were some people that went to some hurricane parties and decided to drink and drive and caused a couple accidents, and uh, they end up spending uh, their hurricane in, in our detention facilities. But again, I, I appreciate you both helping us get the word out to keep our community safe. If you don't have a really important reason to be on the roadways, all you're doing is slowing our recovery and our rescue efforts down. Please, I'm, I'm imploring you. Keep you and your family safe and, and stay at home just a little while longer. Yes, Sheriff, and we certainly appreciate your efforts and, and the efforts of your deputies uh, out there last night in those conditions. And then again today to make sure we can clear out the, uh, the roadways and, and, and rescue anybody who might need a, a helping hand to get out of their neighborhood. So certainly thank you. Please pass that on to your, to your deputies for us. Yeah, and we thank, hope. Thank you both. You stay safe. And we hope you all stay safe. Thank you, Sheriff. We appreciate your time. All right, let's go now to our Kylie McGivern, who's in Bradenton. Kylie, what's happening out there now? I have conditions dissipated as we're hitting that high tide again. Well, Wendy, we've kind of seen the different iterations out here at tide tables. If every, anyone is familiar with the Bradenton area, last night we were out here seeing the water start to come in. This morning, this whole area was underwater. Our photojournalist Randy Wright is going to kind of show you what we're looking at right now with all of the seaweed up here. You can see how the water has receded actually since we were last out. Well, we also want to show you this is just one of our local restaurants and businesses that they make their livelihood on the water and now are returning to some sense of normal by everybody pitching in, picking up. Again, if you've been checking in, tuning into our broadcast, our crew here, which includes Jessica Dillion, we have been out here 
checking in, seeing where things stand. We do have an update for you all right now. The bridge Cortez Bridge is still closed, but we're told that three mayors are going to be meeting over on Anna Maria Island around five o'clock to decide what those next steps are. We spoke with a family here in one of these uh, mobile homes, these manufactured homes that decided to ride out the storm. They are cleaning up now. They also have a place over on Anna Maria Island and want to see what the conditions are over there. But again, as we continue to reiterate, a lot of these roads are closed. The bridge is still closed. We see a line of cars as we were making our way over here. You cannot get across yet. So as every county agency is continuing to stress and Manatee County is no different. If you don't have a reason to be out now is not the time as people are going around trying to pick up what they can assess the damage and see if the water will come in even more. We're not totally on the other side of this yet. So that's what we want to tell people to do. So mymanateecounty.org, mymanatee.org, that is slash road closures. That will show you on the ground conditions. If you got to attempt to get around, keep in mind, there is still flooding. That's what we've shown you today as we have checked in at different spots. But right now, this is what we're looking at. I couldn't have stood here this morning. All of this was underwater. So we will continue to check in with you all. Reporting live from Bradenton, Kylie McGivern, ABC Action News. All right, as we're taking a look at our uh, high tide times here for this afternoon, this is what we have been waiting for so that uh, once we get beyond these high tide times, we are going to be on uh, the the will be on the favorable side of uh, recovery here from the situation. So again, we are looking at Crystal River 247. We've got a high tide in Bayport at 212 uh, Ballast Point at 212 St. Pete 154 and Sarasota 12 uh, 16. So we are beyond uh, the high tide in much of the area. There are a few spots around Tampa Bay, so inside Hillsborough Bay and Old Tampa Bay, uh, Oldsmar Safety Harbor, uh, in those areas where you will uh, be, in, it'll be about 3.30 or so before you reach high tide. So we've got a few more places where we've got about an hour until we'll reach high tide. And then after that, uh, all areas should start to see uh, the waters receding if you're not already. So again, we are are going to start to see some improvement widespread across the area when it comes to that coastal flooding. Uh, if not, if you're not already seeing it, uh, the wind speeds around Hurricane Adelia are now down to 75 miles per hour, so just barely a hurricane moving northeast at 20 miles per hour. So it is weakening and it's losing some of its organization there, but we do still have plenty of clouds associated with the storm. A Rivergate Tower Tampa camera still looking pretty ominous, but as you saw in Kylie's shot. Uh, we did have some sunshine outside too. So we've got a mix of weather uh, depending on where you're at. Tampa uh, right now reporting rainfall in 83 degrees. Sarasota with a little sunshine up to 87. St. Pete at 82 with some uh, lighter rain. And Lakeland with a little bit of sunshine coming through at 83. Uh, we do have 25 mile per hour sustained winds around Tampa, but 18 around Lakeland. So again, we've got some varying wind speeds. The radar showing the majority of the rain still on the north side of the system and it continues to just work its way across uh, parts of southern Georgia. It looks like it's moving pretty slowly, but when in fact at 20 miles per hour, that's a pretty fast moving system. And you can see how fast the, uh, these rain bands are moving across our area as we were tracking them earlier today. They were moving at about 35 to uh, 40 miles per hour. So that is a pretty good clip here to watch these rain bands moving across the area. And that's been good news because it hasn't been leading to a really extreme rainfall totals. Most of our rainfall totals from this storm have been somewhere around the two to four inch range. I've seen a couple of spots uh, by radar estimates that have been around the seven inch range, but that's been the extent of it. So again, we have needed the rain around here and we certainly didn't need the storm surge flooding, of course, but uh, the rainfall uh, certainly we did need. Now, as far as rainfall goes right now, we still have some heavier downpours through Port Charlotte and into Arcadia. Sebring, we've got some heavy downpours there. We also have rain across some of our major bridges and we will continue to see that rainfall. So again, 
uh, even with the with some of the floodwaters starting to recede, it is best to stay off the roads. We've still got the gusty winds out there. If you don't need to be somewhere, this isn't really great weather to be out and about. There isn't a lot going on and a lot of stores and businesses are closed. So again, uh, if you can stay off the roads for today, it's a good deal and certainly will help a lot of people out. Now, as far as the future cast goes tomorrow, we still have that west to east flow, but this is a more typical summer like pattern, so we'll have that chance for rain along the coast in the first part of the day. And then the second half, we've got afternoon showers and storms that are going to move from the coast on inland and we'll have some heavy downpours in the mix. They'll taper off when we lose that daytime heating. So after sunset, uh, we see mostly dry conditions, but the rain sets up right along the coast for Friday morning again. So we've got that same pattern, the west to east flow, and those winds right now are sustained between 15 to 25 miles per hour. Some of them coming down as light as eight miles per hour in Clearwater right now. When it comes to the gusts across Tampa Bay, still seeing some gusts in the 40 mile per hour range, but uh, we've got some that are down to about 20. So we are seeing some improvement here when it comes to the wind gusts. And I would say that most of the area where you see those 40 mile per hour gusts, it's because of rain bands that are moving through. Now, as you're planning ahead for the rest of this evening, we are getting breaks in the clouds, but we'll still get more showers and storms coming through from time to time. And I do think the more heavy rain and the more uh, likely of, of those bands are going to be south of I-4 for the next couple of hours. But overall, we all do have chances for showers and storms throughout the rest of this evening and even into the overnight. Uh, and we'll be reaching highs this afternoon around the mid to upper 80s. So again, not a lot of change here as we continue through the day with less of the flooding along the coast and of course the winds are going to be dying down. We'll be right back after the break.
Well, we've been talking a lot about storm surge last night and today, and it's been an issue in Oldsmar. No doubt. ABC Action News reporter JJ Burton joins us live there. I know uh, storm surge has been a problem, but you also have the mayor of Oldsmar, I believe, with you. Uh, go ahead and take it away, JJ. Yeah, we do. We have Dan, the mayor, Dan Saraki, but real quick, we want to show you around this way. We, you can see some of the water out here. This is, again, the bay. It's just a different location or a different area looking at, at the park here, Ariel's Park, where we've been all morning long. But we have the mayor right here, again, the mayor of Oldsmar, Dan Saraki, just walking up as we were out here and you were driving around. You said you've been helping some people. What, what, what are you seeing out there? I actually have been driving around the neighborhoods just making sure everyone is safe. I want to make sure that uh, there's any debris in the street. I've been pulling over and taking care of that. I just really am pleased that we don't have too much damage. Some of the homes in the southern area over here in, in Oldsmar have been damaged and I'm really concerned about those residents because the city of Oldsmar is a really taught, really strong community of families, uh, of kids, uh, children, and we all work together to make sure that our community is a safe place and I'm really concerned about our residents. Where are some of those homes at in those neighborhoods? Where you're They're down uh, at the end here of Shore Drive where they've closed Lafayette and Shore Drive. Uh, that's where most of the, the impact of the flooding has happened in the city of Oldsmar. So we haven't been down there just yet, so we'll go down there and check that out as well. So what, and what type of damage are you seeing with this home? Uh, one of the homes that I noticed, uh, it was up about, about three quarters of a foot, uh, probably like nine inches. Some of the water did get into his home. I'm very concerned about those residents because flooding is an, an issue. And I'm, um, I'm just hoping that their, their, their family, their pets, and everything is safe. And, and, you know, what else are you seeing throughout the rest of the, the city? Well, the main reason why I'm here right now is because at 3 o'clock is the high tide. And I wanted to check out uh, Ariolts Park to see if the water was going to come back in, uh, as they've been predicting on the news, that the water would be coming back into the city. It looks like it's not. It might not be, but it does look like it's coming up a little bit. But I don't think we're going to get any more flooding. And to your residents watching right now, warnings for, you know, a lot of people are coming out and checking this out, but what would you say to those? Well, one of the videos I saw this morning is the dock, the pier here, was completely submerged underwater. And that really concerned me the most. Uh, to the residents of the city of Oldsmar, you know, I'm the mayor of the city. I am concerned about uh, your, well, your well-being and your health. Uh, I am here to support you. I will do anything. Uh, I want to thank uh, the city manager, Felicia Donnelly, our city staff, the fire department, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department. They've been out here 24-7 making sure you guys are safe. All right, we'll have much more with you coming you up in a couple of minutes. But again, you heard that from the mayor. And we're going to go check those houses down that way. He said Lafayette and Shore Drive, right? Okay. Those houses down there are really damaged and a lot of flooding down that way. We haven't gone down there just yet, but we'll check those out as well. Reporting live here in Oldsmar, J.J. Burton, ABC Action News. All right, J.J., thank you. And we want to go now to some live pictures from Jacksonville. Oh, these are not live. These are taped from uh, one of our affiliates moments ago. And this is the severe storm surge that we've been seeing with high tide now in play. And you can see those waves pushing over. Uh, obviously, this is just has been the case in, in several of our different counties because the high tide has been really from noon to and we're, we're hearing it's all the way to 345 possibly. Yeah. Shay Ryan is here with us as well. So um, not surprising that uh, those waves are really kicking up and the flooding continues. Yeah, on that side of our state, uh, what we're seeing is the circulation, of course, is coming around the storm and beginning to see more of an east to west flow on uh, around the storm. So uh, the, that circulation is going around the storm in a counterclockwise motion. But again, uh, it's hard to say whether or not oh. where exactly that is. Again, they do have the St. John's River as well. And uh, it does look like that's more than likely the Atlantic that we're looking at. But uh, Strades uh, even have been broken apart. I mean, yeah. talk about the force of some of those waves coming there. I mean, I know they've gotten this before, but for those value strades, they have they've gotten knocked over. That's got to be a, strong. That's a strong, yeah, that's a strong yeah. One right without there. a doubt, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, when the the last time when uh, we had what was it? Um, with uh, Irma going up through the middle of the state and they had the um, where the St. John's River ended up backing up and and uh, flooded uh, quite a bit. That was again, that was with the 
uh, flow going into the river. And at this point in time, because of the flow around, we'll get to the radar image here in just a second, and I can show you a little better where what we're seeing, but um, with the flow around Adelia, but that is not the same thing as what we're seeing here with Adelia. Uh, so again, what we're seeing right now in our area is quite a bit of, uh, of rough waves around uh, Clearwater Beach. This is uh, certainly still a gray sky, but not nearly as gloomy as it was looking earlier. We have seen some sunshine coming through. This is the Hyatt Regency Clearwater camera. It's not looking quite as windy as it once was earlier this afternoon. So again, things are calming down here in our area, uh, and we do still have showers out there. 81 degrees in Tampa, 87 in Sarasota, at St. Pete right now at 84 degrees in Lakeland at 81. We'll continue to watch the wind speeds come down. Okay, so again, now as we're looking at the satellite image, you can see in Jacksonville. So if you imagine the winds are working in that counterclockwise motion, we don't have an onshore flow here with Jacksonville. It's actually moving offshore, so it's a little hard to tell where we were looking and why the water was as rough as it was in that uh, specific area. But the bottom line is, is that when you have winds at, at the speeds that we've got coming around a hurricane and then you've got water uh, which doesn't create any, which you don't have friction, you end up with a really pushing the water. And of course, we've got the pressure of the storm as well uh, having an effect on the water. So again, uh, creating a lot of damage along that, uh, along those balustrades. But uh, 75 mile per hour maximum sustained winds moving northeast at 20 miles per hour, and it is continuing to weaken gradually, but still a pretty well defined uh, circulation here that looks like a tropical system. And uh, is it back to you? I'm sorry, I couldn't quite tell what you're telling me. Yes. Okay, so what we're seeing still is very heavy rain on the north side of the system. And again, this is working its way to the north. The center of the system is to the north of Jacksonville uh, and the St. Johns River going down to the south outside of Jacksonville. So again, we may be seeing some of that, uh, some of the river water coming back into the Atlantic. A little hard to tell from that vantage point. But again, we are seeing rain bands across our area and we will continue to see that west to east flow bringing the rainfall across the state and we'll get some heavy bands at times still even through the rest of uh, this afternoon and into early this evening and then we'll start to see uh, it tapering off a little later on tonight, but it won't completely come to an end that way. Being here. Earlier today, uh, I made a point to speak to all the governors most likely to be impacted by this storm. I spoke with Governor DeSantis several times. Governor Kemp, Governor McMasters, Governor Cooper, about the impacts of the storm and that made landfall at 7.45 uh, this morning as a Category 3 hurricane. And uh, it's moved over land and is now shifted to Category 1, but it is still very dangerous with winds up to 75 miles an hour. And the impacts of this storm are being felt throughout the southeast even as it moves up the eastern coast of the United States, affecting Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. And we have to remain vigilant, and there's much more to do. I just came from the Oval Office where I met with the FEMA administrator, who's standing to my left here, and uh, our federal response folks. And uh, early Monday morning, long before the storm made landfall, I spoke with Governor DeSantis and approved an early request for emergency declaration to enable him to have the full support ahead of time to protect the people's lives in the state of Florida. I, we surged personnel to Florida to help the state move people quickly to safety and out of a danger zone, and to help the governor and his team to the greatest degree possible in advance, in advance of the hurricane's arrival. And I directed the FEMA to redeploy resources, including up to 1,500 personnel and 900 Coast Guard personnel throughout the Southeast. I directed Administrator Criswell to stay in close touch with the governor. She was with me when I was speaking to him as well. And uh, I guess he's maybe tired of hearing of both of us, but uh, he seemed like he welcomed it. As a matter of fact, I've asked that uh, she get on the plane and leave for Florida this afternoon. She'll meet with Governor DeSantis tomorrow and uh, began helping conducting the federal assessment at, uh, at my direction. 
Federal teams on the ground are going to continue to work with the first responders in Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina to get people to safety. You've all been reporting this, you've seen it on television, there are a number of rescues already taken place as I walked out of my office a moment ago to begin to recover from the impacts of the storm. I let each governor I spoke with know that if there's anything, anything the states need right now, I'm ready to mobilize that support of what they need. I don't think anybody can deny the impact <coughs> of the climate crisis anymore. Just look around. Historic floods, I mean historic floods, more intense droughts, extreme heat, significant wildfires have caused significant damage like we've never seen before, not only throughout the Hawaiian Islands in the United States, but in Canada and other parts of the world. We've never seen this much fire. And while we're dealing with this latest extreme weather event, I remain laser focused on recovering and rebuilding efforts in Maui. We were out there, and many of you were there as well. It's devastating what happened there. When I took office, I directed my team to raise our game and how we lead and coordinate our responses to natural disasters. And uh, because I've been around a while and I've known how these function, to ensure we met people where they are, when they need our help the most. Because of the devastation of wildfires from California, New Mexico, Oregon, Washington State, Idaho, Louisiana, we've learned a heck of a lot. A lot of damage in the meantime, but we've learned a heck of a lot. And we're putting the lessons we've learned to work. In a few moments, I'm going to be with my entire cabinet in the next room over, who are leading the federal recovery and rebuilding efforts and report on their progress, providing urgently needed support to the people of Maui. I can note for just parenthetically for just a moment, you know, when you have your home washed away, when you are a fire that's taken your home away, when your school has been destroyed and there's no way you can't, you, can't, you can't send your kid to school, these are urgent needs. And no matter how bright, how informed, how wealthy, how poor they are, it's, you just need reassurance. So how in God's name are we going to get through this? Well, Jill and I saw the devastation in, in Maui firsthand. And I want to thank Governor Josh Green, who's doing one hell of a job, along with their congressional delegation. There's total unity. All right, you've been listening to President Biden and promising what FEMA will do to help those affected by Hurricane Adalia and that the federal agency will be there for anything that we need. The president mentioned he spoke to all the governors along the path of the storm as it goes northeast, including Governor Ron DeSantis, of course, again, promising that the federal recovery efforts for this hurricane will remain and continue as long as we need it. Yeah, and President Biden putting the director of FEMA on a plane this afternoon to head down here to be next to Governor DeSantis for any help the state of Florida might need. Nice to see political adversaries shaking hands and kind of coming together when we have an, uh, you know, an event like this. It's certainly welcome to see that. Uh, now we have the Senior Director of Public Safety and Emergency Management at Tampa General Hospital on the phone. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Can you tell us what it's been like there in the hospital last night and into today? Hi, good afternoon. This is Tony, Tony Venezia. So, so we, we, so understanding how we do hospital, we actually have hurricane heat. So yesterday, beginning about seven o'clock in the morning, we brought in a little over 2,000 team members uh, to take care of approximately 950 patients here. Uh, we hunkered in, put our flood wall up, and got the teams all in place to take care of the patients here at the hospital. Uh, it's, it was an eventful night, but but really, you know, it, it, we're pretty good at what we do with this, and I don't mean to sound any way other than saying that I've been at the hospital 30 years, and, and we understand hurricane mitigation, uh, and we're really here. I think the goal here is to provide world-class care to our patients regardless of the circumstances, and we did that in the last 24 hours. Uh, Mr. Venezia, I have to ask you as well, uh, we're not uh, in the clear just yet. Of course, TGH is right on the water off of Bayshore Boulevard. We're getting high tide in about 10 minutes, about 3 p.m. is when it's expected. Um, so how is the flooding and has it been continuous where you have been able to keep the floods away? I know that TGH has made many advances, especially when it comes to hurricane safety. That's right. So let me address the first question. 
Uh, we're very confident. We've been working with public uh, safety officials, understanding what the expected surge would be after this latest high tide, and we feel very confident that we'll be okay here. Uh, I think the worst of this is behind us, uh, and we'll move forward. Um, but we have done a lot of mitigation around our hurricane plans, including uh, we put our generators, our fuel uh, up in our boilers about 30 feet above ground. As you, as you know, you have to drive up on a ramp to our emergency department. We purposely, when we built that building in 2007, knew we wanted the ER to remain open regardless of what the circumstances were. So it's 25 feet above the plane. And then uh, about five years ago, we made a major investment into some technology uh, that's called an aqua fence. And really what that does is our lowest point on the island here is about eight feet above sea level. With the aqua fence, it gives us an additional six feet, so we have 14 feet that we that we can use to do uh, surge mitigation with. And so it's really a game changer for us. We feel very confident with that, uh, that we can do everything we can to take care of our patients at the hospital. Yeah, Tony, that aqua fence is, is quite impressive as you guys uh, put that up when the storms come. Uh, any issues last night with uh, come or, coming or going from the hospital? And generally, what is protocol there? Do you, do you pretty much lock it down for the night, or do you guys uh, stay open? Yeah, so I, 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 we, do, we do go into a quasi-lockdown so that because once the fence bolts down, we're pretty much ready to go. Now, I will tell you that we have mitigation plans, that we have patients that, that need our level of care and show up at in our hospital. We're always going to take care of those patients, and we have the ability to get them into the hospital. And are you able to take on new patients, especially as folks uh, may need to come to TGH uh, from injury that they may sustain as they evaluate, obviously, the damage and the flooding? As we know, accidents happen. Are you open for business now through the evening? We are absolutely open for business, and we've been open for business the entire time. Okay, elective surgeries or anything like that, everything's back on, everything's fine at this point, Tony? We are firing on all cylinders now. We're ready to go and take care of the people at Tampa Bay. And because of where you're located, um, and I don't know if you've had a chance to see the, the streets in and out or around there, we've seen tremendous flooding on Bayshore. And since you're right off of Bayshore Boulevard, are folks able to get to the hospital? How is the flooding in that specific area? Because it, we've seen uh, all day long the flooding uh, pretty impassable. You couldn't even drive a car through it. So how can folks get to you? Is it still open? Yeah, so let me first say that Bayshore floods quite often, right, even with su summer thunderstorms. But the bridges going on to the island are always open, okay? And so that's the main thoroughfare. If you're coming to Jam Tampa General and you, you come across the Platte Street Bridge, we're, we're accessible that way. So even if Bayshore closes, you can still get to the hospital. All right, Tony, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon and, and updating us uh, about the situation there at TGH. Certainly uh, one of the busiest hospitals, if not the busiest hospital in the Bay Area. So certainly good to hear that uh, everything turned out okay after the storm. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, amazing that they can thank stay you. open, especially. Thank you, Tony. Yeah, mm -hmm. with that aqua fence that they put mm -hmm. up, because really it's, it's, it's in a horrible area for a hospital. Is, I, I mean, a beautiful area, mm -hmm. mind you, off of Bayshore, right on the water. But because of that aqua fence, I think it really, and then also putting those generators mm -hmm. so high up so that they would continue to work yeah. because obviously we've lost electricity, mm -hmm. especially a lot in that South Tampa they've, area. They've certainly learned from storms past and they, and they have you know invested a lot of money in, in the infrastructure there to make sure that the hospital keeps going no matter what kind of storm they get there. So uh, certainly grateful for that. No doubt. Let's go now to our Kylie McGivern who's in Bradenton. Kylie, what's happening there? I know you've seen all kinds of conditions dissipate uh, as the high tide continues. What's it like now? Well, Wendy and Jameson, we've kind of come full circle and we are back at Tide Tables, which is here in Bradenton. This is the Cortez Fishing Village community. And I just want to show you something for anyone who's been with us throughout the coverage from last night to now. Last night we were showing you Irma crossed out check, Ian crossed out check, and within the last few minutes, Idalia crossed out 
check mark and they are now in the point of where they are pulling everything out in terms of they had pulled everything out of the kitchen last night they're sweeping everything and randy our photojournalist is going to show you you know this has been kind of like our home base so to speak for this storm but this is a home for all of the employees who are here day in and day out and that's who you're seeing right now you all are going to see all of this cleaned up you know, we have seen the flooding, we've seen the storm surge. Now over on the docks here, you can see everyone that is cleaning up all of the debris from not only the high tide, but again, that storm surge. And speaking with the owner, they said that this is just, it's not only a second home, but these folks are family. You know, the shortest amount of time that anyone has been here is six years, if that says anything about this community. Now, just to give you guys an idea, you can see we're on the water last night. This was a mandatory evacuation zone because what you might have seen a moment ago back here, it's manufactured homes, mobile homes. We actually spoke with the folks who live right here who decided to stay. They are just grateful that they were able to be OK, even though earlier this morning I would not be able to stand here. All of this was underwater. The update that we've got for you is later around five o'clock tonight. We're told some of the mayors in the area are going to be meeting over on Anna Maria Island to discuss basically next steps and when we may be able to reopen the bridge. This is Cortez Bridge for anyone coming out this way. This is still not open yet. You can see those sheriff's deputies talking to people, telling folks we cannot let you across at this point. So we wish we had a better timeline of when that may change. Guys, we're just not there yet. And that just shows that we're not totally on the other side yet. You can see the cleanup, but there's still assessment being done. So we will continue to stay out here and bring you guys the latest updates. But for now, in the Cortez Fishing Village area, I'm Kylie McGivern. We'll send it back to you. All right, Kylie, thank you. Meanwhile, rescue efforts are now underway for many local areas dealing with the severe flooding. Our Jada Williams is in Tarpon Springs. She spent the morning following the National Guard going through some flooded neighborhoods there. Jada? Yeah, we caught a ride with the National Guard to this neighborhood here in Bel Air Beach. That's where we are right now. Um, what is promising, at least for this community, is where I'm standing. When we got here about 30 minutes ago, this was full of water. It was up to about my ankles, but it's receding. Now, as you can see, what's about to drive by is the vehicle that we've been on for most of the day. Now, this is um, where the National Guard is being able to go into these communities. This will be able to make it through about 30 to 40 inches of water. And what they're doing is finding these communities to go inside. They're door knocking, going to every door, saying that everyone inside is okay if people decided that they wanted to stay. We also caught up with them in Tarpon Springs earlier today. They helped out the fire department there. There were two mobile homes on fire, but the roads were impassable to the point that even the fire engines couldn't make it back there. They were able to catch a ride on that that just passed by to get back there, battle that fire. Like I said, we have been on that all day long. We're going around in these areas, but the good news for them is that they're finding a lot of the places, the impacts that we've seen from Medallia so far, uh, there's not big impacts. They say they haven't had to actually rescue anyone from their homes, but it's been a pretty simple mission for Pinellas County. We will continue to follow them, but they say that their operations may be wrapping up pretty quickly. We'll come back later on to let you know how that's going, but for now, I'll send it back to you guys. All right, Jada, thank you. And of course, we will continue to follow the latest effects from Hurricane Adalia when we come back. Stay with us. Guys, 